Very good morning and welcome to the Encora County Crown. It's Derbyshire against Nottinghamshire. Day one, it's warm, not to won the toss, and they're going to have a bat first. <laughs> well, that's the least surprising decision at a toss in the history of tosses. Dave Bracegill from Radio Nottingham is alongside me now. That was uh, exceptionally unsurprising. Yes, good morning, Dave. Good morning, everybody. Yes, uh, Leos Deploy skippering Derbyshire for the first time. He flipped it up in the air. Mullaney said heads and... There was an exhale of relief from the not skipper when umpire Paul Pollard confirmed it was ahead. Wheel back, please, he said. No real surprises there. Although it was pretty hot. Um, it must have been you know, in the 30s uh, at Cardiff last week. And uh, they'd always had a chat and fancied the way to go about that game was to bowl first. But they've certainly not uh, not fancied being out in it today. Three changes to the Nottinghamshire lineup, And back they come. The three that had to miss last week's game at uh, Cardiff for various reasons. Ben Duckett was on Lions duty. Tom Moles was feeling poorly. And James Pattinson was away. Uh, partner has given birth. Little girl, Elsie. So oh, uh, congratulations to them. So mm. Pattinson comes back for Brett Hutton. Tom Moles takes over the gloves. Joey Everson uh, misses out of the side, as does Matt Montgomery. So Nottinghamshire, Slater, Hamid, Duckett, Clark, James, Mullaney, Moores, Patterson White, Pattinson, Luke Fletcher and Dane Patterson. Perhaps a, a little bit harsh on Brett Hutton, but um, four into three don't go. No, indeed. Derbyshire got three changes to the side that played up at uh, Chester Le Street as well. No Billy Godelman. Uh, averaging 15 this season, left out of the side. Uh, Alex Thompson isn't playing either, and nor is Toby Petman, understandably, since he's a Knotts player. Mm. Uh, so he's been replaced by George Scrimshaw, who, like Ben Duckett, was with the Lions last week. Uh, Harry Kame comes in in place of Billy Godelman, and the spin option is Matty McKinnon, so leg spin instead of off spin. You feel he may well <laughs> have to do a fair amount of work over the course of the next however long not to decide to bat. So, Reeson came, will open the batting as and when. Uh, Brooke Guest at three, Madsen, Deploy, Cartwright, Dahl, McKinnon, Aitchison, Connors and Scrimshaw. There's no truth in the rumour, by the way. I understand that uh, Alex Thompson uh, didn't want to play against Ben Slater again. Remember, he was uh, Slater's maiden first last wicket that game at Trent Bridge, where he, uh, he just left his crease and... Tom Moore stumped him since then. Ben Slate has also picked up another wicket, but um, right, it's he won't. He, won't. <laughs> he is. He is. <laughs> of course, we did have a game against Middlesex since we played you, since we saw you last. We're all 11 bowled on the final day. Uh, the very definition of uh, farcical. Mm. Even Tom Moores took the pads off. It's a bit unedifying, that, mm. isn't it, for first class cricket? But I shall uh, yes. leave you for a second. I'll yeah. be back in a moment. All right, Dave. Dave, going to update the. Uh, this is on BBC Radio Nottingham, and Sam Connors is going to open the bowling from the race course end. He's going to be bowling to Ben Slater. I think that's Ryan Dilks on, uh, on news. If somebody could confirm that for me, that would be terrific. Thank you very much. Oh, it's always nice to name check the news uh, the newsreader. Here comes Connors then. Three slips in place. Bowling to forward Derbyshire man Ben Slater. And Slater gets one that leaps at him a little bit. He pushes it into the leg side. It's a no ball as well. It's all going off. And they've come back for two. So not after one. Well, no legit legitimate deliveries. Uh, four without loss. And Ben Slater has got two. Not the start that Derbyshire would <laughs> would necessarily have been uh, been looking for, I think it's fair to say. And Sam Connors doesn't bowl many uh, no balls from memory. And goes Connors again and bowls wide of the off stump, let through by Slater, taken by Brooke Guest. He's a uh, uh, wicketkeeper, of course. I'm just looking to see if I can work out who everybody else is in that slip cordon. It'll be Ben Aitchison at first, Wayne Madsen at second, and Hilton Cartwright at third slip. And as Dahl at point, Harry came at cover. Lewis Reese at mid-off. Skipper Lears deploy at mid-on. Matty McKinnon at mid-wicket. And George Scrimshaw down at long leg. And Connors 
is in again, and that one is pushed out into the offside in the first involvement this afternoon, this morning rather for Anos Dahl, and it remains four without loss. I'd almost got over that one, Ryan. Yes, just underway here. Knots four without loss. Ben Slater, formerly of this parish. He's on two not out. Hassi Pamid, the former England opener and potentially future England opener, has yet to face a delivery. The team news is that Harry Kane does play in place of Billy Godman, who's been left out of the side. And Leas Deploy, skippering, lost the toss. And that's why Knots are batting. They're four without loss. Natus delivery is uh, allowed to go through to the keeper by Ben Slater. Never 100% sure what the uh, what the crowd how how crowd noise. I'll, I'll tell you about the crowd in a minute. It's Connor's balls that's cut away, but nicely fielded by Anu's Dahl diving to his right, tumbling away and stopping the ball. It was a fairly fearsome cut. The ball was quite short and wide and Slater climbed into it. But on this occasion he was unable to take full advantage. As a result, there's no run. It remains four without loss here on a blisteringly hot day, which will come as no surprise to anybody. Connors in again to Slater. It leaves this one alone outside the off stump. I have to say, I went out for the toss and quite nice getting a bit of sun on your yeah. back for, <laughs> for five minutes. Five minutes, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, South Africa down at Leicester yesterday in the, in the women's ODI. They won the toss and at one o'clock decided mm. that they'd have a, a bowl first, which I don't think went down well. Some big scores last week, weren't they? Down at Hove, Leicestershire oh. racking up 800. Not or seven, no, 700 not odd, much it? of an achievement though is it really as Connor's bowls and that one's pushed <laughs> out into the offside uh, and again there's no run that's the end of the first over four without loss the only runs coming off the first ball of the match which ended up not being a legitimate delivery it was a no ball Ben Slater ran a couple of runs off it as well four without loss yes I'm sure there was a, yeah, a huge amount of relief in that Knott's dressing room when Stephen Mullaney won the toss opted to bat first Knott's top of the table there's only two matches this uh, this round of uh, fixtures this week in division two Middlesex playing Sussex so uh, whatever happens Notts can pull away from third place Glamorgan but uh, it's Middlesex who are their nearest rivals at the moment 21 points behind as we go into the 10th match of 14 and, uh, and still rather bizarrely, nobody in uh, any of the divisions actually knows what they're playing for, really. No, no. So Ben Aitchison is going to bowl a second over of the game from the far mm. end, the city end. They'll be bowling to a Seba Mead, who had contrasting fortunes here last year. First ball strikes him on the pad. Was, um, I'm sure going over the top, if not down the leg side. Didn't have an awful lot going for it, but... Notts came here um, straight after an away game at New Road against Worcestershire where Hamid had scored centuries in both innings. So he was in prime form at that stage of the season. Uh, was dismissed either first or second ball for naught. But yeah. in the second innings, he got 94. Next delivery on its way now. And he eases this into the offside and there's no run. Of ben Slater got 100 in the first innings last year. It was uh, one or the other. In that fixture, Notts getting over the line on the uh, on the Saturday lunchtime. A match that, I look at one or two of the photographs last night, and the, the, the most striking thing of the, of the lot was, of course, the fact there was nobody in the ground. It was still the time when we were playing behind closed doors. As I mean, drops this on the leg side. He wanted one, but Ben Slater certainly the right call as he hit it pretty much straight to Matty McKiernan. And the other uh, photographs are... I noticed was Stuart Broad bowling with six slips. I think Knotts would probably say the ball was doing a little bit around about that time. It's a memorable catch from Dane Patterson towards the end of the contest. Next ball on its way. And, uh, Amid leaves it alone. Brooke Guest with the gloves on. Doesn't actually take it cleanly. No, it's unusual for Guest that. He's, pretty, he's been pretty tidy this mm. season. 
He's having a good year with the bat as well, isn't he? Yeah, three centuries. Two in one match, but three centuries. Got one up at, uh, mm. up at Durham. New skipper, Lius Deploy. Do we think there's going to be any <laughs> any significant change to the way Derby should go about Well, he's things? only skippered them once before, and that was in a T20 at Taunton, which, we've, uh, which we're all having counselling about. <laughs> Next ball on its way now, and uh, this is pushed into the offside, and there's no run. If uh, any of our listeners out there ever... Uh, plotting a, a, a drive in uh, in one hit from Taunton to Chesterley Street, my esteemed colleague here, Mr. Fletcher, will uh, will be able to guide you on the didn't stop highways either. and byways. Didn't stop straight up five and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> Not the kindest of quarterfinal draws for Derbyshire. This one's edged by uh, Mead off the shoulder of the bat, bounced in front of Hilton Cartwright at. Third slip, end of the over. It's a maiden, so Notts remained four without loss. Hilton Cartwright, I think we've seen before in uh, in the UK in the county championship, playing a little bit for Middlesex, yeah. not too much. Yeah. Um, was he always in the plans to come here? Has he been, no, uh, no. He, he is Hayden Kerr's replacement. Uh, Hayden Kerr was... Um, oh God, is it that long ago? I've forgotten his name now. He, played, he didn't play at your place, so that won't help you, will it? Uh, it'll come to me in a minute. Saranga Lakmal, uh, who was the original mm. overseas bowler, he was replaced by Kerr, who's got a side strain now, so Cartwright replaced him. Uh, and the other overseas is Sean Massoud. More about him in a moment as Connors begins a new over from the race course and the first delivery is left alone. Sean Massoud cur cur currently carrying drinks for Pakistan mm. in Sri Lanka, which is an absolute disgrace, but I don't want to pick a fight with the Pakistan cricket board, so uh, I think that would be foolhardy. I don't think they're listening. You, can, you just never quite can tell. You never quite can tell, can you? <laughs> and the best bit about the trip from Taunton to Durham was that I arrived at the hotel at 3.30 and uh, I was in the pub by 4 o'clock. Here's Connors <laughs> hitting the balls. That one's left alone as well. It's good pace from Connors, but at the moment he's allowing... What on earth did he find to do for half an hour? Yes, quite. Yeah, and I bumped into one of the lads who travels with us. He was coming out of the lift as I was going up it to put my bags in the room. I said, I'll see you in 10 minutes. And uh, off we went. It is a very sociable place Isn't to uh, spend yeah. an evening or two, Durham. Slightly too sociable, I think, on that Sunday Most night. Most of the teams and the support staff, i.e. us lot, tend to stay in Durham rather than Chesterley Street. Connors bowl and an inside edge down past the off stump. It might have gone past the leg stump. I think it was the off stump. Right? And through to the keeper. He has a wild swing at that one. Ben Slater. Although um, we sat next to each other pretty much during the blast, we didn't really speak because you were doing your own thing and yes. BBC Radio Nottingham were doing their own thing. But somebody watched the bash through the winter. I was a little bemused that... Derbyshire played Hayden Kerr as a number eight in the first half of the That's competition bowler, as, yeah. he, um, as he was whacking sixes for fun at the top of the order for Sydney Sixers. Connors bowls and that goes past the edge of Ben Slater's bat this time. Good delivery from Connors. He's just building up a head of steam here. And when I say steam, I mean steam. Mm. Uh, yes, he yeah, got, got 98, did he? He did, in the, semi, out, in the semi-final to, yeah, to get the yeah. sixes into But the he was final. very much a, a bowler who could bat. Mm. He opened the bowling bowl at the death. Did really well, and obviously he was missing down at Taunton, which was a real blow. Masood had already gone to Sri Lanka. And uh, well, the wheels didn't just fall off. They forgot to take the wheels with them. There's Connors in again. Bowls to Slater, who's beaten, beaten again. This is a very good over, actually. Yeah, it's an excellent over from Sam Connors. Somebody just sent me a photograph. After his first delivery, his economy rate was on the BBC Sport website. Just said infinity, which is a bit harsh. Because he bowled a no ball. The first ball of the game. And Leicester should play Glamorgan tomorrow, apparently. Yes. Don't they? Because the there was a one-day international, international yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. yeah. There's quite a bit, of, a bit of media activity commenting on the fact that Middlesex have won the toss and chosen to field against Sussex yeah. today. Must be quite cool there, then. Mm. Connors bowls this time, bat on ball, pushes it up to Lear's deploy it mid on, and it's the end of a maiden over, successive maiden overs. So Derbyshire, four without loss, still not having won the toss this morning and decided to have a bat first. So not making those changes, a little harsh on Matthew Montgomery, who uh, stepped into the breach last week when Ben Duckett was called away to play for the Lions, got 80 in his maiden county championship innings, but um, he's back to 
carrying the drinks. One of the uh, three players left out. And uh, also, as I say, Brett Hutton and Joey Everson sidelined from the draw at Cardiff. I would have just seen that photograph you put up of me on, the, uh, on Twitter. It's not very flattering. Have you? Do I look like that? <laughs> really? That was many, many years ago. I thought I looked quite <laughs> young. <laughs> You look like uh, you look like you're about to go on stage at the, uh, the Batley Variety. I'm, a, I'm actually on the stage chatting to Sammy, <laughs> having a bit of a laugh and a joke. Yeah, um, yeah. I cut off the um, the bag of presents for the kids and your and your red cloak. Is uh, start of a new over by Ben Aitchison from the far end. A late decision to leave by Hasiba Mead, and it goes through to Brooke Guest. So uh, attack, extra, attack, attack, attack. Four slips. Slip, yeah, yeah, extra slip in this over. Um, Harry Kame is at first slip, the evergreen Wayne Madsen at second, Leas Deploy, the new captain, at third, and uh, a little bit of Aussie sledging, no doubt, coming from Hilton Cartwright at fourth. I would hope so. Next delivery on its way down the leg side, I mean, left it alone. Our umpires are Paul Pollard, who once upon a time played for Knotts, then went to uh, New Road to play for Worcestershire, second part of his career, and James Middlebrook, big tall off spinner, who played for. Uh, Yorkshire, North Ants, and then back to Yorkshire. Not many behind the bowler's arm at the far end, and uh, had they been, they'd have been uh, supremely situated to see a very elegant straight drive just to the onside of straight by Asiba Mead to get him off the mark. Ball just slightly over pitch from Ben Aitchison and, and Mead quickly onto it. Nice shot. How many of those people in the permanent temporary stand at the far end of the ground do you think will still be there at three o'clock this afternoon mm. if they haven't combusted? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a warm one. Next delivery to a Mead. Four more through the offside this time by a Seba Mead who rushes off like a hare with those greyhounds after him. But Ben Slater knew better. He knew it had gone for four. He knows this ground worked very well, of course, Ben Slater. And uh, not very quickly go from four to ten in two blows. <coughs> Spotted. Mm. Um, in fact, the board is showing 12. I wonder if that was a no ball as well. Oh, dear. It's the only answer, isn't it? No. It can't be. Yeah, no, no. Two fours onto the yeah. four without loss. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The first ball was a no ball. Wasn't yeah. It? Yeah. I'm adding eight and four and making ten. It's a good start to the day. Because <laughs> the old Rachel Riley's wrong. Next one beats... The right-handed Asiba Mead squared him up a little bit and he rehearses the shot. He'll now go for a, a walk towards the square leg umpire, chattering away, and then he'll come back and start all over again. Shirt outside his flannels. If we still call them cricketing flannels. The Bolton Bradman. And again comes the bustling right arm, medium fast of Ben Aitchison and, and Mead blocks it. So eight from that over, Nottinghamshire 12 without loss. Sam Aitchison two overs, none for eight. Sam Connors two overs, none for four and they all came from the first delivery of the match that wasn't a delivery because it was a no ball that went for two. Yes, I'm sure Hassi Mead would be very disappointed to see what's happening with the Bolton League now because that's where he started playing his junior cricket when he was allowed to by Bolton School of course. Um, seems to be disintegrating teams going off to various uh, Premier Leagues and into the Manchester system which is a shame but mm. 12 without loss and uh, Sam Connors to continue from the race course then bowls to Slater who defends the first ball that Connors bowls back to him just wonder if um, i trying to think when Ajmal Shazad played for for Lancashire, it would have been 2012, so that's well before I mean, he'd made his uh, first last debut back end of 2015. But uh, the two certainly knew each other when uh, Asiba Mead came onto the, uh, onto the outfield about quarter to nine. He was the first of the Knots players to go into the nets. Uh, Ajmal Shazad was out there, the Derbyshire bowling coach, and they had a bit of a handshake and a hug and a chat. That's next delivery is left alone outside the off stump by Slater. It's clearly know each other from somewhere back when 
We could almost get a Lancashire side out of the two yeah. teams, couldn't you? Yeah. With Hamid and Mullaney. Guest. Lanks, Guest and Reese. And Tom Moore's had a month on loan before he started with Knotts. Ben Aitchison started at Lancashire. My word. <laughs> <laughs> so. Luke Fletcher's been to Lancashire, hasn't he? Yes. Yeah, I lived there. I, I, I could be 12. In comes Connors over the wicket bowling to Slater. Struck on the pad. Ball dribbles into the leg side. Clark played for Manchester Originals last summer. He's going to be a Welsh fireman this uh, this summer, I understand. Matty McKinnon, of course, is a Lee man. That kind of area, certainly. So he's a Lancastrian, was on Lancashire's books as well. Mm. So it's uh, something of a Red Rose reunion here in Derbyshire. Just three slips for Connors. They're crouching down now. As he goes in a bowls to Slater, he pushes this out up towards Lewis Reese at mid-off. And again, there is no room. Some red parasols on top of the members' pavilion. I think one of them is uh, keeping one of the cameramen in the shade, which is essential, you would have thought, today. If he's just standing there all day long, it, it could end up in a bad way. So that's good to see. I remember seeing red parasols up there. I don't know where they've got those from. Look a bit flimsy, don't they? They do a bit like they're made of paper. Connor's bowls, and that one's mistimed as it's driven up towards the Lewis Reese by Ben Slater on this occasion. Hmm. Um, no real surprise that um, <laughs> there's play in all the matches today. Seven county championship matches, as we've said, two in Division 2. In Division 1, Hampshire, the away team, are winning at, Ch uh, are winning, are batting at Cheltenham. They're uh, going to finish at 4.30 there. And um, also one of the others at North Hans. Connors in again and bowls. That one is turned into the leg side, but fielded by Connors at the end of his follow through. It's the end of the over. Another maiden mm. for Sam Connors. Three overs, two maidens, not for four. Don't quite get this. The, you know, there, were, um, there was a thing out apparently from the ECB yesterday saying all the sides could, uh, or all the, all the matches. Um, today, provided both sides agree, they could um, limit three sessions to just an hour and a half and finish at 4.30 and make up time on days two and three. And the only grounds where they've taken that up are at Cheltenham between Gloucestershire and Hampshire and at Northampton between Northampton and Lancashire. I don't see the, the great advantage in it. But Hampshire are batting at Cheltenham against Gloucestershire. Northampton's batting at home against Lancashire. Somerset batting at home against Yorkshire. Essex away at the Oval against Surrey. They're the only one to lose a wicket so far. They're 22 for one. In fact, Kent now lose a wicket. They're batting at Edgbaston against Warwickshire. Next ball on its way from Aitchison. And it's defended by Asiba Mead. So uh, Connors and Aitchison sharing the new ball. Big George Scrimshaw will be looking to uh, replicate his white ball form when he transfers um, his skills over to the red ball game for the first time this season. The leg spin of Matty McKiernan. And what else? We might see a little bit of off spin from Wayne Madsen. This one's dropped on the leg side. No run. Uh, Anuj Dahl's he's medium Anuj pace. Dahl's the fourth. Yeah, he'll be the fourth seam, mm. but we might see some left arm from Reese. Reese, yeah. yeah. So They've got options. They oh, might need them today. I think you might be right. I think you might be right. Uh, my half-past update, of course, is at 23 minutes past, so okay. uh, I'm going to nick off now, Dave, if that's all right. You carry on. <laughs> Next ball is pushed away by HH. Seba Mead into the offside. Hannah Dow with the, uh, the long-sleeve shirt. Well, I say it's a long-sleeve shirt. He may well have um, elasticated sleeves on, which are... Um, the same whitey cream colour as his Derbyshire top. I think that's what he's got, actually, rather than a long sleeve shirt. Dallop point. Mead again leaves alone, and it goes through to wicketkeeper Brooke Guest. So no Billy Godelman in this Derbyshire side today. Linus Deploy is captain. And the one overseas player is Hilton Cartwright. Umpire at the far end is Paul Pollard. Next delivery, it sees Hamid again just lunge forward towards the ball. Only he will know with how much determination. At 
race cricket at Fletch Sport on the old Twittery thing if you'd like to get in touch. Next delivery is uh, driven on the leg side and for the first time today the two Nottinghamshire openers exchange ends and Mead takes a single so he's down to the far end and the left-handed Slater comes to this end but it is the end of the over so Mead will keep strike. We've had six overs in well, getting on towards 25 minutes, so it's not going to be the uh, liveliest of over rates, as you can probably understand today. Ben Slater has two, which he got from the ball before the start of the match, and Deceba Mead is on nine, 13 without loss. <coughs> Connors with the wristbands. Are you back with us? No, he's not. Going to be Sam Connors, squad number 59. Seba Mead, meanwhile, is either digging for coal or is uh, scratching away at his mark. James Middlebrook, the umpire. Drops his left arm and Signals for Sam Connors that we can now start. Connors into the right-handed Mead. He pushes it into the offside where Doll is uh, quickest to it, beating Matty McKeon into that ball. Blue skies, as you'd expect. Shielded from the heat of the day, but as I said earlier, popped out for the toss. This next one, past the outside edge, goes on its way through with good carry. Good lift there from Connors into the gloves of Guest. Very fortunate today to be uh, in the cool of the media centre, but it is a swelter out there. Connors makes his way almost to the advertising logo on the outfield. And comes in, bowls, and he digs it out to Dal at backward point. And it remains 13 without loss. Here on BBC Radio Derby, BBC Radio Nottingham. Not so enjoyed their recent visits to uh, Derbyshire. They've won their last six away matches against Derbyshire in the uh, championship. This is a bouncer which Amid rocks his head back and goes through to the keeper. Five on this ground, and there was also a victory at uh, Chesterfield in 2007. They've won, uh, 2007. Lots of one here, 2002 for 13, 17, and last year. Darvish, of course, winning in the uh, in the COVID summer, the Bob Willis Trophy here at Trent Bridge. Connors bowls, and this one got big on a mead, and they'll take a single on the leg side. Harry Kane will field. So a mead on to 10, 14 without loss. That match in August 2020 was designated as a Derbyshire home game, but this ground was being used by, um, well, that summer by uh, the visiting Pakistan men's team, and um, I think there's also a women's international here. So Derbyshire couldn't play any home games in the Bob Willis Trophy. So played knots at Trent Bridge and won. Here's Slater, lovely shot from Ben Slater, who's been having a watching brief over the last couple of overs. Gets back on strike and drives this elegantly through the covers for four. Lovely looking shot from the former Derbyshire man. He's on to six. Asiba Mead is on ten. The opening partnership now worth 18. We've had seven overs. Connors four overs, none for nine. Aitchison three overs, none for nine. And it will be... Ben Aitchison to bowl the heath over of the innings. Light 
it's obviously changing just outside the ground. So I don't think we're that close to Donington Park. Perhaps uh, the, uh, the roar of a motorbike as uh, the great man comes back to join me. Well, I'm back anyway. I had to go on earlier. They've got uh, the bloke who wrote Dre uh, Dreadlock Holidays coming on. That one is aerial and now just over Anno's Dahl's head from Hasib Amid. It goes away to the backward point boundary for four, but it was definitely in the air. A little airy fairy. Mm, Godly and cream. Yes, Goldman, I think he's called. Is yes. he Goldman? Yeah, he was one of the yeah. one of ten CCs, yeah. wasn't he? I yeah. think he helped yeah, write they're, it. They're, yeah. they're, they split up into various factions, didn't they? Yes, they, they did. uh, the band members. Godly and cream went their way and well, Mr. Goldman came to BBC Radio Derby, obviously. Yeah, so Godly and Cream had some success. They did, didn't they? Yeah. Ed's going to come in for a, a half an hour, Dave, if you want to take a, an extra. A well deserved break, well, is, is well, that the other word you're searching well, for? Well, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It'd be good to see Ed. Ed does. We'll be joining me momentarily as uh, Ben Aitchison is in and bowls to Hassi Pamid. That one is pushed just backward of square on the offside. It's fielded by Anno's Dahl, and there is. No run. Oh, now he's got to remove his very, very fine. He's got to, no, it won't work. His very fine hat. Ed, how are you, mate? I'm all right. Is this what Good you get man. up to then? This is pretty much what I do on a daily basis. It's not bad, is it, it's really? Not bad. You've not had a, a day of cricket ruled out by rain as well, or a moment, really, have you? Not many. No. Aitchison some balls defended by Hamid up towards uh, Lewis Reese this time, and there's no run. No, no, we've been very, very lucky with the with the weather. We might get some rain tomorrow, I'm told. Yeah. Well, that's that's the British weather, isn't it? Two days of ridiculous heat it means that we're <laughs> going to get uh, rain potentially tomorrow. The ground staff have said that they're going to have to cover the square because they're not sure where the rain's going to hit. It's very much a storm situation. So, mm -hmm. 22 without loss. Aitchison and bowls to Hamid, who defends it out into the offside. Hilton Cartwright, the large frame of Hilton Cartwright, jumps over the the, uh, the pitch to fetch the ball. I've watched a lot of your stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm well, sorry. listen to I your stuff apologize. on YouTube, on, on the stream. And, and I like the look. I mean, Aitchison, wasn't it his first game at Durham? Yes. In the yeah. championship yeah. last yeah. week. Yeah. And he got into his rhythm. I like the look of uh, Connors. Aitchison balls. That one is a no ball. And uh, two more to the top. 24 without loss. Was he 23, Connors? 23. Trying yeah. to find his way in the game and um, he's got some lift and some movement out, out of the he's pitch. He's sharp, isn't he? Yeah, he's sharp. And yeah. George Scrimshaw is quicker. I right. don't think it'd be long before we see George. I mean, uh, see George Scrimshaw in, in bursts, I would imagine. Mm. Uh, Lister Ploy skipping the side. We were trying to work out the last Derbyshire-born skipper of the side. We think it was Chris Adams way back when as uh, Aitchison bowls that one is played off the back foot driven for four runs out towards the long off boundary Lewis Reese is chasing it as though he, he might catch it but the ball's already gone over the boundary and he's not going to catch it and Hamid moves on to 18 28 without loss it is Chris Adams because I've already had that conversation about 10 minutes ago I mean I could claim my own knowledge but it, well, wasn't, it wasn't my knowledge no. either is it the same it was person probably David Griffin yeah, 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 yeah. it was Chris Adams and I think it was I think he said it was a one-off game mm -hmm. Uh, about 20 years ago. Something like Something that. Something like that. Well, Derbyshire have had four different captains. He'll have told you this as well when he's tweeted it. Four different captains uh -huh. in the last four matches against Knotts. Matt Critchley, Billy Godlam and Wayne Madsen and now Leas Deploy. As Aitchison is in and that's pushed out into the offside by Hasib Hamid. And there is no run. That's the end of the over. 28 without loss. 18 to Hamid. Six to Slater. And poor old Billy. I mean, he had to go. Yeah, he's averaging 15 in uh, he's not missed a game so far this season. I, I think I think it gets painful for him, doesn't it? Yeah. Because it starts to move, and and I think he's been this in this situation before in his career, hasn't he? And, and unless you just <laughs> take time out, <laughs> it's all the rage. Take yeah. time out yeah. and assess what you're doing, then you will never get over the situation that you're in. And and it was painful, wasn't it? It was because, painful to watch. Yeah, it was painful to watch. Take stock, all the all the rest of it. Connor starts a new over, and it's uh, clipped on the leg side and pushed to mid-wicket, and there's no run. I yeah, I mean, it, it, for, for his own sake, yeah, go absolutely. away, do some nets, or w completely walk away from it and, and reassess, and, you know, it does wonders. But, um, yeah, I mean, Harry Kane scored runs in the twos, hasn't he? So yeah. You've, yeah. you've said that previously, so there's an opportunity for him in this game. Probably not today, unless something changes. Something remarkable happens. 
Connor's on his way again, bowling. Again, it's uh, on leg stumped and it's flicked off the hip this time by uh, Ben Slater. It's a huge opportunity for Harry Kane. He's got mm. a century and an 80 odd or a 90 against Yorkshire last week in the seconds while Derbyshire were. Uh, I don't know what that was. Uh, well, <laughs> well, I do. It sounded like an email. Well, it was an email, but I don't think it might have been my phone. <laughs> I'm going to put, put it on silent. Um, now he's got to take that form into the first team arena, but by the time he gets to bat, there could already be a very large deficit. Connors again. This one is uh, more middle and off that time, and on the back foot, just dabs it into the offside for no run. 28 without loss. And um, when was the last time you saw a yellow outfield, Dave? You know, I was thinking about the outfit. You can see where the stage was for yeah. uh, Michael Bublé, which is understandable. But mm. um, this outfield has changed dramatically from a week last Sunday or whenever mm. it was when Derbyshire played Durham. It was quite green then, but now it is parched, isn't it? Mm. 1976, I reckon. <laughs> Connor's again bowling and he uh, makes a mess of that, does uh, Ben Slater, and it hits him amidships and he just kicks it away into the offside. Uh, no run. Yeah, everyone talks about 1976, but are they going to continue to talk about it now? We're going to talk about 2022. Oh, we haven't had the snow, you know, like they did at Buxton for that championship game. But um, I think we'll talk about 2022, won't we, now in future years. But 76, I remember going on holiday to, we went all the way to Oxford. We were, we were in a caravan. It was horrendous. <laughs> Slips go down, Connor arrives. Connor's arrives and on the back foot that is played by Slater. Got right in behind that one. Horrendous for so many reasons. I mean, I was 13 and everything was horrendous then, wasn't it, when you were 13? <laughs> well, just a life was horrendous. 1992. Um, I was 13. Were you? Yeah. Thanks for that, Ed. No, it's yeah. all right. Yeah. Euro 92. That was horrendous. Do I not like that and all that Oh, jazz. was that that one? That was around okay. that period, yeah. yeah. God, I've been at work for 10 years by then. <laughs> <sighs> Final ball of the owner over from Connors. And he bowls and it's just down the leg side and well stopped actually by uh, Brooke Guest he dives away to his right and that is the end of the over 28 without loss was that a maiden? it was it was a maiden it was a maiden I can count still brilliant it's all coming back it is it's all coming back <laughs> still no sign of George Scrimshaw looks like Ben Aitchison is going to continue well at least the boy is having a word with him here and saying make this your last one son we'll swap you up the other end in a minute what if we had five overs and four overs you just wonder what kind of spells they'll be bowling in this kind of heat. Short. Yeah, and that is that Amish Dahl? Dahl? Yeah, Amish yeah. Dahl, yeah. We'll see him bowl. Watch me That's skip, I'm warming up. He's, he's always doing something, Dahl, as Aitchison begins a new over. He's driven by Hassi Bermid for four runs. That's the extra cover boundary. And towards the only covered seating in the entire ground, the East Midlands demolition stand, away to our right-hand side in front of the hotel. I admit he'd moves on to... 22 and not to 32 without loss. Anybody listening in the East Midlands demolition stand? Well, if they are, it'll take them 30 seconds to wave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were doing that the other week, actually. <laughs> we couldn't work out whether they were waving to us for the first time we'd mentioned them or not, <laughs> or the second time. It was a slight delay. I, um, we know that. It's a bit unfortunate. Aitchison's next delivery is driven again out towards extra cover, and again, it's going to be four runs. The outfield will be lightning fast. Uh, and it reaches the rope now, the ball, as Lewis Reese in pursuit. So back-to-back -back boundaries off the first two deliveries from Ben Aitchison. This could well be his last over. Mm. It, it, I, see, I like I, Ben Aitchison. He's been unfortunate with injuries since he arrived at Derbyshire. He, he slipped at Durham a couple of years ago and did his ankle ligaments and mm. didn't play again. And then he was playing in pre-season and he did his back and only played his first game. We played a couple of T20s and then uh, played his first game up at Durham, like you say, he's been a bit unfortunate. It, it takes a bowler a couple of matches to get back into rhythm, doesn't it, really? They've filled that gap now. They've also brought in Matty McKeon at third slip, which is interesting. Aitchison bowls and he turns it where McKeon was at uh, mid-wicket and he picks up at least a couple of runs here. It will just be a couple. George Scrimshaw's reached the ball now with his magnificent moustache. And uh, they take two more, and Hamid moves on to 28 and knots a 38 without loss, and we're only in the 10th over. I think Lewis Reese was at third slip, wasn't he? He went to plug the gap at extra cover and then 
obviously there's a vacant area there, which was uh, because if you bang it in short, which a couple of his deliveries ha has, he's got time to move and get behind it, yeah. steer it. Next delivery from Aitchison's a better length mm. and it's pushed out to the offside by Hamid and there's no run. Somebody once said to me, in, in any game of cricket, you always want one more fielder. Yeah. One more fielder, which is why 11 is the perfect number. It's weird. I mean, I know that, the, that a lot of the football teams came out of the cricket teams, therefore 11 aside makes perfect sense, but mm. it is remarkable that both of the major sports in this country have 11 aside. That one is pushed up to mid on by Hasib Hamid and there's no run. I remember messaging you last week when you were talking with uh, Marty up at Durham, talking about the forecast for this week. Win the toss and bat day on Tuesday, Dave. Yeah. Oh, no, no question. Yeah. Well, poor old Lear's deployed. He's only captain Derbyshire twice. There's uh, 80 some balls, and that goes past the edge of Hamid's bat. Through to the wicketkeeper, Brooke Guest. Good end to the over after a bit of a dodgy start. Ten runs off the first three balls. Not for 29, Aitchison from his five overs. I mean, 28, Slater 6, 38 without loss. I've been, oh, nuts. I've been stood in the press um, written area mm. watching Aitchison, and there's definitely a spot there which he found on that final ball of the over, which I presume he was trying to find in the two balls that were hit for four because he's, he's just got them to, to sort of leap a little bit and move a little bit. This ball is uh, 10 overs old, though, so we're moving slowly into time to change it territory. <laughs> Uh, I can't believe it's not been done. I missed the first over. Uh, yeah, Anish Dahl's going to replace Sam Connors. Dahl is uh, quicker than he looks. Mm. Can be slippery. We were discussing what's what's quicker, slippery or sharp. In one recent game. Is slippery cons inconsistent though? Well, I like slippery though. Slippery. Yeah. Slippery's a lower trajectory for me. Mm. But it could be it could be quick. It's because we have no idea how quickly they're bowling, which is ludicrous. There should be a, a, I think I've mentioned this every game, I'm going to get it in early. There should be a speed gun at every single cricket ground <laughs> in uh, the county championship. So we know how quickly the bowlers are bowling. We know how quickly every tennis player in the world's serving, don't we? He didn't want to bowl like that, though. Well, he did one That's of those. Warm -up it's delivery. brilliant, isn't it? He did one of those at Durham and it came down and landed on his head. <laughs> he did. Because I thought, did he just do that? When I got home, I mentioned it and I got confirmation. Dahl's first ball of his spell, and he bowls around the wicket, right into the pads of Ben Slater, who dabs it into the offside. They've got the trap set with a man at short cover as well, fielding on the second, it was around the second cut strip from the wicket they're playing on, although he's now gone on to the third. Have you noticed anything unusual yet about the two batsmen and what's happened with them so far today? They've not had a drink. They haven't changed ends yet. Have they not? No. Blimey. Here's Dahl again, bowling, and that again is right in on his pads, and he just watches that and pushes it away on the offside. Yeah. Well, well, that's brilliant. We're in the 11th over, and the batsmen haven't changed ends. I haven't noticed that, no. I don't think. Although Connors has conceded nine runs and H's and 29, so I'm not sure how that's oh, happened. It's a big call that day. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely mm. rubbish, probably. Won't be the first time, as you know. Two slips and uh, a point. Short cover, and then covering his back, mid on, mid off, mid wicket, in comes Dahl again, down the leg side, clipped off the hips, and they have changed ends now, and Slater takes a single to uh, the man down at fine leg, who's very tall, and that's about as good as it gets. Who is it? Uh, uh, George Grimshaw. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. Which gives you the impression that because he's down there, he's coming on next. Or I think he's been down there the whole time. Was he? But yeah, and you can tell it's him because he still looks tall and he's a long way away. He is a long way away. Yeah, he's a long way away. Mm. He hasn't started wheeling, wimbling his arms or anything like no. that. Though. Right hander on strike now, Hamid, and I think you're right because he's just taken a long time to yeah, get his guard I, sorted. I didn't think they had. Mm. Over the wicket comes Dal bowling, and it's on the back foot and pushed into the offside and fielded there. I know it's lazy radio, according to a good friend of mine, um, but he's the one who asked me to mention his brother, uh, John Twig, <laughs> and the dog Yola. No idea. Uh, if you are listening. What's he uh, doing? Uh, Is well, he just, he just wants a mention? He's chilling in Wales. He said, he, got, he said, can you give him a mention? Wales. 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 Yeah. Twiggy never gives a... Uh, uh, Paul tells me I'm wrong that the batsman hadn't 
had to swap down. Right. Dahl again bowling, and that's left elaborately outside the off stump by Hamid, who wanders away, doing all the things that batsmen do when they're in the zone. Adjusting pads, taking deep breaths, walking across the square, coming back, getting your foot and your feet right. Yeah. I love watching Hamid. As a fellow bowler, I'm not a Boltonian at all, but mm. I feel like a Boltonian a lot of the time. And just to see him succeed, he should still be playing for England. He's one of the conveyor belt of opening batsmen, isn't he, for England? Here's Dahl once more, and he bowls. And that one just rolls his fingers over the top of the ball. And Hamid is forward and defending. Come on, George, take your cap off, son. He's, he's marching in quite uh, purposefully as the drinks arrive. Yeah. So we're having a drink at 45 minutes rather than the hour, which sort of makes sense, although they'll only have half an hour in between the second drinks. Until I was say they should be doing it on the half hour yeah, when it's yeah, the, 35. Yeah, they've, made, they've made a mess of it, haven't they? they made a mess of it. <laughs> yeah. 39 for no wicket at the end of the 11th over. I just want to say hello to Lee Curtis as well, who I spoke to for the first time yesterday, the Derby County uh, man at the Telegraph, came on and spoke to me on Sports Scene at oh, 6 good. last night. He was excellent. Uh, and I told him as well afterwards. Mm. Top man. We've exchanged a lot of messages. We haven't actually met yet. Well, so I'm not, yeah, I've not met him, but say, forward to it. It seemed like he's going down to uh, Broadhall Way tonight. Oh, goodness. Yeah, good luck. I was once, once called into action there. Yeah. Burton were playing at Stevenage, and I was away for the weekend in Worcester. And Colin Gibson rang and said, We need a commentator. Do you know any? Do you know any? <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up doing Stevenage against Burton. It must have been League Two a hundred years ago, whoever yeah. it was. Just sitting just over that, that sort of walkway, don't you, in the, pre in the mm. press box there. It's a strange old place. Not been for a while. I've got to speak to Gibbo as well at lunchtime. He's doing sports scene this evening. So I've got to speak to him. I think he wants to know when I'm available, which is pretty much from six o'clock onwards. So whenever he <laughs> wants me, you can have me, but... Uh, Try and firm that up with, uh, with Colin later on. Spoke to Tony last night as well for the first time in a while on a clear line. I spoke to him a few times on the phone, but mm. to have a chat about Burton, and it was, uh, it was good fun. I won £10 this morning. Did you? Yeah, we had a bet. You know, uh, my other half's kids are Forest season ticket holders, oh, and because yes. we're on the stream and probably being watched by our friends from down the A52. Uh. Um, hello. Um, I, I had a bet at the end of the season saying that there's no hope at all of signing Jed Spence after that season, next season. You've Brilliant. got no chance. Yeah. Because everybody else is watching him and he was rapid and awesome yeah. and has a lot of potential. And he signed for Tottenham. So, uh, cha-ching. Does he play on the left or the right? He played on the right. I think he plays he on the right. The yeah, I see that they're uh, they've been heavily linked with. Uh, it always makes me feel old. This Harry Toffolo. Huddersfield. Huddersfield. Yeah, it's yeah. been around for a while. I that went, one, isn't it? Uh, I went to university with his dad. Did you? Yeah. Wow, is it? Yeah, Steph. Sorry, I'm Steph. Steph and Sue. They live down in uh, near Welling Garden City, or they have been, but they uh, they want to live in the Peak District, and who wouldn't? Mm. But I think if you live in Welling Garden City, you should be well placed to buy something in, uh, in the Peak District. Here is George Scrimshaw for the first time with the red ball this season in and bowls to Ben Slater and it's defended up towards mid-off. There isn't a mid-off, so Matty McKinnon has to come around from extra cover to do the fielding. And he'd be quite pleased to have got that first delivery out of the way, I fancy George Scrimshaw. Mm. It was a very full delivery by his standards. Certainly in white ball cricket, he's very much a halfway down the pitch kind of merchant but there was to tell you how well he's been playing Derbyshire conceded 7,000 runs at Taunton in 20 overs and his four overs two for 16 yeah. remarkable spell or two spells of bowling from George Scrimshaw but unfortunately the 260 odd uh, proved to be just about 190 too many. Here is Scrimshaw again bowling to Hamidi was falls over there George <laughs> <laughs> At the end of his follow-through. Come on, son. Massive smile on his face. He's, uh, he'd be enjoying himself. Played for the Lions at New Road last week against South Africa. First Derbyshire Lions since Matt Critchley. There was a non-first-class game, wasn't it? And then there was, there was also... Yeah, there, there was a non-list A game because there were 13 or 14 a side and they all played. That was at uh, Taunton and then they played a proper game. He got tap in that first one, didn't he? He did a bit, they, yeah. They all did, didn't they? Yeah. I think the Lions, well, the Lions won the first game, though. They batted nicely. Ah, Duckett right. played for them. There's a good delivery. That was sharp. Taken at head height by uh, 
Brooke Guest has been one of the success stories of the season for Derbyshire. Batting at three and keeping. It's about time, though, somebody did at that. Yeah. And beyond the stumps, it's been so... Yeah, well, Harvey, Harvey, Harvey's batting was always sort of steady, Harvey has said. Mm. He um, was unlucky, though, wasn't he? he was, um, yeah, terrible that he had to retire through, uh, through the concussion. He's, he's still playing in the, in the county league. Good. As Scrimshaw's in again, and that one is pushed down into the offside backward of square by Hamid. who won't be too terrified by the extra pace of George Scrimshaw. He'll, he'll have faced some quicks in his international days, which will undoubtedly return. Yeah, you, you think so. I mean, everybody's a bit nervous about, is it Crawley? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Leeds has done well, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, has, yeah. Done What did he look like last week? Durham. Um, yeah, nothing special, really. <laughs> <laughs> he's done well, but he's done well for England. nothing special. Yeah, but no, he wasn't. He wasn't really. He got mm. out. He got out both in both innings relatively cheaply. Mm. He could put sixty or seventy on in the second innings, which just had, had everybody twitching a little bit. Uh, Scrimshaw's in and balls to Hamid. He pushes this out back of the square on the offside again. Again, it's Anish Dahl who does the fielding. But they don't seem to give them time. I mean, Adam Lythe continues to be a very, very fine opener in all forms of cricket, but was jettisoned early it's difficult isn't it because they had such solid openers England for so many years and and you know Cook would build an innings Strauss would build innings but can be explosive Trescothic just smashed it everywhere and successfully yeah. so you've got to decide what you want and what kind of opening bat batting pair you need whether you have one one style and one of the other they had no idea what they want though, did they at one point oh that's a good delivery from Scrimshaw again it's that just spot leaves again. him yeah it is that little dark spot, do you think? It's around there. There's a slightly darker patch on the uh, Cause I think on the pitch. The ball, the, one of the balls in that over got so high up and you said he took it above his head. And yeah. I think that was around there as well. Yeah. It's just short of a good length, which is pretty much where George Scrimshaw likes to bowl. He's just got a pat on the back from Wayne Madsen, as the bowlers generally do. 40 without loss after 12 overs. We are going through till 6 o'clock. None of you... Northampton, Cheltenham nonsense, finishing at 4.30. I don't know quite what the state of the players will be in by then. I've absolutely no idea. Dahl starts the new over from the race course end. He bowls on the off stump and it's pushed into the offside and uh, picked up just at backward point by oh. Matty McKinnon. The one game not starting today is... Uh, at Grace Road, where they played the Women's One Day International yesterday, Glamorgan played Leicester. Oh, I heard there. you say that yeah, earlier, yeah. So yeah. That's, that's starting tomorrow. Mm. So they, they might be rained off on day one. <laughs> you just don't know, do you? No. It's dull. Runs away from us now, and he just uh, gives that a little bit more... It looked like he gave it a little bit more loop or air, or Batsman got forward to it, Slater, pushed it into the offside once more. All sorts of deliveries. Box of tricks. Much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because he isn't express pace, so you can't rely on. Uh, he's, he's never going to bounce anybody out. Mm. A bit of guile, different lengths. How do you think Billy will take being dropped? Well, he was here this morning mm. with a smile on his face. Dahl once more bowling this onto the legs of uh, Slater and defended. Back up the pitch to Dahl, who just can't pick it up in his follow-through, but why should he? I think he'll be hugely disappointed. He'll be disappointed in the way that he's been batting. I spoke to him at Hove and, and said, look, Bill, I've got to ask you about your form. And he basically said, well, as long as I prepare as best I can for the next delivery that I'm going to face, then that's how, I, that's how it has to be. But he just can't buy a run this year mm -hmm. and, and has looked out of sorts as well. Dahl again, round the wicket, bowling. Dabbed into the offside by Slater. But he's such a big character in, in the club, isn't it? The skipper yeah. is well, yeah, such absolutely. a big figure in any club. The skipper has to lead by example and get runs, and that's that's why it's so hard, because and that's why it possibly could become a mental issue, because yeah. Yeah. you know, you're the leader of the team, and if you're not performing, you're as disposable as everyone else. Big call from Mickey Arthur, but that's why he was that's why he was brought in. Dahl again bowling. It's a good uh, trajectory on that one that's defended to make big calls not to get rid of Billy Godwin I hasten to add I don't think that was part of the remit uh, yeah and he's you know he'll, he'll continue to make big calls because he's a successful coach mm. have we got the whole Patterson 
Peterson, Paterson. Patterson White, Patterson and Pattinson are all the playing one. today. I just remember yeah, that from the other game. Absolutely brilliant. You all got confused. I've got no idea That's what's it. going on. Here's Dahl again, bowling and driven, but not finding the gap from Slater. And I don't think he got all of it. And uh, just picked up by the man at extra cover. No run. So Knott's 40 without loss, 13 overs gone. Slater on eight, Hamid on 28. And uh, Dahl has gone for one run in his two overs so far. It's warm, isn't it? <laughs> I hadn't expected this. Hats off to the brave souls heading down to the county ground today, says Adam New. Personally, I'll be hiding in the house. I'm with you for the duration on the live stream. Good to have you along with us. It's funny, isn't it? Because know. there's been loads of advice about how to keep your house cool, keep the windows shut, curtains closed. But then if you didn't do that from the day that it went up, it's just hot air. Scrimshaw begins a new album, played off the back foot, literally. Played off the back foot. <laughs> by, uh, Do you know what I mean, though? If yeah. you haven't trapped the cool air that was there originally in, then your house is full of hot air. Well, I, I, I went home last night and I'd left all the blinds drawn or shut, whichever way you... They were shut anyway. Depending how posh you are for yes, the day. Yes, I know, I know. Um, and it was about 23 degrees inside the house at 9 o'clock last night. I think, it, I think it warmed up over the course of the night, though, because, my word, it was tough sleeping last night. Scrimshaw bowls inside edge, thick inside edge, out into the onside from Hasseep Amid, fielded by McKeon. But, yeah, at one point when I'm taking off a sweat-soaked T-shirt and thinking, well, who's poured this water on this pillow? Mm. It was yeah, I had a moment like that last night. Horrible, yeah. horrible. Takes me back to having COVID. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's quite. No, it was just very unpleasant. Mm. Scrimshaw with his little waddle at the top of his mark. He's on his way in now. Tall figure, bowls to Hamid, who gets right up on his toes and pushes it out into the offside. Harry Kane comes in to do the fielding. One thing that amused me this morning watching BBC Breakfast News on BBC One was the Voxing interviews that were done at King's Cross and, and other places, and they're all like American people and who were just going, well, this is normal for us at home and everything's just shut down here. It's like, I mean, that's not an American accent, but you know what I mean. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> you know, I can't get to Edinburgh because the railway line's closed. Edinburgh, surely. Edinburgh, yeah. <laughs> surely. Love some Edinburgh rock. Amid waits as Scrimshaw is in again and he leaves this one alone outside the Austin and there's no run. They were talking as well. I mean, it, it, Jen... Bartram, who works for the BBC uh, Weather Unit, if indeed that's what it's called, she put a very long thread on Twitter because she was getting sick to death of people saying, well, how come the rails buckle and how come the tar melts and how come and how come? Mm -hmm. And the reason is that, that, that the rail is the railways are built to go to about 37 and a half degrees mm -hmm. and it's gone beyond that and it never goes beyond that. And we, the roads are built to different specifications on the continent because they know it's going to be hotter and it's a lot more expensive. And uh, Well, if you hit a buckled rail at 125 miles an hour, there's going to be a disaster. It wouldn't, it wouldn't do you any good, would it? No. It would not do you any good. Scrimshaw's in. Deploy just had a word with him. I think it was bowl a short one, uh, the advice from Deploy, because he did, but he got down on one knee there, Hamid, and let it go through to the keeper. There's also, of course, if we're going to do this topic the overhead line damage because that yes. expands and then the lines droop and of course if you're running at any sort of speed it'll just get it won't have the i can't remember the, i don't know the actual word but it's gonna yeah. it's gonna ripple at some point isn't it if you're going yeah. stupid speed and then that'll cost that'll cost th <laughs> thousands of pounds to repair and create more delays exactly I guess. exactly Calm down, everybody. Scrimshaw bowls. That one is pushed off the back foot out towards the point boundary. Anish Dahl's giving chase. They'll only come back for two to complete the over, which spoils the little run of maidens that uh, we'd had. I will say, though, hmm. this, this was predicted 10 days ago. So decisions and how to deal with it needed to be made, but there's too much infighting and bickering going on for people to make decisions. Like when I was asking you about this, I'm not getting political. Oh, I've had a lot of time on my own, so I've, I've won all my arguments. <laughs> <laughs> so like today, yeah. why have we got that game at Cheltenham, you know, having oh, yeah. shortened yeah, hours, yeah, yeah. when here, I mean, 
it's not, as you mentioned earlier, it's not healthy for any of these guys out here to be playing sport in this heat, in the sunshine. Well, it's not. At but, this time of the day. But they do play in hotter weather than this if they go on tour, don't they? That's so. true, yeah. Dahl starts a new over. That's a good delivery and defended astutely by Slater. No run. Yeah, they do. I guess they do. Um, which completely ruins the argument and they should sort themselves out at Cheltenham. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting when the football this evening, I think, um, obviously, Derby are at uh, Stevenage and Burton are at Brackley. It's not going to cool down appreciably by 7.30, 7.45, is it? So uh, those boys are running quite a lot. Sater defends this one up to mid on. In Oop. fact, it's uh, going to go all the way to, foot to the boundary for four. It was parried by the man trying to dive in front. He might have damaged his hand. Leas Deploy, today's captain. Just a little defensive punch, wasn't it? Mm. Up back up the pitch, but as we said, the outfield is more or less 80% yellow and very quick. And that is the first boundary for a while. 46 now, not to have 12 to Slater. Yeah, you're right about tonight. Derby at Stevenage and Burton at Brackley. It's, it's tough, isn't it? But yeah. Well, if you start the football season as early as they're starting, you're probably going to play in some hot weather, aren't you? Mm. Dahl again. Oh, he's beaten him. Is he taking the catch? He has. And Derbyshire have their first breakthrough. Slater getting a nibble. And it was caught by Brooke Guest. Mid-drift. And Dahl runs off with his finger in the air because he knew that he'd forced him to make an error. Slater goes for 12. And Knotts are 46 for one. I think they needed that, Derbyshire. Just approaching the end of the first hour. And uh, just the faintest of edges through to Brooke Guest. Danish Dahl, well, <laughs> he's having some season, the lad. Uh, he was top of the averages until he was run out in the second innings down at Durham. He's second in the batting averages with an average of 76, which is terrific. That's his uh, 21st wicket, is it? Well, it is. That's his, I'm surprised at that. I didn't realise he had that many. I knew he was having a good season. His 21st wicket of the season 31 for Connors 21 for Dahl 20 for Alex Thompson who's not playing in this game and then 11 for Nick Potts who also isn't playing in this game but yeah a breakthrough that was very very much required I've just heard the news stab as we like to call it do we call it a stab we probably build news build, build. News we call build. it build don't we I almost hit Fired at 7 o'clock last night 43 yeah, past the hour almost almost Second. hit it properly last night <laughs> There's a lot of hot seating going on yesterday. Oh, here. Yeah. Mm. Mm. The seat I was sitting in was very warm. I bet it was. Mm. It's all that hot air that was spoken for four hours. <laughs> no, no, I'm not, I'm not going there. <laughs> I've got Wesley in my ears now, so I'll tell you to shut up in a minute. Okay. So, new batsman is Ben Duckett. He's uh, another left-hander, and he comes out to take his guard and then does a little bit of gardening. But uh, you're right, it was the perfect time for Derbyshire to make that breakthrough. Well, the first ball of the day would have been the perfect time. But um, <laughs> considering both bat batters are in, or were, and uh, they were starting to alleviate the demons. So Duckett on strike for his first ball. Here comes Dahl around the wicket. New bowls, and there's a howl from first slip and an arm in the air as he just manages to get down on that one. No run. I think it's the be it's the perfect time to take a week just before my update gives me something to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Seeley sent an email in and joined the commentary. Do you have any idea of the average pace that Scrimshaw's bowling? He looks pretty quick today despite the heat. Well, I think he's bowling close to 90 miles an hour. That's what he thinks he's bowling at, certainly. Two slips go down. Dahl on his way again. Round the wicket he bowls. It's a full bunger that's clipped away through mid-wicket for four. No point chasing after that one. It was uh, a nice gift. So he's off the mark. Poor delivery, really. 50 up for knots as well. In the 15th over. Sorry, I've got the news on. No, I thought <laughs> you were about just, to no, no, do it. No, no. I'm just listening to the news. What's the end finally? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Your and finally's at Durham last week were really funny. <laughs> Dahl on his way again. 
bowling to Duckett. This time, Duckett is just dropping down on that one to mid on, no run. Yes, Wesley, we just passed the first hour. Not 50 for one, the wicket coming on the stroke of midday. Ben Slater caught by Brooke Guest off the bowling of Anuj Dahl. It was uh, Dahl's third over. He's taken one for nine. George Scrimshaw's bowling quickly, but uh, Notts won the toss here and decided to bat first. In a, a, well, it's fairly warm. Let's put it that way here at the county ground. Notts uh, doing okay. Hassi Pamid has 30, Ben Duckett four, and they are 50 for one. Marvellous. Absolute nonsense. It's fairly warm. <laughs> do you, do, you do what you want to do from the next change. Yeah. Dave will be back in a minute and yeah. I'll uh, go and do a circuit. It comes Scrimshaw and Bowles to Hasib Hamid who uh, pushes it up towards mid-on. There isn't a mid-on as such. He's more of a sort of straightish mid-wicket. Is uh, Matty McKinn, but he comes around to do the fielding. You can feel it warming up, though, can't you? It is definitely getting hotter. As you'd expect, it's midday, for goodness sake. There isn't a cloud in the sky. Goodness knows what it's going to be like on uh, HMS Twiggy tonight. Warm, I would suggest. Isn't it a floating tin? It's going to be hot. Scrimshaw bowls, and that's a, a good delivery. Lift and pace and goes through. To put guest past the edge of Hasib Hamid's bat. I enjoyed that. As did I, Ed. We shall see you later. Yeah. In one way or another. Dave's going to come back after doing all his uh, the price. admin. Yeah, he's very pleased with himself. Mm. Yeah. Nice one. All right, mate. Cheers. We'll see you soon. Ed does. With us on the commentary today. He's going to put that hat back on. He's very brave. In comes... Scrimshaw again and bowls. That one is pushed out into the offside. It's filled by Lewis Reese and there's no run. He's back. He's back. <laughs> He's yes. back. They needed that wicket, Derbyshire, didn't they? They were just looking uh, nicely settled in the top. It doesn't get any easier, of course, with Ben Duckett coming out and then it doesn't get any easier with Joe Clark coming out and then, of course, there's <laughs> Stephen Mullaney and Tom White. So it never gets any easier, but important for Derbyshire to, to get one. Yeah. Right on the hour. Scrimshaw bowling pretty quickly as he just troubles Hamid a little bit. He gets it down to fine leg. Fine tumbling stop by Anish Dahl down away to our left-hand side. And uh, it restricts them to a single. 51 for one. Yeah, this is, somebody's already asked me how quickly George Scrimshaw is bowling. He's bowling quickly, but we've no idea because... Uh, we don't have that kind of information, sadly. He said good morning to me, big George. George, yeah, he's a very nice young man. Yeah, yeah very I'm nice. Sure, young he man. has no idea who I am, but he did say good morning. It's very nice of him. Yeah, tall fellow, isn't he? You tall enjoy, fellow, enjoy, stating the obvious. Enjoy his moustache. I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. The old Tom Selleck there, is it? Oh, beautiful. Yeah, brave but beautiful. Born in Burton upon Trent, but through the ranks at Worcestershire. Oh, it's it's. Something in the air in those parts, isn't it? Mm, I think so. Yeah. He bowls now to duck it. Full delivery that he drives out into the offside of McKinnon. With a tumbling stop prevents it from getting off the square. Difficult place to field that, really. He did well there, Matty McKinnon. We'll see him at some point. Interesting to see. But you was, I'm sure it was you who asked me, not Ed, if we'd see any difference in the captaincy between Deploy and, and Billy Godman, who's done it on a regular basis. Um, Difficult to tell, really, isn't it? Not having seen too much of Lear's deploy, and he was firefighting a lot down at Taunton without much success. Mm -hmm. Duckett waits, and Scrimshaw bowls to him, and that's turned up towards mid on. When Lewis Reese comes around to do the fielding, one run off the over. 51 for one. Nottinghamshire, Duckett has four. Hasib Hamid has 31. Lions loving, isn't it? Scrimshaw and Duckett. Yeah. What's George done with his shirt, do you reckon? Got it framed. Well, you'd, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? You'd hope so. I'm sure there'll be plenty more to come. He did play in the actual... The second game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that was yeah. the important one, wasn't yes, it? Yes, that was the one where he became a lion. Yeah, the first yeah. one was sort of 13 yeah. or 14 aside, yeah. wasn't it? Well, Duckett made 85 in the first one, 44 in the second, but not enough to get him called into the, uh, into the squad, you'll understand. Well, why would it? Well, exactly. Well, why would it? 
There's uh, my old mate Nudge. And Nudge Dal bowling to Hamid, who punches into the offside fielded by Cartwright. Now, can I see Bami drive better than Max Verstappen or Rory McElroy? It wasn't, wasn't his driving that was the problem, McElroy, yeah. was it? It was the putting that was the issue. Yeah. Just never sank anything. Now, talking of haircuts, my word, the fellow that won it. That's a belter, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anything that goes back to the 70s yeah. is all right by well, me. Well, he, he could have been, done a bit of country singing, couldn't he? Remarkable. The next delivery is driven again by a meet to the Derbyshire captain, El Duploy Esquire. Let's just fly on the inside of the out. Yeah, go away, fly. There's a couple of there's a moth on the outside before, which was slightly irritating. At uh, Cardiff last week, I don't want to put anybody off an early lunch, but we were struggling to see because of the smear of something that the seagull had left for us to, oh, nice. uh, to enjoy on the outside of the window, which he couldn't open to. Next delivery is uh, defended by a mead. I mean, you know, they would need somebody from the ground with either a, a very long mop on a lollipop or something or a, a cherry picker to go up and clean it. And, of course, at, uh, at a moment's notice, you're not going to get one of those to, no. uh, to come and clean the windows. I don't know how so. to clean these, to be honest. Or they just rely on the rain. Which we haven't had much of. Well, you've got a, you know, you've got like a little bit of a parapet over us, haven't you, to, to stop the seagulls yeah. and uh, and such like. Very useful that uh, overhang. It's deploy. No, it isn't. It's Andrew's Dow bowling. If it was deploy bowling, we'd, uh, we'd, have, we'd have moved the day on a little bit, driven up to the skipper. It's deploy. It's yeah. Fifty-one for one. He does bowl a bit of left arm, yeah. but but not a not a lot. Not a lot. I'm not sure how much he's bowled this season, if I'm entirely honest with you. I'll have to double check on that. Hilton Cartwright just nudging a little bit closer at short extra. Is he the first Hilton to play for Derbyshire, do you think? I think so. I didn't. I, that's a good question, actually. I'm sure Griff could tell us. I no just doubt. Passed on by Middlebrook. Bowls and Mead blocks this one to point. And there's no run. Mead 31 from 59 deliveries. Man out Ben Slater, who was by and large marooned at the non striker's end for a, a lot of his uh, time out there. Often had to, uh, to watch Amid playing his shots. Good first half for the Derbyshire bowlers, 15 overs or thereabouts, getting that wicket, and this time it's uh, blocked. Mind you, the uh, the bowling story of the morning is uh, Oliver Hannon Dolby, who's, who's got a fifer inside the first <laughs> hour of the morning at Edgbaston. Kent, I don't know, 30 or 40 for five, and he's got them all. Blimey. In Division One, of course, you'd understand. Rarefied atmosphere of Division One. Well, 51 for one here at the end of the over. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 44 for five. That's not good, is it? Not good at all. 51 for one's okay. You'd hope that the umpires would take into account the uh, the over rate, wouldn't you? Yeah, they, the, for the heat. They did say at the toss, you know, let's. We uh, know it's a hot day. Let's be sensible, but yeah. you know, at least try and move it on a little bit. Don't take the mickey. Scrum sure begins a new over with a short ball down the leg side. The duck it bails out, playing the shot probably sensibly. Mm. I don't think they actually said don't take the mickey, but you know that was sort of the sort of the tone. We will yeah. have regular breaks. You know, you can have. Drinks breaks whenever you want, but you know at least keep the game moving forward. We had a drinks break after 45 minutes, which means that the next one should be at half past. Then they've only got yeah. half an hour to lunch. Yeah. So every half hour would have made sense, wouldn't it? If they require one, I just, there's a a nice a, a cool box in front of the members' pavilion on the boundary's edge. Either that or fireworks. As this next one is <laughs> turned into the leg side by Duckett. Well, two Saturdays ago, I answered a distress call late on Saturday morning from uh, the club I've had a long association with but haven't played for for, <laughs> for a million years. Desperate, absolutely desperate for an umpire. Any chance, Dave? And I just run out of excuses. I, I, can, I can fob anybody off at the, the best of times, but I run out of excuses. And I, I stood and uh, ended up doing all 90 overs. And, God, dear. Broke my back, broke my calves. It's hard on the back, isn't it? 
Round the wicket comes Grimshaw, bowls down the leg side and pulled away for four very violently indeed by Ben Duckett. That one raced away to the boundary at backward square leg. Harry Kame and Anush Dahl were both in the vicinity, but were never going to get anywhere close. And that was uh, that was very well struck by Duckett. It was, it was like a buzzy wasp that was uh, just hovering over his picnic and, and he just swatted it away, didn't he, dismissively. Um, and I said, that's it, folks, never again, never again. Anyway, so this Saturday they were at home when I went down and had a little bit of a look. Here's Scrimshaw again. What was his response? Be? It's a fuller delivery that's driven and nicely half-stopped by uh, Matty McKinnon at mid-wicket. They do run through for a quick single, but it would have gone for four had he not got his left hand to it. This week they'd, uh, they'd wrote my mate in to do it, and, and just as... I got there, a ball had been hit violently back towards, well, towards him, the umpire at the, at the standing end. And in an act of self-preservation, he'd uh, apparently put his hand up to take it. And it, it jarred his back somehow. I, oh. I don't know what happened. Anyway, he had to come off just as I got there. Ah. You know what's coming next. Is there an umpire <laughs> in the house? This one is defended <laughs> by Hasib Hamid. <laughs> and, uh, no, I said last week, no, no, please, no. Anyway, they'd agreed in my absence that they'd have a drinks break every ten overs. So I thought that was, yeah. I thought that was quite, uh, quite handy. Something happened to me uh, as well that um, I'm, I'm now hoping I will never ever get get asked again. Um, and, I sh and I shouldn't give the pro out, did you? Well, it was worse <laughs> than that. It was the most, the biggest act of incompetence of all time. Oh, excellent. Scrimshaw <laughs> waddles at the start of his run. He's on his way in now to bowl to Hasib Hamid, who drives him for four runs up towards the long half boundary. There was no effort in that drive from Hamid at all, because which is why I was a little surprised that it just raced to the boundary. It was all timing from Hamid. He moves on to 35, and Nottinghamshire is 60 for one after 18 overs. Ben Duckett at the other end. Has nine. Gross incompetence. I do like the sound of gross well, incompetence. <laughs> I'm nattering to my mate because my team, you know, those I know were in the field uh, at square leg umpire. Oh, right oh, beside oh, me, just to my left. Oh, no. Left hander on strike. And he clips it towards me. If I hadn't have moved, it would have hit me in the forehead. But I didn't know where to go in relation to him because it's at catchable height. <laughs> and I didn't know if I go left, and I'd absolutely lost him altogether. And my last thought was, well, if it hits me, the ball's still alive, isn't it? And he can catch it off me. Oh. And it very nearly did, but he reached across, but then spilled it. So it's my fault for not getting out of the way. And I, I just I had to apologise. I didn't know to go forward, back, right or left. I mean, given my time again, I'd probably have tried to bob to the ground. But had I done so, I'd never got up again. So well, I said, there you are. You should have asked me. I told you. That's gross incompetence. <laughs> Don't ask me again. Here's... An Dal round the wicket bowls and Ben Duckett plays it up to mid on and there's no run. 60 for one. But all the years I've played, I've never seen an umpire get in such a ridiculous position. It was um, it, it was it was crackers, but it, it was literally hit straight at me and would have hit me in the in the forehead. Blimey. Which which would have been nasty, of course. One, yeah, of, the, one but, of the umpires you know, in T20 finals uh -huh. day in the Derbyshire County Premier League, which was last Sunday, got hit. By a drive that went straight back at him. Dal round the wicket. Duckett slaps it away. He looks in the mood today. Another boundary to the left-hander. Moves on to 13. It was short and wide from uh, Anand Dal. He'd want that one again, I would imagine. Duckett has faced 11 balls. Got 13 runs and always bats with a great deal of impetus. 64 for one, Nottinghamshire. David McCardle, who's a regular listener, says, Greetings from Dunblane, Ooh. where the sun is out and it's raining heavily. I need to bring in the washing. That is remarkable, isn't it, that uh, it could be raining and... Well, it's not remarkable, but... <laughs> I've got one from Mark back. I'll read in a minute. Next ball. Clipped firmly up to mid on. No run. He says, uh, Ari Scrimshaw, I suspect that if he continues to develop, to develop uh, then uh, if usual habits continue, uh, Dave Bracegirdle may get better acquainted at Trent Bridge. Uh, clearly, <laughs> I, uh, clearly, I hope not. Yeah. Uh, Warwickshire are the new knots, though, aren't they? They're going around mopping up all the talent at the moment. 
various guises. Next ball on its way now. Bowls and lovely shot from Duckett through the offside for four more. My word, there's been some nice shots this morning, yeah. Dave. Irrespective of where your favour lies, there's been some really lovely cricket shots, some lovely drives. Whether the ball was uh, <laughs> in the slot uh, for Duckett to execute that shot or not is a, is a, is a moot point. It, uh, it really was there, served up for him, but he put it away so dismissively. And he's on to 17. Yeah, you can tell by the, the, the sheer lack of effort from the batsman. There is obviously plenty of effort, but it just looks effortless. Yeah. As they, uh, it's all about the timing. And now Anuj Dahl is having a conversation with Leas Deploy about uh, something or other. I don't know. I, was, I think it was when I was down at Cardiff last week. I think I was in commentary with uh, with Nick Webb, the uh, BBC Wales commentator. Mm -hmm. He was talking about Scrimshaw, saying he'd, he'd not come across him yet, hadn't met him or seen him play as Dahl bowls and Duckett drives to mid on. And all I could say was, have you seen Stephen Finn play? And I mean, yes. I said, well, you've seen George Scrimshaw, because that's, yeah. yeah, you know, that's sort of how I think about him. Yeah. The, um, I like the, the distinctive standing with the legs just slightly apart, like a golfer putting very deliberately at the end of his mark. And then... And he comes, but same sort of wiry build. I'm not yeah. too far off. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. Tall and ranging. Mm. Yeah. Does a good job. Next delivery on its way. And that's gone over the shoulder of Duckett's bat through to the keeper. End of the over 68 for one. And he's, you know, he's come on a million dollars as well. I mean, I, I've only seen him two or three times this year, two or three times last year. But every time I see him, he looks better and better. He's overcoming the injury problems that he, that he had throughout the early stages of his career uh, and have played in every single game of the T20 Blast which, uh, which is something he probably mm. couldn't have done a few years ago but his uh, spell has finished four overs for 13 because Sam Connors is going to replace him from the city end mm. second spell second spell five overs three maidens naught for nine it's gone on walk about. Mm. He just sent me a picture saying how warm it is. He said it's really windy out there as well. I think he's over by the uh, the grandstand away to our left. And that's where David Griffin suggested he might go because of the breeze coming up the race course, coming up the uh, the home straight. Mm -hmm. The straight mile. Two slips and a gully for Sam Connors, who bowled quite nicely first up this morning, but from the race course end, he's going to be bowling from the the city end this time to see if he has any better luck. Can he pick up a second wicket for Derbyshire? 68 for one. He bowls to Hamid who leaves this one alone outside the off stump. Goes through to the keeper. Is that normal? Four overs for George? Not you know, not well, terribly I, poor figures? I can't remember the last time he... Uh, uh, last time, well, he hasn't played any red yeah. ball cricket at all this season. So it, so it is normal for him, yes, four overs. Yes. Yeah, I think I think that's the way they'll use him in very short, sharp bursts, just to try and keep his pace up, because that is clearly his biggest asset. He looks okay there at mid-on. Connors is in and bowls, and that one is defended by Hamid, and picked up by George Scrimshaw, who jogs in from mid-on. And I suppose Anis Dahl's bowled five, Aitchis has bowled five, Connors bowled five, so he could have possibly bowled another one, but... Clearly, uh, Lear's deploy fancied another blast of Sam Connors from the from the city end. I was looking at the, the there is some wind because the Nottinghamshire flag, which is to the left hand end of the uh, members' pavilion, is blowing quite violently. That one is short oh. from Connors and picked up very nicely by Hassi Pamid and whipped out to the mid wicket boundary for four over the head of Matty McKeon and sounded quite nice off the bat and off it went. Aerially, but never, mm. never a problem. Just about see the the outline of the Michael Bublé stage to our left. Oh, has he been or is he coming? He's been, yeah. That's, there's a sort of lighter patch away to our left and then lots of little lines where presumably bits and pieces were in front of the stage. I thought he was only wheeled out at Christmas. Well, no. Has he, has he spent his summers at Derby? Very popular. This next delivery from Connors is at short oh. again and cracked off the back foot out towards the extra cover boundary for four. 
He said that Duckett looks in the mood. Hassi Bermid looks in the yeah. mood as well. He's moved on to 43 and it's 76 for one. Yeah, if you remember at Trent Bridge, Dave, perhaps you'd forgotten and want to erase or it from the memory. It, yeah, blocked it more likely. Yeah. You know, it, was, it was a Mead, wasn't it? Rather than Slater. Yes, and he was. finished 93 not out. He, he, you know, he really got a gallop on as not chased down whatever it was, 160 or so. Comfortably chased it down. There was a, a little bit of a thought that he might get to three figures, but then I think Slater was presented with a couple of boundary opportunities and put them away. Mead waits and this one is defended this time. Out into the offside, and Harry Kane comes in to do the fielding. Just looking at a Seba Mead, his Nottinghamshire debut was that Bob Willis trophy game that we has to play, and Finn Hudson Prentice will remember fondly Derbyshire defeating Notts at Trent Bridge in a game that should have been the Derbyshire home game. I didn't realise that was, uh, that was his debut. That was a Mead's debut, yeah. yeah. Waits now as Connors bowls. Too many guides this down to the vacant third man area for four runs. Harry came and Wayne Madsen pretend to chase it. And he moves to 47 and it's 80 for one. That's the breeze blowing the, uh, I've got a quick look, blowing the sight screen around down yeah. below us. I, I thought so. I think that's gone up as a no ball as well, oh, Dave. It? Oh, right. I wasn't sure with umpire Pollard because he. You know, the arm was outstretched, signalling the four, but then he held, he held it, and if he's holding the pose, yeah, the you're right. But yeah, it's gone to 82. Ten off the over already. Final ball about to be bowled by Sam Connors, potentially. Meet on to 47. Mm. Connors bowls to him, and that's beaten him. Just shows you there is a little bit of something there as that one went through to Brooke Guest and the over 82 for one. There's going to have another drinks break now. Mm. There's a little dark patch just back of a length yeah, on the it. offside. And uh, Ed suggested before when he was on, if the ball hits that, it, see, it tends to do something. Now, goodness knows what the patch is. It's just a dark patch on the, on the pitch. But it's about the last thing you want is a ball that misbehaves on day one. Although, given that the ball is now 20 hours old and will stop misbehaving at all fairly shortly, uh, it's nice that the ball, a ball is misbehaving. Mm. Makes a nice change. We're just having a drink. So elsewhere, Cheltenham, Hampshire, the, they're the blast holders now, aren't they? Winning it for the third time at the weekend. 70 without loss against Gloucestershire. North Hants at home to Lancashire, 56 for two. Somerset at home to Yorkshire, a 64 for one. Essex are batting at the Oval, but have had a woeful time of things. 54 for four, uh, but not quite as bad as Ken to a 56 for five at Edgbaston, with Warwickshire's Oliver Hannon Dolby having I mean, taken all five wickets. And the only other Division Two game that started today, Sussex were put into bat, surprisingly, by Middlesex. That's a um, bit of a shocker in these conditions, but Sussex are 56 for one. And that is at Lord's. Just having a look, just to make sure it wasn't at one of their outgrounds, but that one is at Lord's. Yeah, they played at Merchant Taylor's last week, mm. didn't they? I think Kent will soon be languishing in the wilderness of the second division by the look of it. They're in all sorts of trouble, aren't they? Many of them, as you've said before, nobody really knows where anybody's no. going to be. No, well, the bottom two are Gloucestershire and Somerset, aren't they? Yeah. He says, chuckling. <laughs> <laughs> is this Lewis Reese going to it have a go? It is Lewis Reese going to have a go. Yeah, it is. Nick Hartshorn, Nick Hartshorn, sorry it's the heat, Nick. Morning everyone, great to hear Ed again, here it was. Uh, he says he's melting at home. Do you mean he was going to bowl this over anyway? Or, you know, got them together in a bit of a huddle there, Leo's deploy, whilst they were having a drink. So who fancies it? <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll never know, I guess. No, because by the time I get to speak to Leo's deploy, I'll have forgotten all about yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you might be speaking to Lewis Rees, who gets a five for, and he tells you, "Well, I wasn't going to bowl, yeah. and we had a drink, and Just suddenly came on. Somebody sent a message out with a message in a bottle." Yeah, well, I like a left arm. Um, what time is it? Twelve twenty-six. What time is it, Mister Wolf? Yeah, twenty-six. Somebody just tweeted something uh, on the uh, on the internet, which is very amusing. In comes Lewis Rees to bowl to Ben Duckett. It's a full delivery, not particularly quick, but full. And he uh, gets his bat down on it. It doesn't work, Dave, unless you share it with us. 
No, I'm going to. I'm oh, going right. to no, no, it is. It is very amusing. <laughs> and here it is. Um, now somebody's put. Uh, it's, it's today's Twitter idea for speeding up the overrates. It's. Uh, and then he's. Uh, he's Taking a screenshot of it, the, the idea is to speed up the overrates by releasing a live tiger onto the outfield when the clock reaches the cut-off time. I think that would work <laughs> nicely. Just watch them prowling around the boundary's edge. Reese is in again, and this one's wide of the off stump, perhaps swinging away, but too far wide of the off stump initially for Duckett to be in any way interested. It's been shocking in the tests this summer, hasn't it? It's shocking. There's yeah. There's one day where they had 77 overs. Oh, well, at least it was entertaining. Wants to be at £100 a pop. Well, yes, there is that, isn't anyway, there? Anyway, grumble over. Yes. We're next door. <laughs> well done, well done, everybody. <laughs> I'm listening in to uh, Radio Derby again now as in goes Lewis Reese and Bolt. That one is driven very pleasantly by Ben Duckett, but pretty much straight to Matty McKeon on this occasion, and there's no r a run. That's found himself a bit of shade over on the far side of the ground. He's done well. Still bravely wearing his hat. You don't see many of those hats in these parts. 82 for one. Beautiful as. Reese is in again and bowls. That one is whipped into the leg side by Duckett. He's going to get at least a couple of runs here. Harry Kame is chasing towards the boundary. Sam Connors coming around the boundary. He's got a very good arm as Sam Connors, but uh, the batsman comfortably get back for a third run. 85 for one. Duckett on to 20 from nine, uh, 20 deliveries. And Hasib Amid 47 from 69. The partnership already worth 42. Essentially, or was that three already gone on? It's already gone on. It's worth 39. A lot of numbers. A lot of numbers. So Reese will be bowling to the right-handed Hasib Hamid with just the one slip. Hilton Cartwright clutching, catching close on the offside. Reese is in and bowls again. A full delivery, and Hamid just guides it out into the offside. So it is about 30 seconds. The delay, excellent. Thank you, Ed. Oh, no idea what happened there, but that was a bit of a, a glitch. I don't like glitches. Apologies if it woke you up at home. Reese on his way in again. Bowls to Hamid, who comes forward and pushes it out into the offside. Cartwright comes around to do the fielding. And it's the end of Reese's first over. Three runs conceded. Takes his cap from uh, the umpire. And knots have moved on to 85 for one. Duckett has 20. Hamid has 47. Not getting any cooler. Jane next door is uh, opening the window. Very sensible. Not sure whether you get much cooler when the window opens, though. Here's Sam Connors. Last over cost him 14 runs. Rather ruined his figure. Six overs, three maidens, not for 23. He's in and bowls to Ben Duckett, who pushes it out into the offside where Matty McKeon does the fielding. And there is no run. One. The trees away to our right are blowing in the wind, as is the answer, of course. Thank you very much. And much of the crowd is either on the grandstand side of the ground away to the left or under the shelter of the roof of the East Midlands demolition stand. As Connors bowls and Duckett just guides this. That's nicely fielded at third slip. Is that uh, Hilton Cartwright? It is. Diving away to his left-hand side. Got both hands to it. He might enjoy this pitch if it's flat. If indeed it is flat. Not so making it look quite flat at the moment, certainly. Oh, 
The slips look quite close together from here, but it might just be, what's it called, parallax? Something like that. In goes uh, Connors and Bowles. That one is defended back towards him. He bends down and picks it up with his left hand. And there's no room. Your boys are far more uh, My boys? on time than mine. <laughs> I've not done mine yet, no. but I'm not even sure if I'm going to do one. But if I do, I can whip it out of there, stick it in there, and we're up. Jobs are good. <laughs> just done a Sieber Mead a disservice there. I said, I think, is it eight boundaries? Is it ten? Ten in his 47. I know. Connors to Duckett, who's pulled this into the mm. leg side. It was a slightly ungainly looking shot, but he's going to get four runs for it out to the square leg boundary. Perhaps hurried him a little, but the ball was always hitting the deck quickly. Mm, that's his fifth boundary in 24. And they've added 43 in 44 balls. These two. Sam Connors, well, his, his figures are slowly melting. Well, they are. Ten balls he's bowled in this spell. He's gone for 18. Not sure how long Leah's deploy can uh, stick with him. We'll find out. A couple of balls left of this over. Connors is in again and bowls to duck it. He just pushes this out into the offside. McKinnon. We'll do the fielding and then give the ball to Anuj Dahl, who gives it to Hilton Cartwright, who is clearly the designated polisher. He was up at Durham. Must be able to look after a cricket ball well. The ball they used in the second innings, I don't think, was changed. And I can't remember that happening at any stage this season. It must have been a rogue ball because the rest of them have been hopeless. At where? At Durham? At Durham, yeah. Mm. The second innings. They got a new ball after 80, of course, but... I don't think it was changed, and if it was, it was very late on. Connors in and bowls. That one is edged and dropped by Ben Aitchison. That could be expensive. It was down to his right. He really should have caught it. Duckett gets a life on 24. Relatively, relatively straightforward chance <laughs> for Ben Aitchison. It's the end of the over, 89 for one. And now the skipper says, have a blow, Sam. Which yeah. is unfortunate. I'm not sure he has, but you know that would have been yeah. typical, wouldn't it? That's the difference between you know getting a wicket, getting the breakthrough, just dragging your side back in it, and you know now bowling two overs that have gone for a few runs. Well, it's the kind of day where if you get an opportunity, you have to take it, haven't yeah. you? And uh, that wasn't taken by Ben Aitchison. Now, as slip catchers go, it, you know it, it, it wasn't a ten out of ten, but it wasn't a, a four out of ten either. You know, seven out of ten probably. Should have got that. There's Lewis Rees bowls, and this one's guided away, no run. They're coming to me in a minute, so I'll just nick off for Should a moment. Should I shut up? You oh, no. no you... Very opposite of don't shut up. Um, left in charge of this machine whilst Dave takes control of another one. So, Mead on 47. He's played against, as I see here, Derbyshire five previous times. and. That's five half centuries and 94 here last year and 93 not out at Trembridge this season. Lewis Rees, former teammate, of course, of uh, Amid at Old Trafford. This one's uh, just helped onto the leg side and there's no run. About 23, 24 minutes away from the first break of the day, the lunch break. Lewis Rees bowls drive into the offside by Amid, fielded by Cartwright. There's no run. Ben Slater, the only wicket to fall. That was in the 15th over. Just caught behind from the bowling room of Anuj Dalu. Came on his first change today. He's bowled five overs. Reese into his second. Bowls edged this time short of first slip. The only slip, that's Wayne Madsen. He takes it cleanly but on the bounce. And a little low five from Brooke Guest who uh, to reward him for his efforts. They 89 they love a low one. five, don't they? They, do. they love a low five. They do. I don't think I've ever given anybody a low five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not 
I've never given anyone a high five either. But There's Reese again. A little bit of breeze that Dave was talking about, just ruffling his shirt. This one's played to backward point. Um, noticed it. Well, it was obvious that uh, at Cardiff last week in the uh, warm, sultry conditions, um, pretty much all the knots side, in truth, ten of the knots side, were white, floppy sonats. And I saw them warming up today in the white, floppy sonats. Derbyshire are wearing their county caps. Not one yeah. single floppy sonat out there. I mean, not for me to, uh, to pass comment on <coughs> appropriate headwear in these conditions, but obviously as a team they've elected to go for the county cap, this is pushed in the offside, or perhaps the Derbyshire club shop has sold out a floppy sonat. Anyway, <laughs> it's uh, the end of the over 89 for one. I think that was a maiden from Lewis Reese. It was two overs, none for three. The, the last sun hat wearer was Matt Critchley, who's obviously down at Essex mm. now, and the one before that would have been Ben Slater, I think. So uh, neither of the most recent floppy sun hat wearers are uh, in the squad anymore. I don't recall any of these players who are out there at the moment wearing them. And in fact, Lewis Reese, generally, certainly at Durham for the entire match and, and in previous years, hasn't worn a cap at all. But I think it's eminently mm, sensible to yeah. wear something today, which he is doing. He's down at fine leg. I think I'd have gone with a flop. You don't like yeah, the old, No, I think the, it makes the, sense. The old back of the neck burning. Connors begins a new over from the city end to Ben Duckett, who pushes it after come, coming back into his crease, out into the offside. It's fielded by. Matty McKinnon. Yeah, I definitely wear. Uh, I've got my cap with me, my uh, Blackrod Cricket Club cap. Mainly because later on this afternoon, if the sun does dip, it shouldn't dip too much because we're in July, for goodness sake. But if it does dip, it makes it quite tricky to see at this side of the box. A little skip in his run up, Sam Connors. He's in and bowls. That one strikes uh, Duckett on the pad. Too high. Milton Cartwright fields and then gets some of the that's horrible that gets some of the sweat off the back of his neck to shine the ball. Just wonder how costly that drop will be. Mm. Nothing as yet. He's not added to his twenty-four ducket, but the form he has been in. Averaging just under seventy for the season. Two centuries and five fifties as well. Seven hundred and sixty-four runs going into this match, of course, he missed a game last week playing for the Lions. He waits now. Three slips go down. That one is uh, left alone outside the off stump. Goes through to Brooke Guest. On the live Tiger idea, uh, Ian uh, Chesvaker <laughs> says, well, I suppose a dead one wouldn't be as effective. No, it probably wouldn't, actually. <laughs> that would get very messy. Imagine the flies <laughs> on day four. <laughs> Outfield littered with dead Tigers. A barking dog tends to do it for me. I'm not a fan of barking, yapping dogs. No, no. There's an umbrella up in the uh, in the grandstand. That's for shade. Some squirrels on the grass behind this morning when I got here. Ah, this one is edged over the slip cordon by uh, Ben Duckett for four. It's another no ball, as well from Sam Connor. So that's an expensive delivery or non-delivery. Six to the total. Ninety-five for one in the 24th over. Well, of course, we saw a squirrel on the outfield at Trent Bridge, didn't we, we in, did. the, we in did. the game earlier this season? It certainly wasn't that useless article, Nuts the Squirrel. We watched the... Uh, um, <laughs> funnily enough, I taped the whole day and the only thing I fast-forwarded it to and watched was the, uh, oh, the, mascot, the mascot race. race. Yeah. And then on, by Sunday morning, I'd heard about the, uh, the fiasco at the end, so watch that little bit. Next delivery is pushed out into the offside by Duckett. I think it was fairly well explained in the end, wasn't it? That once yeah. he'd signalled a bye, the match was over. But yeah, but did Nuts, I, 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 Nuts I, I, not do it, well in the uh, I think the mascot I, I race? I think Nuts is still trying to get under the uh, under the netting or whatever it was. Yeah, well, yes, yeah, Lanky struggled, didn't he? Was in had a massive lead. Know. These mascots massively. that have the big clodhopper boots on, they've got uh, no chance, no. have they? You need, no. you know, if you've got some running with in training shoes, then you know, get your smart money on. Connors bowls. That one is defended by Duckett up towards mid off. But they did say, didn't they, the, the Falcon was going for a, for three in a row. Was, I presume yeah. that's yours. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Freddie, um, Freddie finished third in the end, I think. Yeah, 
slightly disappointing. It was one by a gorilla, wasn't it? From was it the Gloucestershire? Is yeah. it the Gloucestershire mascot, yeah. the gorilla? Yeah. We tend not to see too many tight um, sides from the south. Dan's been on uh, Liam Patterson White's dad and says hi to Dave and to Dave. Uh, Liam's dad has asked him to wear his floppy for this one. Yes, yeah, yeah. well, quite smart. Absolutely smart. The next delivery from Connors is pushed up towards mid on where it's filled by Lear's deploy. 95 1 at the end of the over. Duckett 28, Hamid 47. Well, it makes perfect sense, doesn't it, to get the. I mean, these players, <laughs> you'd imagine they've got a bit of cream on, but is that enough? Since when did we ever speak perfect sense? Never. Well, I can't, can't, I can't speak for you. <laughs> no, I think you probably, you're probably spot on. 95 for one. If Knots can get to the break. Only one down. I think they'll consider it a very decent morning's work. And Derbyshire will rue that drop. Looks as if Lewis Rees is... No, he's not. He's just Ben Duckett stood in the wrong place. I was going to say, he's going to go round the wicket, but Duckett uh, now told by the umpire, get yourself over to the other side. Bowls, and there's Hamid's 50. And, uh, well, that's just about the shot that summed up his innings because he's uh, driven it away on the offside. That one perhaps not as crisply as some of the others, but that has been a terrific knock from Asiba Mead. He's got there 78 balls and 11 fours. It's his sixth first-class match against Derbyshire, and he's sixth 50. Likes batting against Derbyshire. Likes batting full stop, but very well played. 99 for one, Amid on to 51. And the 50 partnership comes up at the same time as well, off 60 deliveries. So just 10 overs. 50. Reese, his former opening partner at Old Trafford, bowls to Amid, who drops this on the leg side. And that will be the 100 up to rapturous. No, I don't think we can, I don't think no, we can quite make out on so. the effects microphone the rapturous applause. Well, first, mm. 50 came up. In the 15th over, and just 10 overs later, three figures registered by Nottinghamshire, so they've stepped on the gas. The partnership worth 54 off 61 deliveries. And uh, Derbyshire's bowlers and fielders toiling a bit here in the final half hour of the session. Duckett's on strike. Left armour to left-hander, pushes it into the offside, and Hilton Cartwright fields and then spears it down to the other end to Brooke Guest. Down to one slip. There's a. Well, it's not that defensive the field, to be fair. But the, the the noise out there doesn't suggest that the uh, that the Derbyshire bowlers and the fielders have got a lot of energy to egg each other on at the moment, which is perhaps unsurprising. Next delivery on its way, and Duckett again drives, but there's protection on that offside, and there's no run. I don't know if it's gremlins in the system or just me or whatever. One or two links and things not opening. One or two pictures not opening. Mark's obviously sent a picture. Afternoon chaps from the heat of Lincolnshire near Sleaford. Uh, day two of this heat wave. I'm mum sitting today, not moving much. I'm told it might get to 42 degrees oh, later. That's too hot. Reese to bowl to Ben Duckett. Who, uh, well, it got into an awkward position there. Initially, I thought it was perhaps... Looking to pull it on the leg side, but it just seemed to hurry on to him and he just seemed to fend it off his body to nowhere in particular. Survives, 100 for one, with one ball left in the 25th. Not many deliveries from this end have misbehaved at no. all. So I guess some of these other games then have, uh, have gone to lunch. The um, games at Cheltenham and Northampton, they have indeed as... Lewis Rees bowls to duck it, beats him all ends up. Best delivery that Lewis Rees has bowled by a country mile. Goes through to the keeper, 100 for one at the end of the over. Yeah, lunch at Cheltenham where Hampshire are 79 without loss and lunch at Wantage Road where North Ants are 63 for two against Lancashire. Just playing 90-minute sessions there in that Hampshire. Uh, 78 without loss. Felix Organ, who has one of the best names in county cricket, is uh, 48 not out. I don't know why. Saying Felix Organ, and I also like saying Ricardo Vasconcelos. Well, they've got um, Emilio Gay as well, haven't they? North Hans. They've got yeah. a terrifically bunch of terrifically named cricketers. They have. They have. Makes up for having to go to Wanted Gerard. Well, there is that. <laughs> not been this season. <laughs> I've only um, been in the T20. I think we'd go uh, again in the 50 but, over. Uh, the commentary position has now changed, hasn't it? So who's on at the far end then? Van Aitchison's uh, back. 
Yeah. Just in his back. Bold five overs for 29. First up this morning, and it looks like he's going to go through to lunch with about 14 minutes or so to go until the first interval. And he bowls to Hasib Amid, who just turns it into the leg side. And there's no run. T says a tidy start from Knotts. Sadly, though, it's time for me to head off to work. Damn. That doesn't sound very good unless, you, unless you're going, I don't know, lifeguard in a, uh, in a sports centre, lifeguard in a swimming pool. You're probably not doing that, T. I'm not sure <laughs> what you do. But sell ice creams. Next delivery is defended by Hamid back to Ben Aitchison. Tosses the ball away to Lears to ploy, polishes on his. We've got the ice cream sleeve. van on the ground here, haven't we? Yeah. Well, yes, over, over by the white wall. You can see where it is, Mr. Fletcher, can you? Yeah. How long would it take you to get there and back, do you think? <sighs> Too long. Do you have staff? He <laughs> <laughs> just bowled yeah. outside the other stump left alone by Hamid. We're going to get fed in a minute. We are. We will we get, are. We will get we fed are. royally. We are. Is that a queue? It is a queue. Yeah. A queue. Very British. In the heat. Queue in for an ice cream, and by yeah. the time you get to the end of the queue, you probably need two <laughs> just to cool yourself down again. Just and halfway through his over bowls to Hamid, who defends it back towards him. Ice cream of choice? Cornet 99 well, or, or really, lollipop well, type I'm not thing, really an ice cream man. Or a chalk yeah. ice. Or. I'd go for a bit of Mr. Whippy stuff. Hmm. I can't remember the last time I had an ice cream. Probably cost 99p at the time. This one's pushed out <laughs> to the offside by Hamid. Fielded by... What's McKinnon doing there? Swapped sides, but it is him. I haven't seen any leg spin from Matty McKinnon yet. Probably won't see any leg spin before lunch because Lewis Rees is only bowled three overs. And this is only Ben Aitchison's first of his current spell. Unless he fancies one more from Rees and then a quick... A quick slow over. Mm. This one's turned into the leg side by Hassi Bermid. They've run the first one quickly. They're going to come back for the second as Lewis Reese trots around to pick the ball up. And rather languidly throws it back in. Harry came. Mm. I'll tell you why he's gone out there to get Lewis Reese's cap because it was the last ball of the over. That's good of him. 102 for one. Yep. Yes, my good lady's bought, bought a box of those. Um, the rhyme with Agnum. Oh, yes. Um, yes. I, don't, I don't think she's noticed how quickly the box is, <laughs> <laughs> the box is emptying. I think, I think I know the ones you mean. <laughs> 102 for one. That's the cost effective way of buying them, though. Get a box full, she'll yeah. in the freezer. Yeah. You don't want to be buying them individually from a, a retailer. Well, although support your local retailer, of course, is mm. something that we fully endorse. But, Absolutely. But yeah, fill your freezer full. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily with that particular product. Where are we, Dave? I can't quite see the time uh, because 12, of your, uh, all, your, all your belongings. 12.50. Next ball is driven up to mid on. I mean, I've got a laptop, I've got a phone, and I've got a watch. What but I do, is, no. do need to, to see the official time because. I'm not content with all of my devices saying 12.50. I need to see the official 12.50 But is it, the, is it the official clock? I've no idea. There's three clocks on the ground. Well, it's the one I've been disappearing. I think it's on telling the, the right hour time. Hour to, uh, I think it's yeah, telling the right yeah. time. Lewis Rees to bowl to Ben Duckett. He's on 28. Two slips. Just drops this down in front of him, Duckett. Say, probably, if it was anybody else, they're just playing for lunch, just going through the motions. Duckett will, I'm sure, be assessing all the scoring opportunities. Complete 360 degree player. They're looking, I'm sure, for areas to put the ball. Reese has bowled well in this spell. One for eight. This is his fourth over. And again, Duckett will just cloth a drive up to mid on, and there's no run. Don't think he's got a wicket this season in the championship, Lewis Reese. No, I'm talking nonsense. He's got eight. <laughs> 31. <laughs> Blimey, I don't remember him getting one. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Mm. Not me, clearly. He comes again. Balls and uh, a 
little bit of width offered here to Duckett, so he's able to get it out into the offside. McKiernan has not yet turned his arm over. Does the fielding, one run. Will he get the obligatory over before lunch? The uh, the spinner's over. It looks like he's warming up, but then again, nobody's really looked like they've been warming up. I think they're probably warming off. Can I just go over recent wounds? I saw he went for 80-odd in that Taunton match, 82, but I, di yeah. I didn't watch it. I mean, it, it, it must have been absolutely brutal for the lad. And this ball just pushed down to third man, and Hamid will get a single, moves on to 55. Yes, it, it, I've, not, I've, I haven't spoken to him about it. Clearly, one of his overs went for six. Um, who, who was doing the, the biffing? Riley Russo. Right. He, Riley Russo hit... 34 runs off one over and uh, the one that he didn't get to the boundary on, on the full was a no ball so he actually All went right. for 36 in the over which is a T20 oh. record his figures were the worst in T20 history yeah, yeah I saw that. it was all, uh, all very unpleasant Reese to bowl to Ben Duckett again he flails it into the offside McKiernan doing the fielding lost his timing a little bit in that over but well bowled Lewis Reese. Four overs, none for 10. Connor's had eight overs in two spells, none for 33. Ben Aitchison, it looks like he's going to continue. Six overs, none for 31. And Irish Dow with the tidiest figures and the wicket. Five overs, one for 17. Scrimshaw, four overs, none for 13. And Reese, four overs, none for 10. And uh, thank you to Derbyshire County Cricket Club for popping all those figures on the board just when I needed them. It's, it's a nice little device you've got there. Mirrors the... Uh because we can't, the, the actual yeah. scoreboard to our right, we can't see from here, so they put us a mm. put us a screen in, which is uh, more than useful. Here's Aitchison, and then three slips in place. Just seen McKinnon warming up, incidentally, as this one is driven down the ground by Hamid for four. Just to the on side of the stumps at the non strikers end. That was a beautiful shot. He did put down his right hand momentarily, did Ben Aitchison, but I think it was past him before mm. he got anywhere near it. It was no more than a foot off the floor the entire time. He likes a drive. Mm, he does. We've moved on to 59 with that boundary off the first ball of the H. Sonoma. His seventh, his second in this spell, and he's in again now. Bowls to Hamid, who defends this back towards the Formby man. I'm sure it's Formby. Certainly in that neck of the woods. Not been there. Is that where the Gormley head figures or yes. whatever they were yeah, were are on the beach? Big, big, tall figures. Yeah. There's also a red squirrel sanctuary there. Oh, it's just some balls, and that one is uh, well, pat and pat together into Why? the leg side. Why? <laughs> well, because red squirrels are an endangered species. Yeah. yeah. Those grey ones. You can you can do what you want with those, but the red <laughs> ones, with the tufty ears, have got to be looked after. They all live at Formby now, do they? Retirement home on some, Formby Sands. Some Formby, there's some mm. up in the northeast somewhere, apparently. So I was told last week. You'd be surprised to know. That one is guided down to third man. Cartwright can't quite get there at third slip. Wayne Madsen is chasing, but the ball's going to win that race. And it does. And it goes to the boundary. And Hamid moves into the 60s. 63 not out. 112 for one. And we're definitely going to see an over of leg spin before lunch, assuming that this over gets finished in time, which I, I assume it yeah. will, uh, because there's only two deliveries left. Matty McKinnon already warming up, and he's going down to third man now to continue his warm-ups. I, I, I mentioned the crowd earlier on, so there's a big knots umbrella just in the grandstand away to our left. Splendid. That one's left alone outside the off stump by Hamid. The grandstand? Well, yeah, that's, no, Is that the name that's of it? known as the grandstand. Yeah, well, well, it used to be the grandstand, didn't mm. it? The old uh, well, it did the, racing, the old race course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My word! You can't call it the grandstand stand because that just—that's too many, <laughs> too many stands. It's <laughs> <laughs> ages as he completes his over. That one takes the edge of Hamid's bat and goes down to third man. It's fielded by McKidda. They go through for a single. Hamid will keep on keep the strike. He moves to sixty-four. Duckett's got twenty-nine. It's one hundred and thirteen. For one, and where is Matty McKinnon? Well, he's moving slowly towards uh, the pitch. Lewis Reese has kept his cap on, and Lewis Deploy is having a long chat with Hilton Cartwright and Wayne Madsen. 
So they're the two yeah, it's gonna have a go. senior men. We're going to see a bit of leg spin. Have we got to wait while somebody gets dressed now? Um, well, the hat's coming yeah. out, and ordinarily it's uh, it's Lear's deploy, but I can't imagine that we'll see him in the Hilton Cartwright. He's going to go under the lid. I don't think he's got any fielding pads on. No. But he'll go in there as well. Now the conversations between Lewis Reese and his Dahl and Lear's deploy, who's, who's mm. taken the advice of everybody to make sure this is the last over before yeah. lunch. Yeah. <laughs> So it will be, what, a 29-over session. That's enough. Yeah. In this heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's enough in this yeah. heat. Yeah, Ooh. now they've cracked on with it. Might get finished by 6.45, you never know. They've had to fetch a few back from... Uh, <laughs> this one has the risk that, isn't it? <laughs> Far-flung parts of the playing area. 21 boundaries. I think Amid has played ever so well. Hasn't he? Um, I'll do... Couple of balls. Yeah, and then yeah, not a problem. Nearly one o'clock. His first bowl since Taunton. Oh dear. The first delivery is tossed up there, and I mean, drives it back on the bounce. And McKeonan starts with a dot ball. Popular man and did very, very well in the T20 blast. It was a real shame that on the big stage he got uh, he got carted everywhere. Slipping a short leg, McKeon and bowls, and again, Amid drives and then uh, sets off for a single. Good work by the skipper, who is left handed, of course, shied at the stumps. But Amid is home, under 65, 1 1 4 for 1. Nottinghamshire with four balls left, and to guide you through to the end of the session. I'll be back after lunch, but here's Dave Fletcher. Thank you, Dave. No brace girdle. Going to let everybody in Nottingham, Nottinghamshire know what's happening. Dust blowing up in the car park away to the left. As McKeon is in again and bowls. That one is whipped into the leg side by the left-handed Ben Duckett for another single. He moves on to 30. Nottinghamshire 215. For one, the only man out this morning, then Ben Slater, caught by Brooke Guest off the bowling of Anna's Dahl for 12. Ben Duckett was dropped on 24. He's now on 30. You don't want to be dropping Ben Duckett. Ben anxious and unable to cling on at first slip of the bowling of Sam Connors. Here's McKeonan. Halfway through his first over. That one is defended immaculately by Hasib Hamid. We've ticked around at 12.59 now. So this probably will be the final couple of, or these will be the final couple of deliveries of the morning session. In comes McKeon again, bowls. That one is driven very pleasantly, but there's no run this time. So the final ball of the morning session. McKeon is in. He bowls to Hasib Hamid, who drives it straight back to him. And McKeon's first over since that game down at Taunton cost him just two runs. And at lunch, not uh, 115 for one. Hasib Hamid has 65. Duckett, Ben Duckett has 30. And all this after Nottinghamshire won the toss this morning and decided about first. Ben Slater, the only man out. He made 12. This partnership currently worth 69 off 89. And we will return on the BBC Sport website and app on the and on the Derbyshire stream in round about 40 minutes time.
Welcome back to the Cora County Ground for the afternoon session of uh, day one of Derbyshire against Nottinghamshire in the County Championship Second Division. Nottinghamshire 115 for one at lunch with Ben Duckett on 30, Hassi Pamid on 65. The partnership 69 from 89 balls, only one man out this morning, Ben Slater for 12. Hassi, uh, no, uh, ben Duckett rather was dropped though when he was on 24. That could prove to be slightly costly. Score was 89 at the stage. Big George is going to bowl the first over after lunch, having bowled just, <laughs> just the four overs this morning. Don't want to over, overwork George Scrimshaw and his magnificent moustache. And straight away, the ball is going to be shown to the umpires. Could they not have done this 10 minutes ago? For goodness sake. I mean, I suppose the umpires have had the ball yeah. in their pocket, haven't they? Yeah. We've got to put, put that rubbish ball in your pocket and see what they do after lunch. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to show it to you and you're going to change it. I think somebody's been sat on it or dropped it. Or it was um, described to me by a Derbyshire player down at, uh, at uh, Hove when they played down there the other week. I said it was tricky once the ball gets old after about 30 overs, isn't it? And the bloke said, the lad said to me, 15 overs, it was like a tangerine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get that ball changed. Yeah. Quite right, too. Don't be playing with the same ball for too long. A couple of things. It's yes. got very warm down this end of the... Doesn't it uh, just the media suite and secondly the wind has really really picked up it's quite strong I've had one or two people mentioning the uh, the noises uh, in our effects microphone where well, we've got remnants of the uh, the scoreboard down in front of us some bits seem to be blowing and flapping on that and there must be some sort of tarpaulin down below us as well yeah there. Yeah. We keep hearing every now and again getting uh, it got really buffeted around. really before one o'clock, didn't yeah. it? And we were both looking down to see what it was. Oh, how, how annoying is this? I shouldn't get, I shouldn't get annoyed by minutiae like this, but this is ridiculous. I wish I won't mind, actually, because at the end of the day or whenever, they're suddenly minus yes. one on the over eight. They'll, yeah. they'll say, well, what about, what about that, umpires? Straight after lunch, we, we wasted five minutes there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The twelfth man, who I assume is Nick Potts, yes, it is, is being instructed by, uh, by get the, off. By the, no, he's been instructed where to put the put the ball. I'll tell you where to put it. See that big skip? <laughs> pop it in there with the rest of them. Dear, oh dear. That sweet blessing, Martin, who'd written a six thousand word thesis on the BBC Sport website about the balls this year. I was trying to explain about shortages and stuff, but I did suggest that if the Premier League balls kept going out of shape by half time in every game, somebody would be sacked. Yeah. At the moment, we have no news of any sackings. <laughs> when we do, you'll be the first to know. So, it's now 1.43. And we're going to start with Scrimshaw bowling to Duckett and Knotts are underway for the afternoon with Duckett helping it down to Sam Connors, who's down below us at long leg on uh, an especially parched bit of the outfield. I suppose in fairness, the ball was given a bit of tap in that morning session yeah. with the number of times it went to the boundary. Uh, some glorious but drives, but they weren't violent drives really, no. were there? There was a couple of violent shots, but no more than that. But you're right, it is a bit of a nonsense that uh, we've just wasted 40 minutes. <laughs> you know, who bowled the last? Matty McKeon bowled the final yeah. over, didn't he, of the morning yeah. session? You know, Just uh, hand it to the umpire and say, do you want to have a look at this before they go off? As uh, Scrimshaw bowls to Hamid, who had a really good morning session. He played as fluently and elegantly as uh, as you're going to get Asib Hamid right at the top of his game. He's clipped this first delivery to mid-wicket and there's no run. 65 from 97 balls this morning. Asib Hamid. 11 boundaries in his 50. Most of them very elegant drives. Scrimshaw from the city end. Bowls to Amid and runs it to backward point and there's no run. We lost one of those parasols on the uh, players' yeah. the members' pavilion. Yeah. That just before lunch it blew off. It seemed to be a right old sandstorm as well in the, mm. uh, in the car park over there behind the pavilion. Tornado potential. <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't <laughs> quote me on that, of course. They've got to 40, apparently, at Heathrow Airport. Oh, the first they? place oh, thank to, goodness uh, for that. To register. But we'd never get there. 40. Scrimshaw. 
bowls and I mean just pushes it up to the skipper at mid off, no run. Elias Deploy captaining in inning in, in Derbyshire for the first time in the first last match. Lost the toss. Flicked it up in the air, Stephen Mullaney called heads. Should have been able to see his shoulders slump from here. Mm. Scrimshaw in to a mead. Knew uh, that was always going to carry way over the top through to Brooke Guess, so left it alone. Probably not as many in the ground as we'd have liked, or the Derbyshire club would have liked. Yeah, I think the fact that people have been told not to go out didn't help. No, no. You can sit on your sofa with the fan on and couple of cold drinks by your side and watch the live stream and listen to those two idiots bumbling along. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Scream short. In to Mead. Gets a good stride forward, pushes it back to the bowler and the first over of the afternoon has been concluded. Just one run from it. Took Ben Duckett to 31. Knots to 116 for one, and George Scrimshaw five overs, no maidens, none for 14. So well, we've had 30 overs now, seven of which have been maidens. That's a balanced dial to bowl from the race course end. Five overs, one for 17 this morning. The only wicket to fall went to Anna's dial. Didn't ask you how. Toby Petman had been viewed in his uh, couple of games for Derbyshire. Bowled really well in both mm. matches, really nicely at Chesterfield in the victory over Middlesex. Uh, the first innings especially up at Chesterfield Street, he bowled, uh, he bowled beautifully. Yeah. I, I always assumed that he couldn't play against Knotts. Mm. Uh, whether or not he'll be back remains to be seen, but uh, Derbyshire got a new road next week. I hope so. I, I, you know, you'd imagine that um, it's a little bit down the peck in order, and obviously it could be called back at a moment's notice. But been to Kent, Kent as well, hasn't he? Yeah. The week be yeah. between or yeah. Lots, between got the lots two of spells. options. Dal bowling to duck it then from no, no, he's not from the race course. And he just ran straight through and gave the ball to Hilton Cartwright to polish a bit mm. more. I didn't mm. actually forget. I'll have a look. Um, Zach Chapel has been allowed to go back to, to Gloucestershire on the loan. I presume he's playing at Cheltenham. Seven wickets at 20. Got Petman in his two spells here. That's not too bad. No. Helped the cause. He's not much of a batsman. Uh, Dahl bowls. That no. one is clipped into the leg side by Ben Duckett. Harry Kame and Sam Connors are chasing. I think it's Sam Connors out there. And uh, no, it's not. It's George Scrimshaw. Would you believe it is raining at Taunton? They're off for rain. I heard that at lunch, yeah. Somerset, Yorkshire. You could make it up. I could do the drop of rain here, but not necessarily during the daytime. I don't think it's going to. No. But, well, I don't know where it's going to come from if it is, because there are no clouds. <laughs> I do well to get any rain at the moment. Very windy, though. Expected this wind. No. Darling again, Duckett just guides this down to third man. That'll be four more. It's Aitchison giving chase, and he's just trying to get there, but the ball's always got enough pace on it to get all the way to the boundary. And uh, disappointingly, from a Derbyshire perspective, six runs off the first two balls of the Dahl over. Mm, that boundary takes Ben Duckett to 800 first class runs this season at. Uh, a whisker under 70, 69.4, in fact, going into this game. Sham Masood was the first, wasn't he, to get to 1,000. Yeah. I'm not sure how many others have, have done it. Duck, it's a little way off, but he's got to 800. Of course, he missed last week's match at Cardiff. He waits now as uh, Dal Bolster, and he almost gets through. I'm not sure how he didn't get through in the end. It sort of hit the inside edge of the bat and onto pad or thigh pad. Bounced into the ground. Fielded by Hilton Cartwright. Yes, the old uh, 
Well, Wi-Fi is not exactly rushing along. I clicked on the Cheltenham scorecard about five minutes ago to, just to make sure Chapel was playing. But um, I'll be there in a minute. Nothing's, be there in a minute nothing's happened. It's just going round and round. Next mm. delivery is uh, guided down a backward point for four runs by Ben Duckett. I just got slightly distracted. There. They're putting cool boxes a cool box out in front of the old scoreboard away to our right with drinks in it to make sure that uh, if players need it. It looks like one of those yeah. ice cream vendors at the theatre. <laughs> Expecting him to charge the players as he wanders round. Remember the backroom staff as Dahl is in again and that one is pushed up to mid on where Leas Deploy does the fielding on this occasion. There's no run. Yeah, Zach Chapel is playing for... Gloucestershire against Hampshire, five overs, none for 20 this morning. Not a huge amount of wickets anywhere apart from it. Um, edge past another, really. No. Well, the Oval. Essex was six down, weren't they, at the Oval? Oh, you're right. I missed that one. Dahl bowls, and that one is uh, well guided into the ground. Mistimed attempt to cut it, fielded by Wayne Madsen. And the over comes to an end. It cost 10. And not to move on to 126 for one. Lewis Rees wants a, a replacement, wants a comfort break or some such. Clearly had enough. Waving for a replacement to come on and off he goes. So uh, two overs since lunch. Lots of just meandered from 115 for one to 126 for one. And uh, the Derbyshire think tank Get together. Who's there? Deploy, wicketkeeper, guest, and all. Is that Wayne Madsen yeah, between them? Yeah. First well, <coughs> floppy sun hat of yeah. the day as well. I'd love to tell you who it was, but I've absolutely yeah. no, no name, idea. No name no, or number. No mm. idea. So who was in the squad? Potts was in the squad. Mr. Yeah, Potts, but he'd have a shirt. He's got 26 on his back. Mm. 126 for one. Partnership worth 80. If I had to guess, I'd say it was Young Wagstaff. Hamid on strike. Next ball is pulled away by Hamid in the air. It's another no ball. We've had a few from that end. And it's going to be pulled up by the subfielder just inside the rope. Puts in a bit of a roll. Ball may have stopped anyway, but they're going to come back for three. So five from that one particular delivery. And it's 131 for one. Hamid with three of them and two for the no ball. It's the holy grail for the score, isn't it? An over where they have, is it one, two, three, four, five, and six uh, in an over? Six oh, well, different that scores. That from happened that many times, not it? Not the many five times. would be tricky. The, the five is tricky, but we've had a five from that ball. Yeah. I think a six would be um, quite extreme. Well, you never know with Duckett. Scrimshaw bowls and lion to lion. Duckett pushes it back to him. Let's keep an eye on the on the clock here. This is the one that I always forget. You start a session and then suddenly it's two o'clock. We both forgot. One one day last week. One thirty one for one. I had a I had a great excuse though. Been on a Zoom call, which was a farewell meeting gathering for uh, Chris Coles, who's now departed. Oh, he's gone. Derby, yeah, on freelance, mm. and uh, it threw me completely. Threw me completely. 31 for one. Scrimshaw bowls to duck it, drives into the offside. There'll only be a single. Couldn't get enough purchase on the ball to uh, force it between the two fielders out there. Cartwright doing the eventual groundwork. 132 for one. Duck it onto 42. Couldn't see the clock with the tears in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Cole to it is. Four and a half years or so, five years. I'd never seen a side from Derbyshire beat a side from Nottinghamshire no, at any sport. No, no. Terrific effort. <laughs> one thirty-two for one. Next delivery is lifted away by Amid, flamboyantly for four. You won't get that word in many uh, descriptions over the years of Asiba Mead's batting, but on his day he can play the odd shot like that, and, and it was it was flamboyant. He, Lifted it very deliberately up and over point. Whether he, he meant to get... Well, I wouldn't have thought he would mean it to get it down to third man as there's a fielder down here. So he lifted it over point with one leg up in the air as well. I'm going to go back on the rot and get that off, Dave. 
One I think it's my ringtone. <laughs> one thirty-six for one. Partnership worth ninety. I mean, on to seventy-two. Not been able to stem the flow of runs since lunch. Derbyshire Scrimshaw. And uh, again, push through the offside. Slight misfield by Harry Kane. And they'll certainly come back for a couple. They do indeed. 138 for one. But, uh, the mead on to 74. Yeah, it has gone on. Partnership 92. All the foundations have been laid for a, a very healthy Nottinghamshire score here. Got more batting bonus points than any of the other 17 counties. 35 going into this game. Racked up 400 on a number of occasions. This one allowed to go through to the keeper. Have your stats ready, Dave? Um, <laughs> 534 against Sussex, 488 against Durham, 415 against Middlesex, 548 against Leicestershire. 551 against Middlesex so they have been um, in many ways correcting what's been their, their downfall over the last two or three years when they were winkling out fairly cheaply in the first innings and were always playing catch up this time they've been able to put big scores on the board in the first innings as you heard there in what six or seven of the games so far Mead again drives positively but straight to deploy no run 138 for one so I'll make that 23 from three overs. Yes, yeah, not how Derbyshire would have wanted to have started. It's the ball. It's the ball, Dave. They've changed the ball, so well, that's what it is. It's yeah, uh, coming no. onto the bat. Uh, Lewis Reese is back. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, well, the, 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 I've just, I've said, they'd send a message, and the, the reply was I said, Is that Wagstaff, Mitch Wagstaff? He said, Not 100% with the hat on, but I think so. Harrison uh, is with the Super Fours, whatever that is. Uh, got 70-odd yeah. today, so not him. I've I, seen Wagstaff. He probably would have played in the Royal London yes, he did. last 50, year. Yes, he did. He is. opened. He's an yeah. opening batsman. Yeah. I'm not sure if he didn't get out early in that one. He certainly got out early in a couple, but a uh, very promising young mm. batsman. He's still uh, yeah. very much in his early teens. I've never seen him somewhere, but uh, yes, it, it was the day of the green sawdust. Indeed, and the mats. And was it Tom Wood got 100? Yeah. Yeah. And it's down around the wicket, is it me? Into the leg side and just shy of the man mm. at uh, mid-wicket, not far away from him. Your coffee cup is masking the... Sorry. Uh, yeah, the the only clock I trust. Yeah. No, 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 no there's, a, there's one on there, look. That's, that's accurate lots, as well. There's that's there's lots, accurate there's there's too. lots of clocks, but... The Derbyshire have made 500 on four occasions this season, which is remarkable for Derbyshire, and also 398 for eight declared. So their batting has been pretty decent. Dahl is in, defended by Ben Duckett, and there's no run. They have bowled teams out twice. They bowled Middlesex out twice. They've also, also for the first time in their history down at Hove, declared each of their innings and still lost, which is a <laughs> terrific effort. Uh, never been done before in WC history. <laughs> Not one that, that's very, that goes very much in the Matty McKeon and uh, records. <laughs> Column Dahl bowls whipped into the leg side by Duckett for just a single as the wind continues to howl around the county yeah. ground. There's a bit of rubbish on the outfield there. No, no sooner had gone past Anish Dahl and it's heading down towards yeah. us. It's moving reasonably quickly, this bit of paper. We'll have updates for uh, Radio Nottingham and Radio Derby fairly shortly. Hasib Hamid is back on strike. One thirty nine for one. Twenty four added. Three and a half overs since lunch. Dahl is in again and bowls to Hamid, who defends this one. Up towards mid on, it's fielded by uh, Matty McKeon, and there's no run. Do 
They still use Mercury? I'm not sure they do. Afternoon to Jack Tyburn, who should be listening there. Producing the afternoon show. If he's turned up for work, of course. It goes dull. Balls to Hamid. It's defended out into the offside. Hilton Cartwright does the fielding after it had been touched by Anuj Dahl on its way towards the big Australian who starts polishing the ball. It's a tricky end of day's play interview today, you fancy. 40.2 Celsius. Dear, oh dear. And goes Dahl again and bowls. This one is guided down to the vacant third man area for four runs. 143 for one. End of the over. Five from it. Well, that young Ed Dawes standing next to me now. Very sensibly with a full bottle of water. Blimey, it's hot. Very hot. It's warmer in here than it is outside, I think, now. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, four overs since lunch. 39 degrees here at the county ground. It's a little bit too warm for cricket, really, and the Nottinghamshire, the Derbyshire bowlers are struggling a little bit. Four overs since lunch, as I say, and they've scored with another boundary there for Ryan Duckett. Uh, 32 runs in that time. George Scrimshaw not getting the breakthrough he would have wanted since lunch. Duckett has 43. Hassi Pamid is on 78. In fact, Duckett's moved on to 47. That's the century partnership between these two and Knots, who won the toss this morning. Decided about first to 147 for one. Absolute nonsense again. Uh, <laughs> under partnership coming from 115 deliveries. I mean, that's just... Madness. Absolute madness. But it's that kind of a day, I'm afraid. Ben Duckett has moved on to 47, dropped on 24. By the man who's just come out into a short mid-wicket, Ben Aitchison. Seven overs for 40, Aitchison. Scrimshaw 6.1 overs, not for 30. And he's in now on balls to Duckett, who just short arm jabs him around the corner down to square leg, where Sam Connors is standing. And they go through four. Another single. Give you some advanced warning that I might be busy between six and whenever we finish. I had a quick word with Colin Gibson at lunch. He's looking for uh, he's looking for some content. And I might be the man to provide it. Depends how desperate he gets. One forty eight for one. He's got all the hallmarks of five hundred. Even at this early stage, as Scrimshaw is in and bowls, that's defended by Hamid, who at 78 from 111 isn't going to chuck it away here. He's too good a batsman to do that. I can tell you, as if we didn't already know, he's a very, very fine cricketer who uh, lost his way a little bit. Graham Rowley says there's a colony of red squirrels on the Isle of Wight. Excellent. So that's formed by the Isle of Wight in the northeast. Although Dave Bracegirdle sounded like he wanted them all exterminated earlier on today. I'm not putting words in his mouth, of course. It's Scrimshaw bowls, and that's turned into the leg side by Hasib Hamid. And Mark Back says, surely the umpire should check the ball at every break. Might not solve the problem, but might mean slightly less time wasted. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more, Mark. Could not agree more. It's been... Uh, the batch of balls we're using this season have been absolutely hopeless. 148 for one Scrimshaw with two deliveries of his uh, seventh over. Still to be bowled. He's in to bowl to Hasi Pamid, who's ooh, beaten by that one. It just took off. What if it just hit that Ed Dawes' dark patch <laughs> on the pitch? Because it hit something known. and flew. And he's got it in him as George Scrimshaw. He's sharp. Very close to the day. Brace girdle ball patch. <laughs> a 
Might be one of those clubs to the Dave Fletcher one. <laughs> Final ball of the scrimshaw over then. Wind howls. Mm. Scrimshaw waddles. And now he's on his way. Might be the phone. He's in and bowls. That one is <laughs> off a thigh pad into the leg side, fielded by Lias Deploy. And it's the end of the over, 148 for one, five off it. Boundary off the first ball, single after that. That's the way to bat. You did mention the super fours, didn't you? Because I've. Uh, yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's a, a, a sort of age group. Uh, oh, I can tell you. Oh, excellent. Come on then. Excellent. <laughs> Liam Patterson White's uh, dad, Dan, says Dave, can you tell the other Dave, the super fours is a competition played between the four regions of England at under 17 level. It used to be played at Loughborough University. It's a follow-on from the more prestigious Bunbury Festival, which has played at under 15 level. Uh, that's played at various places. Oakham, uh, when Liam represented the Midlands. Uh, the other sides are North, Midlands, South East, and London, South West. Right. There we are. Thank you, Dan. No, no, thank you. Yeah, so a lad called Harrison's got some runs anyway. Derbyshire boy. Go and have a drink, Dan. <laughs> is uh, Anoj Dal? Chris Morley just asking if it's the same Anoj Dal. It was on the not staff. It was indeed. Nudge bowls to Ben Duckett. Just helps it down to the leg side. I tweeted a picture earlier of myself and Nudge at the MCG. The only time I've been to the MCG, I went with Anudge back in 2015. He was uh, playing for the Buckley Ridges Club. Not had a, an association with that club in Melbourne for, uh, for many a year. Paul Franks went and played there. A number of winters, Luke Fletcher did, Alex Hales did, Harry Gurney has, Stephen Mullaney has, and Anna Dal did. Here he is, bowling to the right-handed Amid, who pushes it back to Nudge, as they call him. Born in the northeast, but his parents were just visiting. It's uh, it's often misconstrued that it should be Newcastle under Lyme, but it's it's not. It was uh, the one on the Tyne. Can't, can't have been there long because Martin wasn't claiming him well, last no, week. He, ar he arrived a little <laughs> early. Well, he, he didn't claim anything from Newcastle, does he, being a, <laughs> a red and white. As Amid again blocks and pushes it into the offside. And Cartwright again spears it into the gloves of Brooks. That's it. Run around, lads. Keep yourself warm. 149 for one. He's got a ship of 103. Part of the Geordie nation, isn't he, Martin? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he said. What was he doing yesterday? Kayaking or something and saw a jellyfish. I don't know. Next one is uh, just blocked by a meat onto the leg side. Matty McKiernan comes in and fields. He had the, uh, the one over before lunch that's uh, written into the regulations that will be bowled by a spinner. You'd expect to get through a lot of work in the afternoon and evening sessions, wouldn't you, really, as, yeah. a, as a spinner? Yeah, we're going to get uh, 35 overs in this session, so there'll be, uh, there'll be plenty of overs for everybody, I fancy. Before they go off for a slice of Battenberg and a cup of tea. And Mead drags this to Lewis Rees at mid on, no run. Where are we in this over? Have we had a run in this over? Uh, at the very, very beginning. Apparently, I don't remember it. Mm. <laughs> I've got to admit. 149 for one. Now, squad number 65 runs away from us. Bustling medium pacer, bowls and it's hit back to him by Hamid. Tidy stuff from Anuj Dal, the only Derbyshire wicket taker to this point. Eight overs, two maidens, one for 33. Ooh. Duck it 49, Hamid 78, the partnership 103. Tracks are buckling. buckling. Tracks are buckling. Buckling tracks. That's never a good thing, is it? Is that a Derbyshire railroad? Mm. I don't think there's any going down the, the east side um, to the capital today. No. Newark will be left barren. Will be cut off from the, the rest of the country. 
No services on East Midlands Railway between St Pancras and Leicester and between St Pancras and Corby. One train an hour from Sheffield to Nottingham. King's Cross to Newark, that's the important one. I have no news of that. No. No, oh my. Oh no I'm pretty sure I heard on Radio Nottingham that they weren't running at all today, which is a bit excessive, but there you are. If it's dangerous, you can understand why. I've got a bowling change. Sam Connors from the city end into bowl to Ben Duckett, who turns the first delivery into the leg side for a single mm. and gets to his 50. In very understated fashion, Ben Duckett, for some of the shots that he's played. He's hit nine fours in his, uh, in his half century. 58 delivery deliveries. And he's batted beautifully so far. He's added 104 to press with uh, Hasib Hamid, who's on 78. 104 from 127 deliveries. You'll have plenty this season. <laughs> <don't you? laughs> Go on. Well, you, it, there's Duckett's scores this season. I mean, oh you know, I, um, yeah, not, I, I, get, I get a little tired of singing his praises. Well, I'm going to read them out because he's the best number three in the country. So I'm told. <laughs> 31 against uh, Sussex. Uh, 122 and 95. As Connors is into bowl to Hamid. A Ooh. short delivery. Now it's in the air. There's a chance for the fielder out there. Harry Kame can't get there. He's gone for six. No, it hasn't. It's gone for four. Oh. That means that Harry Kane was not in the right place for me. And there are hands on hips, certainly. Because he had to leap for that one. And he, uh, it, it's, bound, it's gone over his head. Come down and bounced inside the rope. And he's only about a yard and a half inside the rope out there. So... A boundary to Hasib Hamid, not fully in control of that one. A 54, 50, 78, 43 and 23, 86, 145, 37 and uh, 50. Yeah, he's not bad, is he? Uh, keeps churning them out. Connors is in full delivery, clipped into the leg side by Hasib Hamid. No run as it goes straight to George Scrimshaw. I thought it was George, and then I thought, well, he's not going to be fielding at mid-wicket, for goodness sake. Have you seen the size of him? <laughs> and he is. He's fielding at mid-wicket. Because Lewis Rees is at mid-on, and Lears deploys at mid-off, the captain's position, clearly, because that's where Billy Godwin always feels. Corner's in again and bowls, and that one is on the leg stump and turned into the leg side by Hamid. He's got run one. He'll have to settle for one as Harry came. Comes in off the boundary to do the feeling and then almost overthrows wicketkeeper Brooke Guest. Only 60 overs to go today. Yeah, so mm. I almost see the finish line in sight. That's 40 from lunch. Uh, mm. 40 added since lunch in 6.4 overs. Yes. And they're not. No, no they're, they're not, not going after no, the bowling. They're, they're not doing not. anything silly. There's no rash shots. They just. Milking it, I think, is the phrase. There are runs everywhere. Connors is in and bowls. That one is defended by Duckett. Connors bends down and picks the ball up himself and then gives it to Hilton Cartwright, who gives it to Lewis Reese. Just, just somebody hold mm. it and give it back to the bowler. Yeah. Come on, boys. How warm under those batting helmets. A lot of faffing on goes out, goes on on the cricket field. <laughs> I'm not just Derbyshire; everybody's at it. They're all at it. Faff, faff, faff. This fly is starting to irritate me as well now. <laughs> Climbing up the window in front of me as Connor's bowls to Duckett, who defends it. Cartwright picks up. It's the end of the over. Six from it, without even doing anything. They picked up six runs from the over. Connor's bowled nine overs for 39 now. Notts have moved on to 155 for one at the end of that one. Hamid has 83 and Duckett has 50. And who are we going to see now? We're going to see oh, he's, uh, Jane was just reading yeah. out the, uh, the Ben Duckett 50. 58 balls, nine fours, just in case you missed it. I don't bother with minutes these days. Do you do minutes no. at all? There's no. no real point, is there? Because no. they're all likely to be longer than they used to be. Number of deliveries is always a good one, I think. We've got we had two men fielding down at uh, a third man for a moment there. I don't think that's entirely what they wanted. So one of the third men has gone across to uh, fine leg. I'm not sure if Scrimshaw's on. No, he's not. It's Anna Dell bowling to Hasib Amid. 
works this on the leg side. Gets a single, moves on to 84. Partnership is 110. So Scrimshaw's gone off, so I can only assume that the uh, the twelfth man is back on, and we've still got no. Unless it's unless that is Potts, that looks more like Potts this time here, way to the right. It certainly looks less like Mitch Wagstaff than it did before. You mentioned minutes. If you want to look something up, um... <laughs> me, <laughs> and I'm not here to uh, well, you to about. delegate, as uh, this is pushed in the offside on this day in 1993. Yeah, go on. Lancashire's Glen Chapel scored a century ah, in yeah. just 23 minutes, uh, not regarded as the quickest no. of all time because it was against joke bowling um, for, um, to set up a declaration. And I know Malcolm, no, not Malcolm, Matthew Maynard um, went for about four overs for 100 or something, so it was against Glamorgan, but that's all I can tell you. This is pushed into the offside McKeon and Fields. This day in 1993, Glen Chapel a century in 23 minutes to set up a declaration. Well, it says here 21 minutes. Well, there you go. 27 well, that's, balls. That's VAT. Yeah. Matthew Maynard and Tony Cotty. And do you have their figures? Uh, no. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Don't, don't They're obviously you, serving up absolute filth. Don't you dare. I'm but I think, you know, I think they do well to get the ball back in time because... You know, sometimes it can take 23 minutes to bowl an over, even when it's been slapped around the, the park. Next delivery is uh, played to backward point by, uh, by Duckett. Um, would you like to know some more things about 19th of July? Love to. Go on. As soon as you've done the work. Yeah. It's the 200th <laughs> day of the year. That's oh, not the most uh, riveting uh, statistic. Uh, I'll give you that. Go on. Um, we know on Saturday it was the, uh, it was the 20th um, blast. This is the 20th season of mm. the, the Blast. The very first final was on this day in 2003 at Trent Bridge, 19th of July, 2003. This one's clipped on the leg side, and has it been scooped up? I don't think it no, has. I don't sure. think Cartwright could have done any more. It was uh, clipped upishly by Duckett to short mid-wicket. Cartwright flung himself forward bravely, and he got there and scooped it up, but the ball had just hit the ground. It's a great attempt. A little careless, I think, from Ben Duckett. There'd have been lots of tutting and bat swishing and shaking of the head had he got out like that. Because he hates it when he gets out cheaply. He hates it when he gets out full stop. Um, so that finals day in 2003 at Trent Bridge. Um, one bonus point for, if you can tell me who won it. As this is played onto the offside, no run. And two uh, bonus points, oh. if you can tell me who the interval entertainment was. End of the over, 156 for one. Leicester should have been the first one, did they? No. No, I don't think they did. <laughs> <laughs> Hampshire. No. All right. Surrey defeated Warwickshire. <laughs> have a go at the other one. The, um, between the, the two semi-finals and the final, they had a pop group playing. It would be something like the Pussycat Dolls or something one of those. Something like the Pussycat Dolls, Eternal but it wasn't. Or... Something like Eternal, yeah, but it wasn't Eternal. No, 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 they all they sound the same to me, those, those girl bands. Uh, as to boy bands, by the way. I'm not being sexist. Atomic Kitten did their Atomic thing. Atomic Kitten. How about that? Good grief. What happened to Atomic Kitten? Connor's in beginning a new album. <laughs> Balls to Hassi for Meat. What happened to uh, Entertainment Before the Final? Wow. Um, they, they spent all the money on the other one. I've not finished. I'm um, sure you haven't. Not a good day this for Derbyshire. Well, <laughs> pick a day. 1996. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lancashire versus Derbyshire. Yeah. Lancashire's Jason Gallion, of course, went on to play for Notts and England. Jason Gallion scored 312 in a day against Derbyshire. Connors in and bowls. That one's turned into the leg side by Hasib Amid. They pick up a single as it's uh, not fielded clearly initially by... Young Nick Potts, who's on his 12th man, for George Scrimshaw, who's still down on one knee at the far end, drinking. <laughs> I don't know how long he's <laughs> going to carry on doing that, but he's been there a while. Lovely fellow, Jason Gallion. I don't know if you ever Yeah, no, never met him. Him. No. Um, 19th of July is the birthday of Brian May of Queen. Yeah, I don't like Queen. Any ideas? How old? Oh, he must be my age. I would have thought. <laughs> he must be old. No, he'd be older than me because he's been even. I would say, I'll get, have a guess in a minute, Connors is in and balls to Duckett, who just jabs this down to a backward point region. They're going to run one. They think about a second, but don't come back, as it's fielded there by 
Matty McKinn and Duckett moves on to 51, 158 for one. I would say that Brian May was 65. Add 10. Is he really 75? He's 75 he really? today, Brian May. Wouldn't have gone Queen. that many. Wouldn't have gone that many. Born on this day in 1947. And last but not least, in fact, top of the pile, on this day in 1941, the first Tom and Jerry cartoon was released. This next delivery from, <laughs> I'm almost speechless. Next <laughs> delivery from Sam Connors is uh, defended by Hassi Bami. Back towards him. I've gotten on this day. England batter smashes 27 ball century in 21 minutes, but that seems to be all it says. That that is Glen Chapel. It is Glen yeah. Chapel. Yeah, I'm trying to yeah. find out what the bowling. Oh dear, uh -huh. sorry. I'm trying to find out what the bowling figures were. I mean, at the moment, I'm. Uh, I seem to think Maynard bowled something like four overs for a hundred or something <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. Almost Matty McKinnon-esque then. <laughs> this next delivery from. Connors is pushed out at backward of square on the offside by Hassi Pami. There's no run. Lewis Reese warming up, or at least stretching, or whatever you do when the weather's this warm. At uh, mid on. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give up. <laughs> it doesn't take long for me to give up, to be fair. No, most, of me. The, most of the time. Me. If I can't find it straight no. away, it's not worth finding, is it? Mitch Wagstaff on the boundary's edge with all sorts of stuff, and although it might be the uh, Notts 12th man as well, as this one is pushed out towards uh, extra cover by Hasib Hamid. It's the end of the corners, over two runs from it, 158 for one Duckett 51, Hamid 85. And after 40 minutes mm. or thereabouts, well, less than 40 minutes, given that they faffed about with the ball for four <laughs> minutes after the lunch break, they're going to... Uh, Have a drink. That's what, exactly what they're going to do. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, Derbyshire beat Lancashire in the game that Gallian got his 300. Did they buy Joe? Well, that's what I'm told. I don't know, but that's what I've just been told. It's still raining, believe it or not, at Taunton, where Yorkshire 99 for two in the morning session, and the rains came in. Um, at Cheltenham, Hampshire 117 for one against Gloucestershire. At Wantage Road, North Ants 91 for four against Lancashire. Essex still six down at the Oval. Um, Surrey going along very nicely, the Division One leaders. Essex 115 for six, and Kent have lost a couple more wickets at Edgbaston. They're 131 for seven against Warwickshire. And the only other Division Two game going on is at Lords, where Sussex are 105 for two. I don't know where uh, where Ed's left his punt. Uh, <laughs> it looks like somebody who's going to be going up and down the cam, doesn't he? Is he? Um, I, Doing another, uh, are you ready for another stint? Do you want to, uh, do you want to break or should I slide? I've got to slide next door in a minute anyway. No, you, Fletch. Do you want to, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, have yeah, to I'm slide fine. next door in a minute anyway. I'm fine. Mm. I'll tell you when I'm not fine, I'll be when I'm slumped over, <laughs> the chair. slumped over the chair at some point in the late evening if we don't, if we don't. Yeah. Cricket isn't in danger of breaking out <laughs> no. anytime soon. No. There's a whole gaggle of Derbyshire fielders around the 12th man and the physios out there as well, making sure everybody's OK. I, I wasn't watching, but I hope the umpires have been taking a drink. I, that, that really is one that gets up my goat when all the players are happily knocking back juice and, uh, and water and they, they seem to forget about the poor old umps. And then they'll be asking them why they've not given an LBW decision in a moment yeah, or two. I think four sets of stumps at the far end of their heads <laughs> spinning. <laughs> <laughs> Much like us. <laughs> Much like us. Uh, people are slowly starting to make their way off. When I say slowly. I mean exceptionally slowly. This is definitely Mitch Wagstaff. Thanks to John because he sent the link to the uh, Lancashire Glamorgan game. But John, unfortunately, the Wi-Fi, or my Wi-Fi, everybody else's is working a million miles an hour. But mine. Um, if I click on it now, I might be able to read it at close of play. But thanks, John. Appreciate the uh, the thought behind it. Can't be the laptop. That looks state of the art. Oh. What's going on here? It's beautiful. That. State of the art. Art, or I just got it off the arc. State of the yeah. art. I'm looking into a new one. I love this. This is my BBC one. I don't touch screen and all sorts. I love that. I'll have to go back to the person who, uh, who it belongs to at some point. <laughs> We've got some left arm threat here. What do you say, threat? Well, he bowled nicely. I thought he did bowl nicely. Trees. Yeah, no, he did bowl nicely, but. There hasn't been much threat from anywhere, really, has there? The uh, the idea that uh, 
George Scrimshaw. And somebody came up before. It wasn't George, actually. It was somebody else. Who was it? Can't remember. <laughs> one of the one of the backroom boys from uh, from Derbyshire said, "Oh, ground staff say it's got a bit of pace and bounce." Has it? One fifty-eight for one. It's Reese bowling to duck it. He'll just push this into the offside, fielded by Hilton Cartwright. So I'll do this one more over, and then I'll uh, metamorphosize into Ed Dawes for the, the next few minutes. A bit like Doctor Who. But the regeneration, mm. or whatever it is that Doctor Who does, I'm not a watcher. You won't be surprised to know. <laughs> We've got Scrimshaw down our end of the ground now at, uh, at mid-off. Maybe called him Gorgeous George. That was somebody different, wasn't mm. it? Next one is uh, cut away onto the offside. Kendo Nagasaki. Do you remember Kendo I do. Nagasaki? Yeah, it was wasn't his um, was sort of mouthpiece the one that came in the in the ring and all that? Wasn't he called Gorgeous George? I think he was. Kendo Nagasaki. Saw him at the Grove Sports Centre in Newark one Saturday evening. Managed to keep his mask on. 158 for one. Next delivery, nice and full, and hit back to him on the bounce by. Ben Duckett. Well, the first gorgeous George that comes up was an American. It's, it's not the same one because this one died in 1963 at the age of 48. He was an American wrestler. Oh. Uh, what's his real name? George Raymond Wagner. Now, Wagner or Wagner? Well, yes, absolutely. Well, he was from Nebraska. Was so he on X Factor? I'm going Wagner. Yeah, Wagner was, yes. Yeah. That's the last time I saw it, I think. Next one is... Uh, Clipped off his pads nicely by Duckett out towards the old pavilion, and they get a single. Is that what you're calling it, the old pavilion? Um, I'd call that the members' pavilion. Okay. Yeah. Members on the top deck all the way up until the little extra bit, and the little extra bit belongs to the chairman. Right, I'm going to find some killer stats to tell you tomorrow about the 20th of July, and I'll, 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 leave, you, I'll excellent. leave you with Dave God, and Ed. God. Just leave us wanting more. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. I don't mind that. It's, it gives us something to talk about while the runs are piling up, doesn't it? Gives us something to talk about. I'm still struggling with gorgeous George. Kendo Nagasaki, I remember. Mick McManus and all the boys on a Saturday night on World of Sport with Dickie Davis. And goes uh, Reese and that's turned into the leg side by... Uh, Hasi Pamid, sorry, I got slightly distracted because I suddenly realised that I really ought to be listening to Q in case uh, in case Sally comes to us, at which point you might not want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> she is from Manuel. <laughs> We've got nothing to say, save it for later. Mm. This is Reese again. Left arm over the wicket, balls to the right-handed Hamid, who drives into the ground and out into the offside, fielded by Harry Kame. And we're getting almost overthrows. Uh, Brooke Guest. Still haven't heard from Jack Timon, who I think has dropped off at the behind the glass, uh, back at base, remarkably. <laughs> if he's forgotten the cricket, he's never going to hear the end of it, by the way. That would be uh, that would be very very disappointing. One fifty nine for one. Duckett has fifty two. Hamid has eighty five. Partnership one hundred and thirteen. No hint, no hint of a wicket this afternoon. And goodness knows what I'm going to tell everybody at half past two. Because absolutely nothing apart from run scoring has happened since lunch. It certainly looks like a very very good toss to win. Forty four added since lunch. Young Ed. Who's this? Sam Connors, off you go. Connors on his way, bowling down the leg side and a wild swing by Duckett. That might be the place to bowl it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've got two, or if not three, catches down the leg side at Durham. In last week's match. Hmm. Bonus. Very much a bonus. Much yeah, a Durham, bonus. Durham batted quite poorly. Mm. And Darbyshire just stuck to their task. I can't underestimate how difficult it is to play cricket in that heat out there. I've done a circuit of the ground. Mm. It's just so oppressive. Here he comes, second ball of the over, and it's turned around the corner. He might split the fielders here for four and has. It's a great shot off his legs from Duckett, and he moves to 56. Knots 
to 163 for one. It turns out that Jack Tymon has come into work today and he hasn't fallen asleep behind the glass because he's just given me a 50-second warning. Thinks he can... <laughs> 25 second warning he's given me. He thinks he can boss me around because he's in charge this afternoon, but of course we all know that that is not the case. <laughs> Pretender. One of my favourite broadcasters, Jack Timon. <laughs> he is. No, I love him. It's like listening to a carry on film on the radio. <laughs> Sometimes he's not that serious. Connor's in and bowls. That one's turned into the leg side by Ben Duckett. 164 for one. So we've had 10 and a half overs since lunch and they've scored 49 runs. This is not, well, it's difficult. It's get, di you'll like this. Get ready for this update. Here we go. Okay. You'll enjoy this, Ed. I think. Oh, my word. Good afternoon, Sally. It is so hot. It, it's, it's ridiculous. We've got the air con on, but you can't feel it. We've got a window open, but that makes no difference because the, the air outside is probably warmer than it is inside. I've just spoken to somebody who's done a lap or two of the ground. How they playing cricket in this, he has no idea. It, it, it's oppressively hot, and it's definitely a day for batting, which is why it was very disappointing when Lear's deploy, captain of the Red Bull side for the first time, lost the toss this morning, and Knotts decided they'd have a bat first. Took an hour to get the first wicket. Ben Slater out for 12, caught by Brooke Guest off the bowling of Anish Dahl. But nothing since has not have moved on to 164 for one. They've scored 49 runs in the uh, 10 overs and five balls we've had since the lunch interval. Ben Duckett has moved on to a half century. He's on 57 odd out. Hasi Pamid, who's the former England and who knows, potentially future England opening batsman, is on 85. The partnership's worth 118. Uh, and, and it's just unpleasant. The, the crowd is small, as you would expect, because people have been told to stay at home if they possibly can. I'm sure there's lots of them listening. I hope there's lots of them listening at home. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not a day to be playing or watching cricket as Hamid just strokes the ball up to long off for another boundary to move on to 89. Nottinghamshire, 168 for one. When I speak to you this time tomorrow, they'll have over 500. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. That might even have been me belly, belly flopping into the pool in the, the new swimming pool. Yes, it doesn't make me feel any cooler, but yeah, it's just maybe insanely jealous of anybody who might be uh, near some water. That even just a bucket of water I could put my feet in would be nice. Oh, <laughs> You know me too well. I'm, I'm not a huge fan. I'm not a huge fan of tinned beer, I have to say. But at the moment, I'd probably take it. I'd probably take it. Yeah, yeah, I'd take it. I'd take it. Send them over. <laughs> Long conversation with Sally. She was playing me sound effects of people jumping into a swimming pool and opening tins of beer. Really? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's all content. Um, <laughs> There's a false shot there from Ben Duggan. It was. He, he's tried to play the ball out into the offside. He got a thick inside edge and it bounced in between himself and the stump. So a uh, little bit of hope for Lewis Reese. It's just concentration on a day like this, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Reese on his way from the race course end again and it's played into the offside by uh, Duckett. No run. We have a wasp. I haven't seen many wasps this year, have you? This is where they start. Is it? This is where they start, yeah. What, in this box? In this box. <laughs> <laughs> middle, middle to late July, and then that's it. They'll be all over you. Well, not literally all over you. But... Oh, brilliant. That one won't be. Yeah. Use of the yellow marker pen to crush it against the window. Drops to the right-hand side. Dave shuffles it away. Anyway, back to the cricket. Here is Reese, Left arm over the wicket. Bowling. Driven back up the pitch by Duckett. 57 he has. I'm sure I ask this question almost on a, an annual basis, but what are wasps for? If anybody can tell me out there what wasps are for. We know about bees and all, the whole ecosystem, but I can't, unless they're specifically to feed something else, I just don't understand what wasps are for. We know about bees and the whole ecosystem. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, don't we? We know all about that. Mm. <laughs> Reese on his way again, bowling, and then driven back up the pitch on the back foot. 
why Duckett got right in behind that one. Dot ball. What I say about the I've walked around the pitch, and, and it's the wind. Honestly, the wind is blowing so strongly, and it's pushing this warm air just into the face and drying your eyeballs out and everything. It's horrible. You've used the Raspberry Pi before. Have you ever had that sign? It's overheating. Well, that's not good, is it? I was in the middle of a, a, a chat, a video chat in the car a minute ago, and my, my phone overheated as well. well. That could be bad. It's Reese again bowling, and it's just dabbed into the offside to the fielder. At uh, point, no run there. Um, yeah, it's overheating. How, how warm is it? Warmish. Yeah. It'll just be the temperature of the air. Should I blow on it? What should I do? Well, I've got the air con going in the car, but obviously we can't do that. Well, take it to the car. Yeah. <laughs> is it, are you broadcasting on it now? Yeah. That's what we're doing. We're broadcasting to the stream on the on the QB. Oh, I've got you. And that goes back to I have Derby. no idea how to... I don't know what I'm doing. Here is Reese again, and he drives out into mid-wicket region. There's a dive from the fielder. Can't get much on it. I think he got some fingertips, but they scuttle through for a very quick single. It'll come back to you one day. Yeah. Duckett moves to 58. Lots. Lots, see? Knots lead by 169 runs. You said about scoring 500. This has... I mean, this has all the hallmarks of of one of those games that we used to see at the end of September. Do you remember? When the county championship was proper yeah. and it was one long division and all this yeah. white ball stuff was just a, a September final. Um, and you used to get scores of like seven or 800. And, you know, we had one at Leicester. Was it at Leicester? Leicester should did one the other day, didn't they? It's good 750. But um, the pitch is just baking by the minute. Yeah. Oh, um, no, it's, it's, it's only going to get flatter, isn't it? That's, mm. that's the problem. But knowing Derbyshire's luck, there'll be a heavy rainstorm and there'll be moisture. <laughs> the ball <laughs> will nip around when they have to bat. Connors bowls, and it's a wild swing on the outside the off stump from Duckett there. He's got that in him. We've seen, I've seen that three times since uh, coming back up to the box. He's got that shot. He was dropped close in, or it just didn't carry, but he offered a chance. And there's a wild swing there, and there was the one where he nearly chopped onto his leg stump. So it's all about the, uh, the concentration when you are melting inside your whites. <laughs> Which is an unpleasant thought. Colin Gibson just asked me a question. I'm not entirely sure I can answer it. Is tonight's friendly for Burton at Brackley for the first team or the kids? I think it's first team. But I wouldn't swear to it, so... Uh I'll answer him, saying I have no idea. Connor's on his way again, bowling. Turned into the onside. Quickly fielded there by the man who's at a kind of... He's at square leg, but he's quite close in to prevent the single. There's no run. You were talking about the people in the ground. There was quite a, a number of people outside the... In the um, over on the far side, mm. where the dressing rooms are. That stand there, which has gone out of my brain. Um, but they've all moved now, because it's... in. It's in the sun, sun though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. The demolition stand, there's a lot of people in there. It's full. And then, <laughs> and then there's <laughs> a lot of people in the shade at the back of the permanent temporary stand as Connor comes into bowl again, goes for a bouncer. No ball. Nearly, yeah, nearly hit himself in the foot with that. It was so short. I'm not sure what he was trying to achieve always there. Always going to be a no ball. Yeah. I can find no proof of anything, really. <laughs> From uh, well, disappointed that Ryan Leake... Left. I am disappointed with that. We're only a week and a half away from the new season, so you would think that it would be... Well, kind of shocked to see John Brayford, Michael Mansion didn't play at the weekend, mm. so you'd think they might uh, might want to play. Here comes Connors again from the far end, and it's dabbed into the offside. Straight to the fielder once more. He's holding his head there, as though it was a close thing. Do you think we'll see Wayne Madsen at some point? Or and Liam's deploy. Yeah, yeah, I don't see why not. Mix it up a little bit, try and buy a wicket. Yeah, I mean, do this is a huge partnership now that needs breaking. Here comes Connors again. A little skip as he's halfway through his run up to the wickety bowls, and that wobbles in the air, and it's driven. And it's driven through mid wicket, and he'll probably get four for it as well. They come back for a two. It's just slowing up, but it's going to beat the fielder who manages to get this deploy. Manages to get there just as it passes over the rope. Four more to the total. And that is 175 for one. Duckett 62, Hamid 89. Partnership to 129.
It's almost relentless, isn't it? And his doll has just gone and patted Sam Connors on the back as if to say, well, there's not much we can do about this. We've just got to crack on. But Just got to make sure you bat like they do. So the conditions aren't going to change. Connors bowls again. Rolls his fingers over that. Gets it down to the third man area where it is occupied. <laughs> yes. And fielded. And they go through for a single. Steve Doggett has got back to me. Uh, wasps, they eat pests and pollinate. I need a bit more than that, but uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm not, I'm not decrying your information, Steve. I'm just suggesting that we could have had more. Uh, although you might, you might not know more. Who knows? I certainly don't. No reason why anybody should, unless you're a wasp expert. Well, that one's not pollinating anything anytime soon, anyway. Here he comes again, Connors, and a... Beats him outside the off stump there, and Hamid looks behind and looks at the where the ball goes and looks to the skies. Full shot. Mm. Full shot. I haven't seen many of those today. End of the over, 176 for one. 63 to duck it, 89 for Hamid, partnership of 130. Something has to give here for Derbyshire. They need a wicket. Desperately. Desperately need a wicket. See England are playing South Africa at Durham. They are. It's Ben Stokes' last ODI, isn't it? Before he retires from ODI, yeah, cricket, that, well, is, that makes that. sense. He can't do everything. I mean, he could do everything. It looks like he could do everything to me. It's Lewis Rees bowling from the race course end in, and that one is tucked into the leg side by Duckett straight to Harry Kane, and there's no run. Yeah, South Africa 130 for one. It's still. Not dried up completely at Taunton. It seems remarkable that somewhere in this country it's raining. It's so coming in. That's in the first division, so nobody nobody's listening to this will care too much. Uh, well, Notts fans might care a bit, but for no apparent reason. Uh, Sussex, 121 for two against Middlesex at Lords. Next delivery from Reese is slapped away for four by Ben Duckett out to the cover boundary. Nice shot. Bounces and goes through the uh, the covers that are residing just beyond the boundary's edge. And they new. They look it. They look new. I don't know. Yeah. Perhaps they've been cleaned. They I look. Don't know, but they look they new, look don't they? Mm. Yeah. Might just be a new cover. What do you think? think? The metalwork's quite shiny. I was walking past it. Yeah. Shades of the old commentary box up there. Oh. Well, that would have been very unpleasant. Though. Although you could have the full window open. Yeah. We're right above the gents' toilets, which <laughs> in this kind of weather is not ideal. As Reese goes in again, and that one's turned into the leg side by Duckett. He's on 67 after that boundary, 180 for one. I remember one of my early memories of commentating here was an age ago, 10 years ago plus. It was down in that corner, and it was in front of the old score box mm -hmm. in a tarpaulin sort of... Oh, nice. Thingy, gazebo, yeah. at ground level, which is dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> well, people, people who were here before that tell me the, the, the commentary box was on top of the uh, the bar in the far corner at one point. <laughs> this next one is uh, driven by Ducky, but fielded by Nick Potts. I think Steve Stubbins got a hundred, and there was a Welsh guy bowling from this end. It's a long time ago. He was bowling for Derbyshire. Stefan Jones? That could be it. A well set lad. Oh, well, I don't know him, I'm just going yeah. by the name, but I'll get I'll get corrected by somebody with yeah, better knowledge than me. Somebody will point out my the error of my ways. This next <laughs> one's driven and this time it's got past Potts and Potts is chasing it towards the boundary, but he might as well stop now. Because that ball's gonna go all the way to the rope, which it does. And it's four more to duck it, it moves to seventy one, one hundred and eighty four for one. Spot the Kino, 12th man. Yes. First well, of pace. I'm going to follow this all the way to the boundary. Yeah. Show Monkeen. He's played a few times this season. I know. Uh, as young, he was carrying the drinks early, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's a good lad. I'm glad they've put him out now because <laughs> the moment it goes past the fielder, he's never going to stop it because it's so fast. Steve Dogg has been back with more Wasps facts. <laughs> it's a belter. In goes Reese and Bowles. That's edge to oh. slip and he's been dropped again. Duckett has been dropped for a second time, this time on 71. And again, it's Ben Aitchison, I think. Is it Wayne Madsen? It's Madsen this time. Apologies to uh, Ben Aitchison. So Madsen drops him now. What was he on? 71. 
two-handed to his right. Yeah, with the score on 184 for one. How many chances are they going to give to Ben Duckett? These are the moments, though, Dave, aren't they? In, in you know, on flat pitches, hot days, you've got to take those chances. And the over comes to an end. Absolutely, 185 for one at the end of the over. Lewis Rees, the man who uh, suffers on this occasion. You can't keep dropping Ben Duckett, for goodness sake. Uh, Steve Doggett, I uh, asked him for more, and he said uh, they also have a rugby team named after them. Keep up the good work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Excellent, excellent stuff. New bowler, is it? Somebody's uh, just said something. Uh, it's Ben Aitchison. Ben Aitchison. The man who didn't drop uh, mm. that last slip catch. I should have known there was a solitary slip. It's usually Wayne Madsen. Seven overs for 41 maidens so far from Aitchison. Bowling from the city end, if that's what we call it, still. Yeah, yeah. Driven into the offside. Yeah, I do. No run. Might not be. Oh. <laughs> I thought the city was over there. Well, it is, isn't it? But we call this the race course centre. There hasn't been a race course here since 1939. Well, but there was one. Yeah, well, there is, a, there is a city. Is it the IMO car wash end? That's gone now as well. <laughs> <laughs> Health club end? No, that doesn't sound right, does it? Here he comes, Aitchison again, and bowls, and... Right in behind that one is Duckett, defending it back up the pitch. No run. You can hear a helicopter. Excitement levels have just risen. Yeah, I can hear somebody. Sure, it's a helicopter. It not another generator. Another lawnmower. Get the helicopter to just hover over the ground and be all cool. Aitchison <laughs> again. Up to the wicket now, bowling. And it's chopped into the offside and defended. Defended? <laughs> Wrong sport. Stopped by the man at extra yeah, cover. We know what you mean. Yeah. Don't worry about that. It's a good day to bat. And to lose weight. 72 to duck it. Doesn't work for me, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have, you've got to be batting for oh, 134 oh, okay. balls. Oh, okay. And he comes again. And that's a nice shot. Finds the man at point, though. No run. They don't need to lose weight. I mean, there's nothing on Hasib Hamid. He's, well, yeah. he's stick thin. Mm. Always has been. You can hear the wind and the effects, Mike. It is just circling. It's a very strange sort of day, isn't it, really? I mean, it's blistering. Mm. I don't know if we mentioned, but it's blisteringly hot. <laughs> and uh, blowing a gale. It is blowing a gale. It's mm. odd. Weird. Here's Aitchison again, bowling from the City Andy balls this time, and Hamid again. Duckett, sorry, again in behind it, defending, and then he looks at his bat. I wonder if he got it off the outer part of his bat there and it just made a funny sound. Bat's done him well so far. 72 off 96 balls came in. Put his foot down from the off after yeah. Brooke Guest took the catch. Ben Slater out for 12 off the bowling of Dahl. Here he comes again, Aitchison down the leg side, turned away around the corner. Backward square comes three quarters off the rope. Defends. I've done it again. Picks up the ball and throws it back. They go through for a single. And that is the end of the over. 186 for one. Partnership 140. 41 runs conceded off eight overs by Aitchison. Just the one maiden in that. I think Wayne Madsen just thinks he's made up for that drop by collecting Lewis Reese's cap and giving it to the umpire. <laughs> he may have said something there. I mean, obviously, Wayne is a very, very fine... Uh, Human. Yeah, an, an exceptional slip field, but he has put a few down this season. I remember you mentioning it last week. He, mm. he, he dropped one or two at Durham, but then took a few, He's didn't he? He's taken some blinders, mm. absolute blinders. He's in a slip now for Lewis Rees in the beginning of a new over. That strikes the pad, there's half an appeal. Going down leg side. We can see too many of the stumps there for my liking. Yeah, yeah. They're having drinks at Chesterler Street. Gin? Well, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? They're having drinks at 23.3 overs. Um, South Africa 132 for one, having won the toss and decided about first. Pakistan should win that game in Sri Lanka. The uh, first of two tests. They need 120 tomorrow morning when they come back. Reese is in again, and that one is clipped nicely for four runs out towards the... Uh, Long on boundary. <laughs> I was watching Lea's deploy, who set off at 100 miles an hour and in a split second slowed and stopped and waited for somebody to throw the ball back to him because that was always going to... 
anything that gets clipped towards the boundary is going to go to the boundary once it gets past the filler. And all as I would say is as long as the conditions don't change, and that's mm. not guaranteed, Derbyshire will get the opportunity to bat on this pitch. And it's, there are no demons in it at all. Would have been nice to have won the toss. They didn't. And that's why Reese is bowling to uh, Ben Duckett, who picks up uh, potentially another boundary. Now, around the boundary comes Sam Connors. They're going to get two more. Duckett moves on to 79, 1, 9, Oof. 2 for one. That throw has overshot the wicketkeeper. It's a good fielder, is Sam Connors. It's a good arm. Yeah, very good arm. Who was I talking to? Jono in the office the other day. Ah, uh, Jono. You've been to, to Mahe, Mahe? Mahe, yeah, yeah. For the uh, Derbyshire County uh, Premier League, County League, mm. uh, T20 finals day. Oh, right, yeah. And uh, in goes Reese again and bowls. That one is uh, clipped away down uh, towards backward square leg and Connors is initially chasing that. it, but now races to the boundary. And Duckett moves into the 80s. He's on to 83 from 101 deliveries. It's 196 for one, and uh, Dave Bracegirdle might have to come back at some point because these two batsmen are racing towards centuries here. And he was saying the one thing is noticeable when you see the professionals throwing the ball in from the boundary, that's one really noticeable difference. They can absolutely wang it in from miles out. Wang it, I love that. Whereas the, the, the amateur, as I used to be, not that I'm professional now, as Reese Bowles, that one is up in the air. Where's he gone? Oh, it's gone out towards the mid-wicket bound. It went up in the air and it's gone for four more and Duckett moves to 87. Oh, the 200 is up for uh, not The 200 up in uh, the 45th over. 44 overs and five balls. That's too quick. Duckett's very strong on his leg side, but he's also got the ability to just manoeuvre the ball into the gaps with looks like consummate ease this afternoon. That was Duckett's 16th boundary. Hamid has 17 boundaries. Duckett 87, Hamid 89. Ben Duckett on strike. And in comes Lewis Reese once again, bowling from the race course. Set balls to Duckett, who carves this away down the third man. There is a third man, though. I hadn't noticed him down there in the far distance. It's Ben H. No, well, it could be anybody down there. Was it Ben Aitchison? Yep, I think yeah. so. He's taking his hat off. Ben Aitchison does the fielding. It's the end of the over. And Nottingham Shore, 200 for one. Conference going on in the middle of the wicket. Batsman and fielders. Wayne Madsen and Lewis Deploy having a chat. Yeah, he's got a lot of things to do with Lewis Deploy. Lewis Deploy was... <laughs> <laughs> You've got to feel sorry for him. Yeah. He's only other time captain in Derby of the season was at Taunton. Here's your big moment. Here's, here's a road, and it's a double-sided coin, and go for it. That didn't go well, did it? Aitchison starts a new over from the city end, and he bowls, and behind it is Duckett, pushing it back up the track. No run. Wayne Madsen, the hat blows off, and that's a an indication of, of what it is like. The, the wind is buffering his shirt down there, buffeting even, not buffering. That's what you get with the internet, isn't it? It is, yeah. You can hear it. Good news is that little warning sign's gone off my uh, Raspberry Pi. That is good news. Here comes Aitchison again, this time slashed through the gap at cover. Cuts brilliantly. It's four runs all the way. And uh, Duckett moves to 92. <laughs> Dave, Dave has to get his, his, his voice on this century. And... Uh, it's all going to collide, isn't it? Aitchison <laughs> on his way, or will be in a moment. Let's get the ball back. 92 to Duckett, 89 to Hamid. 205 for one. Here comes Aitchison again. He bowls down the leg side, clipped away around the corner, might get through the gap again. No good fielding by Potts, the substitute, and they go through for a single. Duckett moves to 93. Three balls of the over. And so Hamid takes his guard once more. Yeah, Matty McKinnon warming up at mid-wicket. Matty, we're in a spot of bother here. Um, <laughs> you couldn't just bowl us a few overs, could you? <laughs> yeah. 
Um, all right. Here's Aitchison again bowling, and it's turned through mid-wicket, and it's going to be a long chase. They come back for two. The man out there does get to the ball. They do come back for two, which takes Hamid on to 91. Even the running between the wickets is fairly pedestrian, isn't it? Because they've been hitting so many boundaries, they don't really need to take any singles as such. It's and the clever way of doing it yeah, on a day like this, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. Conserve as much energy, energy as you can. Two batsmen in the 90s. Derbyshire had centuries off successive deliveries at Durham. That was very exciting. I missed the second one. Here's Aitchison bowling, and that, is that a no ball again? No, it's a bouncer. He's uh, signalled one for the over. Was probably about as high as the other one, wasn't it? Yeah, I think, I think the one from uh, I think the one from Connors was a little higher, yeah. a little higher. Not as much in it, but just leave it. This is all going to turn to uh, turn to what's it though, isn't it? Because they'll get there just as Dave has to do, do his, his update. report. Yeah. Here comes Aitchison again, bowling to Hamid. Another one down. Uh, turned through mid-wicket. There's a man out there who does the fielding. It's another short ball, and they come back for two. He's obviously gone for the short ball directive. And Hamid moves to 93. Duckett on 93. Partnership of 164. 210 for one in the 46th over. You've got to have more pace. With the greatest of respect to Ben Aitchison, who's a very fine seam bowler, you've got to have more pace to bowl short to two batsmen who are in the 90s when the opposition's on 210 for one. Now, Scrimshaw has got the pace to do it for me, but he's only bowled nine overs all day, or seven overs, I beg your pardon, all day for 31. And now, with both batsmen in the 90s, in fact, both on 93, Matty McKinnon's coming up. Uh, he bowled all right before lunch, but that was his first over since going for 82 in four overs in the T20, apart from a game in the seconds. It doesn't really count. Well, well, it doesn't, does it? It doesn't. <laughs> We're safe at the moment because both batsmen are seven away from uh, centuries. As soon as they get... But only two and a half minutes to go until the updates, which is slightly disappointing for everybody. This is the kind of conundrum. Forget the field placing. Yeah. Who are you going to bowl? This is, this is where it happens. McKinnon then bowling to Ben Duckett. He's in and Duckett just turns it into the leg side. No run. Lewis deployed, does the fielding. McKinnon didn't really deserve what he got down at Taunton. He was just, I mean, Riley Russo was just, well, he was extraordinary. Extraordinary display of hitting on a relatively small ground. McKinnon in again, and this one is turned into the leg side. Placed nicely by Duckett. It takes a single to move to 94, 211 for one. Changes round for the right-handed Hasib Hamid, who of course has to take a fresh guard because it's a different bowler. Scratches once, I come back, scratch again, I keep scratching for a while. But he stopped. Do you remember that fad of getting the bail off and hitting it down with the handle of your bat, Brian Lyra? It was very West Indian, wasn't yeah. it? Chanderpaul, Shiv Chanderpaul used it, to yeah. do it. Everyone did it for a while yeah. and then realised that it weren't as good as them. <laughs> comes McKinnon and bowls. This one is just eased into the offside by Hasib Hamid. Filled it by Lear's deploy, no run. One thing we play in our back garden is one hand, one bounce. So it should oh, get yeah. to a point in county cricket where you have a one hand, one bounce, five over spell. If anybody just to jazz the, it up. Anybody from ECB is listening, please ignore everything that Kent <laughs> Edgar says. As his next delivery is played off the back foot out into the offside by Hamid. It'd break partnerships like this though, wouldn't it? You miss me, haven't you? Could wear crisp manufacturers on the shirts as well, couldn't they? Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Reduce the length of a game. Make yeah. it easier for women and children to understand. In goes McKinnon and Bowles. This one is hammered into the offside. It's misfielded by Lear's deploy. Got down to it and parried it, but couldn't take it in. That was a quote, wasn't it? Remember? Oh, yes. No, they're not. That, that's not my view, clearly. <laughs> not clearly. my view, Lynn. No, no. 212 for one. <laughs> No, it was Andrew Strauss. I remember sitting here on the Sunday morning and he appeared on uh, the BBC Sports Programme. Was it Sports Week? Mm. On Sunday morning on Radio 4? 212 for one. McKinnon is in and that one is pushed into the leg side by Ben Duckett. Yep, sorry, uh, sorry, Dave. We, might quite, we called him in for the centuries and they haven't happened. He'll be back in time, hopefully, for the centuries. I've taken the only wicket today, though. 
I turn know. up out of the blue, just I take know. the only wicket and that's disappear. Not, that's not going on the highlights reel, is it? <laughs> 12 1. I've, I've got uh, Ryan Dilks in my ears. Oh. He was news reading yesterday, I think, for the first time. I heard him at 11, very good. Did all right, he did all right. And then I said to him after Wesley had left, I said, uh, Has he told you about the, uh, the six o'clock and the half past? He said, No. I said, I didn't think he would have done. You have to do the travel at six. All right, where do I get that? So we had to faff around with that. <laughs> he couldn't do it because he hasn't got a BBC email. Oh dear. And then at half past, he gave me so many headlines that I almost, uh, almost expired before I got <laughs> to the end of them. But fair play to him. Mm. What's happening here? Aitchison in and bowls. Sorry, Ed, I know it's your over, but I've got the news in my ears. That's what I thought. Yeah, Aitchison bowls, and it's pushed out into the offside by Hamidi, who moves on to 95, 213. I think the last game we commentated together was actually that game against Notts, wasn't yes. it? Yes, yeah. The tie. That shouldn't have been. Sol Buddinger. Yeah. That's right, Sol. Dropped a catch, yeah. did he? Uh, right down below us. That's he, it. he went for the catch and didn't get there. <laughs> and uh, allowed Derbyshire to tie a game. They should have won, but almost certainly <laughs> should have lost as well. Aitchison and bowls. Duckett clips the ball into the leg side. It's fielded by Hilton Cartwright. Zeeper Mead at the non-strikers and leaning on his bat. All is well with the world as far as uh, the Lancastrian is concerned. Ben Duckett waits as in comes Aitchison and Bowles to him and that's defended up to mid-off. Again, there's no run. Oh, here we go. Yes, Ryan, it couldn't be going much worse for Derbyshire, really. Having lost the toss this morning, uh, they were asked to bowl first, and Nottingham should have taken full advantage. 213 for one. The only man out, Ben Slater, for 12 in the morning session. And since then, Ben Duckett and Hasib Hamid have dominated. They've put on 167 so far for the second wicket. Duckett's on 94. Hamid is on 95. The only man to take a wicket, Anoj Dahl, uh, has uh, bowled nicely, but unfortunately nobody else has been able to chip in. And at the moment, Nottinghamshire well in control of this one. They picked up the first batting bonus point. They're 213 for one. As Aitchison is in and bowls to... Bowls to um, uh, Ben Duckett. Sorry, Kemi Badenoch has been eliminated. Just a bit of late news there at three o'clock. Then there were three. Could ruin my big chance tomorrow, of course. What, becoming Prime Minister? Well, no, I'm speaking to Tony Livesey between five and six. There's the plan. But if anything big happens, i.e. Yeah. Yeah. Next delivery is uh, turned into the leg side by Ben Duckett for one. They're going to come back for a second as well as Potts throws it to the non-strikers. And decent throw, but Hamid was back in plenty of time. Duckett moves to 96 now. I mean, it has 95. The partnership's 169, and Nottinghamshire are 215 for one. Halfway through the day, 48 overs gone, 48 overs to go. Dorothy's texted. Oh, lovely. She says, please tell Dave Fletcher that aircon doesn't work with windows open. I know. The problem being that I have to stick the microphone out of the window, so I can't... No, you're absolutely right, Dorothy. I, I understand, sort of understand the principle. It doesn't work in cars, certainly. Let's, let's not tell her the door's open as well. And the door's open as well, so uh, we're basically flying in the face of everything. Random female. Uh, sorry, yes, I am talking far too much about the unnecessary mums and children's format. Uh, that's this why is I, random that's, female. That's why I said yeah. that's a quote. Yeah. No, no, she's happy with oh, that. Right. I oh, and, uh, yes, I um, and, and other women and lots of kids can count to six. I understand that entirely. Um, <laughs> Dave's back. I'm going to leave you. Steve Crawley says that wasps predate flies. I don't know how he knows that, but that's very impressive. Uh, ben Duckett, uh, Richard Dawson, Ben Duckett must currently be one of the best number threes in, the, in county cricket, but England continue to ignore him. I prefer someone who doesn't only bat at three. Sound logic or just daft? Well, I think we know um, Mr. Bracegirdle's view on that, uh, and I would tend to agree with him. But then again, if you're trying to uh, ask the ECB to apply logic to anything, then uh, you're, you're asking for trouble in my book. So uh, I'd say flies. What predate wasps? Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Sure. I don't know where he's got that information from, but it's very impressive. It's true. No, we're just talking about Ben Duckett being the best <laughs> number three in the country, and I know your view on it, uh, and it's uh, it's absolutely right. I think uh, George Grimshaw is currently 
spilling water all over his head. Can't find his mouth. I think, that's, I think it's deliberate. I think it's deliberate. Did he find Nagasaki's mate? Uh, no, I didn't. But I, no, <laughs> good shout. No, I ended up looking for, looking something else up for a colleague back at base about Burton Albion's game tonight at Brackley, but ah. uh, we weren't sure whether it was a proper the game. The Brewers. Or... We've had a hundred runs in this session. This session, remember, began at twenty to two, and we'd had twenty nine overs at the lunch break. So in nineteen overs, this pair have added a hundred. There has been an opportunity spurned. I, I, I guess. If you're being picky, if you're being finickety, if that's a word, um, Almost you'd a word. say it wasn't the purest of centuries for Ben Duckett because he's been dropped twice, no. but he's battered beautifully, hasn't he? Yeah, and so yeah. has Asiba Mead. And, and the two drops have been poor, haven't they, to be well, fair? Yeah. And you know, the, the, the one this afternoon, you would expect Wayne Madsen to gobble it up, and he was furious with himself. And Ben Aitchison, there was a little bit of talk at lunch whether Ben Aitchison's drop might have been taken by the keeper because he did move to his right to the left-hander at first slip. But uh, Does it take anything away from the, the quality of the 100, no, though? No, not, not for me. You know, do you, not are you sticking an asterisk there saying 100 but drop twice? No. Um, not assuming he get, or not guaranteeing they get there. Duck it 96, I mean 95. Give, uh, give me Kendo Nakasaki's real name. Either is the oh. name that he was born with or his adoptive oh. name. Either one will do for me for a point. Oh. Just for a point. I once, I once conversed with him on Twitter. Um, <laughs> 215 for one, and he does go by his own name. Uh, and well, I can't remember come it. Come on. Here's McKiernan. To bowl to Asiba Mead. Can he leapfrog Duckett again? He's one behind him. 95 to 96. He blocks this one. Asiba Mead is getting there. You can't say he doesn't deserve a century against Derbyshire because he got... 94 here last year. He got 93 not out at Trent Bridge in the match earlier this year. And now he's on 95. I appreciate all your efforts there, Dave, but it's not going to work. He's going to get one. McKiernan. Leg spinner. Tosses it up and he drives into the offside. I presume that's Cartwright because it has been Cartwright. No, it's not Cartwright getting up. That's uh, Nudge. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's unusual doubt. for him yeah. to feel that. Yeah, and I can see number 35 right in my eye line anyway at uh, shortish mid-wicket, Hilt Cartwright, so uh, no excuse. Next delivery is driven, this time to mid-off to the skipper, Leos Deploy. Just wonder if he's just getting a little tetchy there, a Seba Mead. He's hit three very cleanly, but all straight to the fielder. Whereas Duckett's been threading it through the gaps with... Uh, Wonderful efficiency. Next one's hit to mid on. Just wonder if the next one will go to Cartwright. You know, is it one to extra cover to Dahl, <laughs> one to mid off to uh, deploy, now to mid on to Reese? He's, he's just sort Target of working golf. him round. Yeah, yeah. Cartwright <laughs> at mid wicket, this one. Comes in and bowls, and he doesn't. Spoils my little game, but gets himself a single onto the offside. What's that, the fifth ball of the over? You have to be careful because Duckett's such a good counter and loves a single from the final ball. So <laughs> Duckett might just take a single here just to make sure he's in pole position to cross the finishing line of, uh, of 100 first. 96 apiece. Pint for the marker. McKiernan to Ben Duckett. Is this the moment? Tossed up and... Duck it forward defensive push out as far as Cartwright. That surprised me a little bit. 216 for one knots. And we've had 49 overs. So we're just past the halfway stage in the day. 47 remain. And at this rate, knots will be 432 for two if they double this score. But I don't think that'll happen. Well, perhaps not for two, but one. <laughs> um, <laughs> he was born Brian Stevens. When he was adopted, became no. Peter, Peter Thornley. That's it, Peter Thornley. Yeah, Peter Thornley. he was on Twitter for a while. Yeah. Um, he was also known in the in the wrestling ring. Obviously, it was Kendo Nagasaki it was his major uh, character, if they are characters. But he was also known as Mr. Guillotine. Oh, I didn't know that. No, I didn't. Um, it's like a change of bowling. Big George is back. I think. Yeah, flummox me for a minute because the screen said Ageson, but it is. Uh, yeah, it is George, isn't it? It is big George. Now, Asiba Mead is on 96. He's faced 146 balls. 
Two centuries already this season for Amid. Coming across the line here with a third. Let's have a look at this field. I've not really mentioned the field all uh, all that much. Um, a third man and a deep backward point, not too far away from each other. He pushes this into the offside. A nice bit of fielding by Dal. Deters them from going through for a single. Joe Clark got 95 at Cardiff last week. He's had his pads on since well, about midday. Well, probably had his pads on before then, but he was next in since midday when Slater was out. The breeze ruffling whatever it is, the panels down in front of us, or is it the sight screen billowing? But uh, again, the noise not from in here, just outside the window as Scrimshaw bowls to a mead. He'll just run this to point and take a single. 217 for one. And to see the mead back in front, 97 to Duckett's 96. This may be the moment. Duckett's been becalmed the last uh, two or three minutes. Doesn't stay becalmed for long. That's not in his nature. He's, he's not one of nature's becalmed people. Bending. He's had a look round. Complete 360. He's, he's not done anything out of the orthodox no. today. By now, we'd have had a reverse sweep and a, a scoop or two normally. Scrimshaw stands with legs slightly apart and then. Runs in, Stephen Finlight bowls to duck it on his thigh pad, angles it down to Lewis Reese at long leg, and once again a pint for the marker, 97 apiece. 217 for one, 218 for one. I don't know if I mentioned it's warm. Um, no, I've still got my little warning lights back on my uh, Raspberry Pi, which isn't great. It's, it, it's warmer in this building than it was this morning. Yeah, the air is. conditioning was super this morning. It was uh, I can fix it very it pleasant. Mm. It's working as well as it might well, it, be. Well, it, in the room I'm using next door, like a sauna as well. Hamid on 97, forced deep into his crease to defend into the offside, and there's no run. 218 for one. Been some big partnerships around the county, Graham, this summer. One at Hove last week, of course, very special, the two South Africans for Leicestershire. Was it Ackerman 270 odd not out and Vian Mulder 250 not out? Scrimshaw readies himself and then comes in, passed on by Pollard's left shoulder. Balls to Amid, who again just opens the face and uses whatever pace was on the ball to guide it down to Reese at third man for a single. And Amid getting there in ones. He's on to 98. Has faced exactly 150 deliveries. So one ball left in this over. I know Dahl is at mid wicket. If Duckett gets one that he can clip a yard either side of him, that may well be a favoured scoring area. Next delivery is uh, just drop down. On the leg side, and he sends Amid back. Amid was prepared to support his mate there and gallop through for a quick single, but Duckett says, no, you can have it. 219 for one at the end of the 50th over. So uh, we know that's more than four and over. 4.4. Is it, by the mm -hmm. Which is uh, quick, isn't it? Where are you reading that? <laughs> I knew you'd be well, reading it somewhere. Oh, yeah, no, what worked it out? 4.38 and over. 219 for one. Runs have dried up since I came back. They have, yeah, because it's 4.38 <laughs> overall, but it's gone down to three and a half uh, in the last five overs. And there hasn't been a boundary. That's a, that's a challenge and a half. I think you're right, though. McKeon into Hamid. He's on 98. On the media centre end, the race course end, bowls and the a little push and run up to deploy it mid off. And I fancy the Derbyshire skipper was throwing the stumps down before he'd even fielded it then. And as a result, gets a bobble, doesn't take it cleanly. 46th over the last boundary. Hamid wears <coughs> number, squad number 99. On the back of his shirt. 
Duckett is on 99. Duckett's on 97. Next delivery is uh, a full toss put away by Ben Duckett, who punches the air absolutely immediately and goes through to his 22nd first-class 100. He's eighth for Nottinghamshire, he's second against Derbyshire, and he's third this season. And that's a terrific knock from Ben Duckett. Yes, he has been put down a couple of times, but as is, this has been an uh, absolute masterclass from a batsman right at the peak of his powers. And from 118 deliveries, Ben Duckett reaches three figures. Terrific innings. Has been dropped twice, as you say, but it's still been a very, yeah. very fine innings. I'll sort out the number of fours for you in a second. Next delivery. He's uh, squaring him up. A little bit of turn there from uh, McKeon and was the googly. It was his 18th for 118 balls, as you say. So he's there on 101. Amid at the non-striker's end on 99. 224 for one. He drives this down the ground to celebrate for four. Slamming it past the bowler. Plenty of power there from Ben Duckett. And he might just now get a little bit of a taste for this. Really might go through the gears here. Not that he's uh, not been ticking along at a healthy enough rate as it is, but if he starts to uh, have designs on taking down the Derbyshire bowlers. Could go one of two ways, of course. Could get out, but could also score another... 30 or 40 or 50 very quickly. 228 for one. Two balls left in this over. Duck it still on strike, of course. Two boundaries in this over. Next one is pulled away on the leg side, and that'll be, a, I think, a third boundary in the over. Um, just out of my sight. No, it's going to be cut off by Lewis Rees. And he's going to run hard and come back for three. Here's Ben Duckett. So uh, Seba Mead will have one ball left in this over. Got an update, <laughs> which I'll give you in a minute. Okay. 2.31 for one. I thought you meant a BBC Radio Derby no, update. No, 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 no. No. Just taking that time. In. <laughs> Interestingly, uh, Duckett was just having a rest on his haunches. So McKeon into Bolt to Hasiba Mead. He's on 99. The field brought in to try and save the single. And it's dropped on the leg side. Ducky was uh, halfway down, but knew there was no chance as the keeper had quickly got there. End of the over. 2.31 for one. Uh, yeah, gorgeous George, you mentioned in relation... This is the update. It's got nothing to do with cricket, obviously. <laughs> uh, in relation to Kendo Nagasaki, it was gorgeous George Gillette. Ah, that's him. Who was the, uh, was the manager. He wore Elton John-style glasses, sequined outfits. Perfect sidekick, it says here, for Kendo <laughs> Nagasaki. <laughs> <clears throat> I've not thought about him for what forty years. It's it's nice when there's a little bit of yeah. grey matter still uh, still doing the remembering. World of sport with Dickie Davis. It was, was great, it? wasn't it? Yeah. It was great. So it'll be. Uh, I'll, I'll give you yeah, vocal yeah. cords a bit of a rest oh. until Hamid's mm -hmm. back on strike. It's uh, Scrimshaw bowling to Duckett. It oh. just guides this down to third man for a single. So that's the end of. Uh, Dave Bracegirdle's rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Mead back on strikes. And now Derby should have got to find a way just to prevent him getting a, a single. Right-handed Mead faced 152 balls. This has been a uh, really important toss to win for, uh, for Nottinghamshire. For Stephen Mullaney, we knew all about the weather. Obviously going into... The first day here, Mullaney winning the toss. No hesitation in batting, but players have still had to go out there and do it. And despite the relatively early loss of Slater, who's out in the 15th over, Mead and Duckett have played beautifully. In comes uh, Scrimshaw Bowles, and this is turned away on the leg side by Asiba Mead. And he follows his batting partner in reaching three figures. This one from 153 balls for a Seba Mead. It's only his 11th first class 100 and his fifth for Knotts. And his third this season gets a hug from Duckett. And he will be absolutely delighted. Takes his helmet off and uh, waved his bat to the crowd and to the Knotts dressing room. Knotts are 233 for one with back-to-back uh, -back hundreds 
uh, in consecutive overs out there. Mostly to the not changing room, I think. Most of the mm. crowd are in the East Midlands demolition stand now as Ducky pulls this next delivery from Scrimshaw in front of Square on the leg side. That's a terrific shot. Onto it really quickly, and Scrimshaw's no slouch. Aitchison does the fielding out on the boundary. The batsman get back for do. Duckett moves on to 111, potentially. Might be 113. Uh, it is 111 to 35 for one. Point for anybody who gets uh, Kendo Nagasaki's <laughs> speciality finisher moves Ooh. name. Kamikaze crash. Oh, sensational work <laughs> from the man on my left. That is excellent work. Well done. Here's Scrimshaw. <laughs> 2.35 for one. Scrimshaw in and bowls to Duckett, who just turns that into the leg side. I don't know if will do the fielding. Ask my family members' birthdays or when the MOT <laughs> is due. Or <laughs> yeah. this, this article has got all the big names of... Uh, Shirley Crabtree, Big Daddy, of course, and Giant Haystacks, and all the top wrestlers. Cat Weasel. Yes. <laughs> he was quite frightening. Really, Les Kelly. He was, he was from what we all... Oh, he was Yorkshireman, wasn't he? I beg your pardon. Steady. He was a Yorkshireman. Les Kelly. Jackie Palo. Mick McManus. Jackie TV Palo. In comes at Scrimshaw again. That one is guided into the <laughs> offside. There's a tumbling stop there by Matty McKinnon. Yes, it is county championship cricket, folks. Brian Glover, of course, was oh, a, yeah. a wrestler he at the was time. Indeed. He was in Kez, wasn't he? Mm. Yeah. Sadly, no longer with us. There's a lot here about his unmasking as well, which is uh, great fun by all accounts. <laughs> People desperately trying to pull that mask of his off on a regular basis on a Saturday afternoon at four <laughs> o'clock just before the video printer. Kent Walton. Kent Walton. Scrimshaw bowls clipped down towards fine leg. Lewis Reese will do the filling. I'm sure Lewis Reese is getting pinker. <laughs> it might just be an optical <laughs> illusion, but it looks to me as though he's, he's turning lobster mm. colour. Uh, end of the over. Two, three, six for one. 112 to Duckett, 100 to Hassi Hamid, and the partnership is worth 190. Yeah. There's 12 overs to go until T. Already 121 runs scored in this session. Yeah, it's a bit uh, ominous, really, for Derbyshire at this stage. Just wonder if there was any dialogue yesterday about uh, changing the the hours today. We know that uh, a couple of matches they decided just to settle on three ninety-minute sessions today, and then make up the rest of the. I understand not. Okay. I, yeah. From what from what I'm told, no. Steve Spires, uh, oh, we better check who, who he means. Um, Asiba Mead, says Steve. I still think he's got an England career ahead of him. Um, yeah, I suppose it could apply to either of these. Uh, Mead, though, is pretty much back where he was this time last year, just hoping that sheer weight of runs for Nottinghamshire will get him an England call. But of course, last year it didn't go particularly well, either against India, and, or certainly in the Ashes, where he played four matches and averaged 10. Well, the rest of the team did so well in the Ashes, didn't yeah, they? That uh, <laughs> he was sort of one of the scapegoats. Yes. Rory Burns, another one that didn't go no to uh, the West Indies. Just resting them for now, and uh, thank you very much. And don't bother coming back. Two, three, six, four. I've just looked up the highest partnerships. This, this might do it. Um, <laughs> here's Matty McKeard and Ian and Bowles to Duckett, who turns it into the leg side. Anish Dahl, who's as quick as anything on a cricket field. Yeah. Gets to the ball, but can't prevent them from getting through for a single duck. It's 113, 237 for one. The highest first wicket stand includes Paul Pollard. Uh, and the highest second wicket stand, which this is, includes Paul Pollard. And it's 265 oh. here in 1991. He's out there now, isn't he? Saw a big stand here between uh, Peterson and John Morris. Both got 200s. Next delivery from McKinnon is defended by Hamid out into the offside. Yeah, Pollard and Robinson in 1991. Would have been, I think, the fourth wicket. Sixth um, wicket, 372 unbeaten between Peterson and Morris that in was 2001. Yeah, I was here for that. Yeah, that was the sixth wicket. Next delivery is uh, striking the pads of Hasib Hamid. Dan says, don't forget Pat Roach. Oh, our feeder, feeder zone, zone pet. pet. Yeah, the big lad, the West Countryman, yeah, from our feeder zone pet. Absolutely. 
Good shout. It's amazing where conversations <laughs> on the day of county cricket take it. Okay, and then, then again, balls to Hamid, who goes back into his stumps and pushes it out into the offside straight to Anush Dahl at extra cover. Didn't really watch it. Was, it. was he Bomber or something? He was Bomber. Mm. Yes, he was. But I was watching a clip with, uh, with him in it yesterday on YouTube. Next delivery from McKinnon is cut very nicely out into the backward point region. They come back Ooh. for two. Harry Kane's there quickly, but they managed to get back in time. Just for a moment, I was with you there, Dave. Just for a moment, it looked as though he might be yeah. in a spot of bother, but uh, no. Uh, Peterson, in that one, Peterson, if it was the same one, which I assume yeah, it was, 2001, yeah. Peterson made 218, Morris made 136. Oh, right. Oh, oh. But, uh, 200 in my mind. Morris yeah. had made a century in the first yeah. innings as well. Yeah. As, yeah. As ah, had, that uh, was it, yeah, 200 in the first innings. Osman Afsal yeah. made 138. Oof. Down the oh. leg side, did that turn or was it just a poor ball? Either way, it was taken down the leg side by Brooke Guest, left alone by Hassi Pamid. He's on 102. <laughs> Duckett has 113, 239 <laughs> for one. If I just caressed the ball like Ben Duckett has for however long he's been at the crease, three hours with that wonderful piece of willow, I wouldn't have just discarded it like he, he did. Then he threw the off his helmet, pop, pop threw down, off yeah. the bat. He's probably got, yeah, 15 like it in the dressing room. But, God, yeah. You'd keep it in cotton wool, wouldn't you, for the, yeah, uh, for the next time you need it. But they're all having a drink. Well, the, uh, the, the two batters are having a drink. That game you were talking about, not 526 all out in their first innings. Derbyshire, 572 all out. Not 557 for five declared. Thanks very much for coming. I think that was a game that um, David Griffin was talking about earlier on today because in that game, the thick end of 16... 150 runs were scored in three innings mm. and the game obviously was completed but came to no natural conclusion really other than a, than a draw. So Derbyshire should cling on to that, if so nothing else. A lot of runs, isn't it? Mm, too many. Do you want to do this over? I'll have to nip next door in of one course, minute. Not a problem. It's a George Scrimshaw continuing from the city end, bowling to Ben Duckett who turns this one into the leg side. Philip Ayano's dull, and there's no room. Yeah, I just turned up the feed. I can turn up the feed and turn it down like you like you can on uh, all sorts of broadcasting equipment. And I've got Kim Wilde. I bet you can't guess which song it is. Kids in America. Absolutely. Which other? <laughs> is there another one? Is there another one? There probably is. But the last time I went to do an update, they were playing a hot in the city. I can't remember who, who did the hot in, in the, the city, city tonight. Yes, oh, very, I have no yeah, idea. Very appropriate. Yeah. Is Scrimshaw again in and bowls. That one's turned into the leg side once again by Ben Duckett. And again, it's fielded by Alan Dull. There's no room. Like a bit of Isley Brothers. Summer breeze <laughs> makes me feel fine. Well, there is a breeze. I think it's more than a breeze here today. It's a, almost a howling gale, which has whipped up some dust in the car park on more than one occasion. All those cars will be covered in dust when they... Supporters who part there go back. The ice cream van's got one of those silver protectors in its windscreen. And Scrimshaw bowls, and that one is pushed out into the offside, up towards mid-off, really, by Ben Duckett, and there's no room. Awaiting instructions from Jack Tymon, producer of the very fine... I've no idea what he said then. 122, was it? I don't need I don't need second by second updates, Jack. That's very kind of you. There. One minute ten. <laughs> he's he's fully across everything that's happening in the world, apparently. Next delivery from uh, Scrimshaw is turning to the leg side for four runs by Ben Duckett. Well, there's two men out there, but neither of them can get within five, six, seven yards of the ball down at backward square leg. Duckett moves on to 117. The partnership's worth 197. It's 243 for one now. That's mad. Everything's warming up to an alarming degree inside the uh, press box as well. I've got a, a thermometer showing on my Raspberry Pi. Yes, you heard me right. I've got a Raspberry Pi I'm broadcasting from here. 
Here comes Scrimshaw, and that one's dabbed into the offside by uh, Ben Duckett. I'm going to try and move this laptop out of the direct sun as well. Good grief. 198, the partnership now. It's going to go around the wicket to Hasib Hamid. Well, commentating, and it's not particularly pleasant, so you're absolutely right, Sally. It is exceptionally hot down here. So hot, in fact, that uh, my record, my uh, broadcasting equipment, as Hassi Bermid gets another four to take notes onto 248 for one and bring up the 200 partnership between him and Ben Duckett. Uh, it's got a little thermometer on it, and it keeps flashing at me, which I think means it's overheating, but uh, I'm trying to ignore that as best as I possibly can. Uh, just one wicket has fallen today after Notts won the toss and decided about first. Ben Slater, former Derbyshire man, of course, was out for 12, and he must be sitting in the changing rooms now and thinking, what on earth have I done? Because Ben Duckett's got 118, his 22nd career century, and Hasib Hamid has got 106, his 11th first-class century of his career. As I say, the partnership's worth 202. And uh, the Derbyshire bowlers don't seem to have any answers at the moment. It's very hot work, and we've still got 10 overs to go until T. Nottinghamshire, 2 four, eight for one mm. Yes, Dorothy's had a word. Um, and she's absolute... She is right. She No, no... Yes, yes, no, she's absolutely right, is Dorothy. But if I don't have the window open, I can't stick the effects microphone out, and it sounds like we're commentating from an, a hermetically sealed box. So the problem there is that I have to have the window open to stick the microphone out. Of course, the uh, the uh, the door open at the back isn't helping, I'm sure, but we have got the air con on. Yeah. I can sort of feel it on my back, uh, Sally, and, and hopefully it will start to kick in at some point because, well, I'm starting to boil here. <laughs> I'll try another glorious shot from Hasib Hamid down on one knee as he smashes that out towards the extra cover boundary for a single the 200 partnership came up I didn't make a proper note of when it came up it came up off 241 balls which is uh, which is pretty decent going I was going soft. I've just admitted on air. I was just starting to feel a little bit sorry for the Derbyshire bowlers and fielders. Are, it can't be easy. No, it, no, it can't, can't be. be. But you know, that's the way it goes. This one is pushed up to mid on by Ben Duckett. He moves to 120. The 250 came up with that last delivery or that last run scored by Hassi Pamid, and they've now moved to 251 for one. And they have two batting bonus points. Nottinghamshire. Quickly went from one to two there, didn't they? Yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. I mean, for most of these, if not all of them, it's the hottest they've ever fielded in. I just wonder perhaps if, uh, if Cartwright on his international exploits or his it's times quite, in Australia. Quite warm is, uh, in Perth on yeah. occasion, can't it, I think? But uh, I know what you're saying. Yeah, but for many of them, they won't have been out there in such conditions. Stifling conditions. No. Now, to be fair, we've not had as many drinks breaks or, or subs running on at the end of over, the overs as I, as I feared at the start of the day. I we don't it seem would be, to have done, uh, do we? Next delivery is uh, on its way now. McKeon and bowling outside the off stump was the leg spinner, and I mean, lets it go through to Brook Guest. Would have thought at some point the ice cream van would have just driven onto the outfield and given them all, <laughs> given them all a lolly. <laughs> the, the 50 to get to 250 <laughs> came in less than 10 overs. No wild slogging involved. McKeon again down the leg side. That was a poor ball, and the Mead will feel he's missed out on that one because there was absolutely nothing stopping it from going for four if uh, Mead had got a bat on it. He will have a target in his mind. I, I know, I see, because we've spoken to him about it uh, on a few occasions. I'm sure he doesn't like me prodding the, uh, the hornet's nest. I'll tell you in a second after this one. Kane and Bowles, and he's drilled it into the offside, fielded by Anod Dal. That's his 11th first-class 100, his highest first-class score, only 125. 
He has talked about getting a big one. He wants to get a big one. And every time he does, every time I bring it up, it gets to 100 and then gets out. And we have the chat again. He, <laughs> he, he, he says he feels there's a really big score in him one day. And you know that's sort of the next... The next one he wants to notch off, so uh, 107 not out, Derbyshire fans. He, you know, he, he is vulnerable around about this area, but he will, I'm sure, have in the back of his mind. This is a really good opportunity to, to bat all day and walk off 160, 170 at Stumps. No question. The umpires have just had a chat about something or other. They were looking at the scoreboard as well. I think they were trying to work out the fact that it's uh, still nine overs until T. I wonder if they're saying to... Uh, Leas deploy, the, Leas deploy yeah. will go off a tee at a certain time to make sure that everybody can uh, rehydrate properly and cool down and all the rest of it. Now he's talking to uh, Hasip and Mead, isn't he, the umpire at the far end. Um, thanks to Steve Doggett, who said it was Billy Idler did hot in the yes. city. Of course yeah. it was, thank you. Yeah. Steve has been an absolute mine of information today about wasps and all sorts of things. At the toss, the umpires did say... We will update you if your over eight drops below level. It could have been that because yeah. they had a chat and then yeah. uh, just said to Leas deploy something. It may have been just be careful, just, which is the last thing I guess Leas deploy wants. And judging by the fact that I know Dale's taking forever to get this over starting, I don't think it was anything along the lines of can you uh, speed up the rate of play, please? One of those when Leas deploy goes, yes sir, no problem yeah. sir, and then just yeah. carries on as normal. Yeah. That's, I think that's when you get in trouble. I think you've got to, as you say, pay them respect as uh, Dal starts a new over, bowls to duck it, and he defends. Anuj as well. Anuj Dal, I beg your pardon, has had nine overs, one for 34. You, you know, you, you just, even just for five minutes, just start you know, going round a little bit quicker and as captain, just, come on, boys, come on, quickly mm. round, you know, at least. Show a bit of willing. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Brooke Guest going to stand up? Yeah, mm. I think he is. Takes off the cap, stuffs it down his pants, puts the helmet on. 251 for one, Nottinghamshire. Lost Ben Slater, and there's 46 on the board. Duckett just restrained himself a little bit there. I thought he was going to go downtown, uh, almost literally hitting in that direction, but he, he didn't. He just pushed it. In the end, gently into the offside. Six bowlers used. Connors, Aitchis and Dal, Scrimshaw, Reese and McKiernan. Nicely shared the workload. Nobody's had more than 12 overs. Everybody's had at least six. I suppose Madsen could be uh, another option. There's Duckett driving into the offside. There's no run, but I think six can probably adequately do the job. Yeah, I mean, Deploy could bring himself on with a bit of left arm as well. Uh, but really, if you've got six bowlers. Mm. You'd probably save Madsen and Deploy for you know when the umpires really are giving you a hard time yeah. about your over eight. OK, yeah. don't worry, we'll have half an hour of fairly gentle spin off two paces. Next delivery is uh, clipped by Duckett onto the leg side. Slight misfield, so they get a single. Duckett onto... 121. He made 122 at Trembridge against Glamorgan and he was absolutely uh, gutted when he got out in the second innings for 95 because he, he said, I've never had 100 in each innings of a match, 122 and 95. And that's all he could think about at the end of it. Um, and then he got 145 at Leicester and again he got himself out. He reverse swept when there was about 300 on there for him to get. Really was playing nicely there. 2.52 for one. This over isn't absolutely rattling along because Dal and Deploy, as, uh, as, as is you know, the, the right thing there, oh, that's not necessarily the right thing. They brought Matty McKiernan from our left, the, uh, the onside of a Seba Mead. They brought him all the way over into the covers and they've now sent him back again. And he's in at shortish mid-wicket. That's the sort of things that get the umpires just mm. a little bit hot under the collar on cool, chilly days, but even more so. Oh, we're still not going to get any cricket. Skip. What about this? What about that? Attacking fields. 
the doubt falls and uh, Hamid just threads it into that little gap on the leg side and gets down to the other end, 253 for one. Yeah, Derbyshire, a team that can faff, a little bit historically. Of, faffing, yeah. um, of course, there's a, an ODI today, which I've paid very little attention to. South Africa, 200 for two after 36 overs. That's taking place up at Chesterley Street, and I saw Durham's Matty Potts getting his debut in that one. There's Duckett, clips it down to Reese at long leg for a single. Division 1 scores, the batting sides, Hampshire 167 for 1, Northants 146 for 5, Somerset 104 for 2, Essex 176 for 6, uh, lots of wickets at uh, Edgbaston, uh, Kent 165 all out, Warwickshire 24 for 2. I wonder if they're playing on the same wicket as the, uh, as the Blast Finals day. We're... Um, are the players drink. going off or are they having uh, a drink? No, they're having a drink. drink. Having In a Division drink. 2, uh, Sussex 173 for 2 at Lords against Middlesex. So, uh, had I known they were going to have a drinks break then, I'd have... Uh, You'd have waited, read, wouldn't you? What are we going to talk about now then, Read you those scores <laughs> uh, a little, a little uh, more fully. It's quarter to four or mm. thereabouts, and we've still got eight overs to go until tea. I don't care whether open windows are bad for you. I'm going to try and get some more draft through here. I've just opened another window. Sorry, Dorothy. I was told off by Dorothy before for having the <laughs> windows open and aircon on, but we've also got the door open at the back to try and get a draft through, really. Jamie needs to open some windows. He's just walked past. That's Jamie awesome. who's in charge of uh, I mean, that, the ground. That breeze has gone, that wind has gone, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. We had right well, about lunchtime. The flag's fairly limp, isn't it, on the... Yeah. Uh, Left on the side is there of a Derby should flag anyway? There isn't. I, I can only assume it's with John Brown, who isn't well, so ah. he hasn't brought it. But that's the only... I mean, it's an assumption. It, usually the scorer looks after the flag, but of course Jane has been drafted in late, so wouldn't have been in possession of the flag, I don't think. I'm slightly concerned about all this equipment. It's now going to overheat because um, it's going to be in direct sunlight fairly soon. Yep. That's not great. I've already got the little thermometer, and it's stopped flashing now. It's just on permanently. <laughs> I'd like to turn it off at some point. Does Jane normally do the uh, twos? Yeah, mm. yeah. She did the T twenty this year, Jane, and uh, did it very well. So what have we got? We've got still got eight overs yeah. until T. Yeah, for goodness oh, sake! This isn't the uh, the quickest of drinks breaks either. Understandably. Say, I'd have been encouraging them to drive that ice cream van onto the outfield. Yeah, straight across the pitch, and let's all go yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a lolly, please? Mickey, can we have a lolly? He'll have seen some hot days in South Africa, won't he? Well, his last job was in Sri Lanka, yeah, of course, and before that in Pakistan. So, yeah, this is. <laughs> Somebody was telling me this morning he didn't have he a got his coat on. Yeah, well, he didn't. Ha he didn't have a a, a, coat, a winter jacket until he arrived in Derby. He never had any need for one in his entire life. <laughs> South Africa, Western Australia, <laughs> and uh, he probably would have had need for one here in April. Oh yes, mm. well, well, I think it was the day that not the one of the two days, the first day possibly the knots were here. It was very warm in that uh, warm up game before the season started. Oh yeah, yeah. very hot. Yeah, uh, I was very hot then. I was. Uh, you were abroad. No, I was in bed with the the old uh, COVID. Kiernan begins a new over from the race course end. First delivery is pushed into the onside by uh, Ben Duckett to Anuj Dahl, and there's no rum. The cough seems to have gone touch wood though. Yeah, touch wood. Next delivery is turned into the leg side. Slightly squarer. Duckett sets off. Is sent back by Hamid as it's fielded by Aitchison or George Scrimshaw. It's Scrimshaw. Beg your pardon. And there's no... Ah, there's a bit of a bit of a breeze there. That's quite mm. nice. What have you done? Well, nothing really. Oh. <laughs> it's a more, more, <laughs> more bad luck than management. <laughs> there's McKinnon is in again. Balls. That one is turned into the leg side by Ben Duckett. Again, it's Dahl who does the fielding again. There's no run. The uh, parasol covering the cameraman has turned inside out. Yeah. 
on top of the members' pavilion balcony as McKeon and he's in again. And that one is turned into the leg side for a single this time by Ben Duckett. He moves to 123, 255 for one. Normally, you'd imagine the spectators in that temporary permanent stand at the far end would be nicely spaced out, but they've all just huddled up on the back row and they all together just just probably one little spot of shade a little bit of shade and of course up the top there not only a good view but a decent breeze mm. i would have thought up the top end of the uh, the permanent temporary stand at the far end of the ground mckinnon two balls left of the over the first one is driven by hamid to anna's dal extra cover and there's no run applause from sam connor's Encouraging the leg spinner so that he doesn't have to come back on and bowl again. As McKeon is in one sport. Turned into the leg side by Hamid. He's going to pick up a couple of runs here as Ben H. has to run around the boundary from square leg to do the fielding. He looks weary. And the throw looked a bit weary and the wicket keeping looked a bit weary. <laughs> 257 for one. Duckett, 123. Hamid, 110. The partnership, 211. Nottinghamshire very firmly in control. And that was the first over I noticed. I mean, he might have been doing it all day, but that was the first over I noticed that umpire Pollard wasn't uh, swapping over from square leg to square leg. He might have given up himself. Yeah. Huh? When I say given up, you know what I mean. I don't, I don't, <laughs> think, I don't think he's given up. <laughs> Not like me. I've given up. 257 for one. We are seven overs away from the tea break now. And Andy Dow will... Come on for his 11th over. One wicket to fall. Seems uh, seems like a couple of days ago. It was only midday. 15th over. Dal round the wicket to duck it on his pads. He's strong there. Whips it out. Deep onto the leg side. Fielded by Aitchison, who spilled him early on when uh, Ben Duckett was on 24. Been dropped a couple of times. Ben Duckett, Sam Connors and Lewis Reese, the unlucky bowlers. 258 for one. Partnership 212. Again, this funky leg side field being implemented. Two men in at shortish mid wicket catching. This is uh, pushed into the offside. No run. Down Somerset Way, they'll tell you that's called the Triscothic Wall, but I'm pretty sure he wasn't the first captain to bring in two short catching mid wickets. I'd like to call it the mid-wicket cordon. <laughs> Does the job, doesn't it? Uh, used it a few, everybody uses it now, don't they? They used it up at Durham a few times. In their search for ten second innings wickets, of which they got seven. On a flat pitch. 2.58 for one. Again comes Dahl and playing a miss from Hamid. I think it, did it ricochet off the keeper's pad? I think it probably did. Well, I'm looking at the body language out there and I think it might have been an edge through to the keeper who hasn't taken it that would that would be my guess there if you look at there's various people with hands on heads and not so much now hands on hips more now but there's uh, i think i think that's a chance you know i'm glad you weren't in charge of fines when i was playing it's a drop. you reckon that was a drop i think that's a drop he's a harsh man mr fletcher 110 i'm, I'm not making a note of that one Here comes dal again balls and Hamid pushes it back to the bowler there's complete indifference on the field from all 11 Derbyshire players. Yet Dave Fletcher's got him down in his black book. A drop. There were players Brooke with Guest. hands on their heads. There were people down on their haunches. And the wicketkeeper looked aghast. Can only apologise to the Guest family if they're listening. Brooke Guest drops at Hamid. I'm making a note of that. <laughs> 2.58 for one. Flawless innings from Hamid. As... Uh, <laughs> Is now in tatters. 258 for one, it remains. Amid 110, Duckett 124. Well, the one person I won't be asking is uh, Brooke Guest because he'll <laughs> say no. <laughs> and Hass will say no. So, um, yeah. But of course, the bowler will say. I don't think they're particularly good witnesses in this case. Next delivery, the bowls and he pushes it to backward point, end of the over, 258 for one, it remains. Nottinghamshire winning the toss, opting to bat first. Ben Slater was caught by Brooke Guest from the bowling of Anandjidal for 12. That was 46 for one in the 15th over. 
at lunch knots were 115 for one after 29. So this afternoon they've scored 143 in 29 overs. I'm going to try a bit of Fred Carno here because I cannot risk going off air. Well, I can, but I'm not going to. There we go. Beautiful. Mm. Now, he did a, he, did he it. run a circus, Fred Carner? Fred Carner was an army, wasn't it? Was it Fred Carner's circus? Fred Carner's army? I'm not sure. The circus, I think. McKinnon begins a new over. Oh, the first ball is swept for four by Ben Duckett. It moves on to 128, 252 for one. I think it was a madcap circus. Yeah. It was full of things that went wrong. Yes. Hence the expression, it's all gone a little bit Fred Carno's. How do you think we spell Carno? K-A-R-N-O. Yeah, that's absolutely right. He was an impresario. A bit like Lionel Blair. Was he, was he the impresario? I think it was near not a raconteur. <laughs> this one is oh, a full toss that oh, no, swept. There is a man out on the deep backward square leg boundary. It was missed by the man in it. Short backwards, short-ish backward square leg, regular backward square leg. They go through for another single. Ducky moves to 129. No, it was Lionel Bart that was the impresario, wasn't it? Not Lionel Blair. Always get them mixed up. He was a slapstick music hall entertainer, Fred Carno, and it was a First World War marching tune with Fred Carno's army. <laughs> do, 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 do. I don't think it was that one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, that was a counting song, wasn't it? I don't know, was it? I think so. I think so. <laughs> yeah. Counting, so I, I'll tell you later. I can't tell you on air because oh. it would be uh, it would be too much. It would probably mean the end of my uh, what I laughingly call <laughs> career. Is um, <laughs> so it's throw me, throw me completely. It's Matty McKinnon bowling and is dabbed down towards third man by uh, Hassi Pamid, who moves on to 112. Well, I know you like a good read. I was actually going to quiz you on what you're reading this week and. And I saw the title of the book and thought, well... That's, that's, not, that's not my book. That's Ed's book. What is it? Is it good? <laughs> I don't know. All right. I don't, I, I, no, I'm not a big reader. I've got a copy of uh, Private Eye in my bag for later. I might, might read it after tea. <laughs> if I need cheering up. McKinnon. In again, bowls to Hamid, who this time pulls it into the leg side, and that's going to be four runs. There isn't anybody out there on the mid-wicket boundary. Hilton Cartwright goes jogging after it. Hamid moves on to 104, 116, 269 for one. The partnership is now 223. What did I say that record was? I, I kept it up on I don't know. No, I forgot myself. 240, wasn't it? John Pearce, he's, you've obviously been listening to me, John, over the last two years. I think Ben Duckett would be perfect for Ben Stokes' test side. He's had a great run of scores this year. Yeah, he has indeed. No, he's too much Thank of a, you, John. Too much of a conventional batsman, you see. <laughs> he's a bit, a bit flashier for the new test squad. Going all guns blazing, which is exactly what he's done here. 129 of 146 balls he's got. Uh, the record for this partnership is 265. So they almost certainly won't get there before T. Five overs and two balls until T. McKinnon is in again, and this one is down the leg side. He's bowled a few of those. Mm. Taken by uh, Brooke Guest. So, yeah, this is the, the vulnerable, well, I can say is it, it, vulnerable area for uh, Amid. Uh, the 116s. <laughs> it is quite yeah, staggering though. Is his, weird, his career it? best it is, is only one two five. It is strange. Yeah. For such a good player. Hmm. This might be the day. Quick info, I've got it as one two two. There we go. He's lost three. He's lost three. It's outrageous. He's driven this one, but he's been fielded brilliantly by Anuj Dahl, diving away to his left hand side. Manages to clutch the ball in. It's the end of the McKinnon over that actually cost 11 runs in the end. Five to go until T. 269 for one knots, having won the toss this morning and decided, obviously, to bat first. Ben Duckett has 129 and Hasib Hamid has 116. The partnership is 223 and the thermometer on my broadcasting equipment continues to flash at me. Yes, 122. Um is correct back in 2016 
his first full year. I think he was, was he Young Player of the Year or some such. Got to four centuries that year and made it into the England Test squad for that winter's tour of Bangladesh and India. As did Ben Duckett, the man at the other end. We've got a floppy son out on the field. I'm going Mitch Wagstaff again. Uh, Matty McKinnon has left the field. He's bowled seven overs for 35 in this spell. Dal to bowl to duck it on 129, make that 130. As the, the 12th man ran on, whoever he is, he, he had to hang on to his floppy son hat and you can see his shirt just billowing in the breeze a little bit. So it also is, looks uh, like his trousers are about to fall down. It looks, <laughs> yeah. it looks like he was surprised to be called on to me. Now being given a position of responsibility, close in catching. 270 for one, this partnership worth 224. And Dal to Hamid, who just runs it out as far as the unknown soldier. 270 for one. Definitely waxed out. Seconds playing? No, they don't play for about seven weeks now, do they? All right. <laughs> Be in action for them then. They've played all their cricket. No point in playing Saints cricket, is there? There's only the Royal London and that other nonsense. Next delivery is uh, off, skewed away off a thickish outside portion of Hamid's bat down to third man. Can't see his face from here. He's so far away at the uh, at the far end, at the city end. I can only imagine it was scrunched up in disappointment at. The fact that he got it down to third man when he was looking to drive through extra cover. Likes to be uh, top of his game. Always striving for perfection. Something he's got in common with Dave Fletcher. Yeah, I was just going to say exactly the same thing then, actually. <laughs> yeah. I'm known for it. Dal around the wicket. Bowls down the leg side. And it's a good job Brooke Guest got something on it. I think it will be a bye. Let's have a look. Let's have a look, Mr Pollard. Oh, the drop. Well... Now then, he's not given a signal, is he? No, no, no. he's drop. not given a signal. That was a buy. I'm pretty sure that was a buy. 272 for one. Mm. Can't keep dropping these catches. Hmm. You're next to the scorers. What's your, what's your, what have they put that one down as? Can you see? They put it down as a single. He didn't get a bat on that, sure. Next one sees so uh, me run it to backward point. Aitchison... Goes down in instalments, makes the stop. And there's no run. Knocking on the door of four o'clock. We're getting there. At, uh, <laughs> at, um, We're not getting there particularly quickly, <laughs> though, are we? <laughs> well, at half past seven when I arrived in the county ground this morning, four o'clock was just something that was way over the horizon, a million miles away, but we're getting there. Next ball is uh, running to the offside. It was worth me coming in. I had purpose to my life this morning yeah. when I arrived at the county ground at half past seven and I'd achieved all of my daily goals by nine o'clock. That's not a bad effort, though. 272 for one. I had one, uh, I had one target today and I achieved it. Um, Notts lead by 272, says the board. That's, uh, that's probably because of the only side that's battered so far. Yeah, exactly. 272 for one. And I'm not going to reveal what Dave's no. targets no, were. It's nothing to, to. Do with, nothing to do with me. Tickets. Tickets. <laughs> <laughs> He's in a virtual queue. How British is that? I kept quite deliberate there so everybody could hear what he said. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Looks like there's going to be another conference here. Wayne Madsen's running to join Lewis Rees, who's talking to Leas Deploy, who's almost having a chat with George Scrimshaw, because basically... The bowler who bowled the last over at this end, Matty McKeon, is not on the pitch anymore. So uh, Lewis Reese is going to have to bowl. Are you, he may well have been going to bowl in any case, but he is going to have to bowl. Some nonsense uh, being played by Radio Derby FM. You don't want to be listening to that. Listen to this. I have no idea what it was. No, nah, no idea. Jack Timon might tell me. No, he's not listening anymore. 272 for one. Oof. Yeah, 
keeps clicking. This one is turned into the leg side by Ben Duckett. I don't like the sound of that. I don't really know what to do either. I can't put it in a bowl of water. <laughs> oh dear. It's probably another one of the things in this country that's been certified to 35 degrees. And unfortunately, it's packing up as a, as a slash down to backward point by Ben Duckett for a single. He moves on to 132. Officials apparently have, uh, in Europe, have described the heat as apocalyptic, according to AccuWeather. Thirty-seven point seven. Thirty-nine at East Midlands Airport. Here is Lewis Rees. In over the wicket, bowling to Hamid, who has a go at that one outside the off stump. Goes through to the keeper, Brooke Guest. False shot. Ah. I think my uh, what's it needs that battery putting in it at doors. I don't know if you'd be able to do that for me. Oh, don't, oh, don't lose it. <laughs> so it's going to replace the battery in the effects microphone, which is very good of him. As this next one is turned into the leg side by Hasi Pamid. He moves on to 118. Ryan. Dilks is just reading the news, so it'll be a report fairly shortly, or an update, or whatever you call them. Look at that. He's done it before. I forgot he was going through to Dave. <laughs> oh, that's better. Thank you, Lewis Rees Bowles. And it's... Uh, that's remarkable. We can hear what's happening outside now. Oh, there we go. Well, it's got no better, Ryan, I'm afraid to say. Nottinghamshire moved on to 274 for one now. The partnership for the second wicket between uh, Ben Duckett and Hasi Bermid is 228. They came together at midday when Ben Slater was out for 12. And they've both batted beautifully, although Ben Duckett has been dropped a couple of times. Uh, Hasi Bermid, for my money, has also been dropped once. But they're both on to three figures. Duckett has 132. Hamid has 118. The Derbyshire bowlers are toiling in the heat here at the county ground. Nottinghamshire 276 for one. You didn't really sell the live commentary there. <laughs> uh, it's just been pointed out to me that the hottest day ever, and Derbyshire still managed to dither about so much they'll end up playing the best part of an hour's overtime. Uh, good point. Good point, well made, uh, but unsurprising really, because that's how Derbyshire operate. Although it, it's, they've dithered, but they've also had to slow down to a degree because it is so hot. Here's Anuj Dahl. I'm not one to complain. The ball is dabbed down into the offside by Hasi Hamid, and there's no run fielded by uh, Hilton Cartwright, who's still running around like a young lamb. Dave seems to seems to be struggling next door. Oh no, he's back. He's going to blame us for removing that, you know, for something or other. But I don't think he can because it's nothing to do with us. Two seven six for one. Two thirty the partnership, and more runs here, or at least one more to Hasib Hamidu. Just clips that one to backward square leg. Harry Kame does the feeling. He'll get an opportunity to show his batting prowess. Uh, but if you want to see that, I wouldn't come tomorrow. I'd probably come on Thursday. Because you can't see Nottinghamshire. Well, you can actually. You can see them declaring just after tea tomorrow. 
with 600 on the board. Now the ball's been thrown over the head of Anna's Dahl, so Sam Connors has to go and fetch it. It's all a bit unedifying at the moment out there as uh, Derbyshire's fielders start to struggle in the heat with two overs and four balls to go until T. In comes Dahl around the wicket and bowls. That's down the leg side, flicked away by Ben Duck. It didn't get really enough on it for it to get all the way to the boundary. They'll come back for a second, though, before Lewis Rees manages to uh, get to the ball. I'm just slightly concerned about pulling that off. Are you all right? Well, I apologise. I'd forgotten all about the fact that you had the same effects as me, but it had just packed in. It had. Yeah, and now it's working again. Yeah, yeah so... Uh, it's all right. No, and I suddenly realised when you looked aghast that it also affected you next door as his next delivery is pushed into the leg side. When Madsen takes his eye off the ball, it goes through his legs. They don't take a run. I wondered where everybody had gone. Because we've got all the window. We might as well have shut the windows and have the air con on, really, might we? But now we can hear the outside world again. I think it's much better. Much better. It is. It's nice to hear the shouts and yelps of frustration. <laughs> Cries of catch. Yeah, all those missed chances. Cries of he's dropped it. I hope they can't hear me. This next one is clipped into the leg side. Aerially towards square leg. Of course, there isn't a square leg. And they go through for another single. Duck, it moves to 135. 280 for one. What were they at lunch? How many did they put on? 115 at lunch was the score. Yeah, and they've like gone from 46. 165 runs. Dear, oh dear. That's a lot. That's an awful lot. It's too many. But you know, one brings two. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't heard that shout yet. <laughs> Come on, boys, bang, bang. That'll be the next shout we hear. <laughs> we'll all roll about laughing. Here's Darling, defended by Hasi Pamid. They do shout some nonsense down there. There were... Uh, Somebody was talking this morning at the end of the over, 280 for one. Inevitably, as it's the first time we've been to the county ground since the quarterfinal of the T20. About that Matty McKinnon over that went for five sixes and a four uh, and a no ball. Um, and on a couple of the balls that were hit by Riley Russo, you could hear in the background, catch it. Now, who they were shouting catch it to, I've no idea. Because <laughs> they, the crowd. They, oh, they, they were by, it was bypassing the crowd. It was going way beyond the crowd. Those flats on the, to the left of where we were commentating from, on the far side of the pavilion, they were in danger. And it was going over the temporary stands and all sorts. I mean, it was just carnage. Absolute carnage. There's Lewis Rees. He's still very keen on getting his field absolutely as he wants it, which is obviously the right thing to do before he bowls a ball. We're not going to finish before 7 o'clock, you know. Two hours before... The tee break, Reese bowls, Duckett clips it off his leg. There is a fielder out there. And Duckett moves on to 136, 281 for one. Yeah, I mentioned earlier, I talked into doing a little bit of umpiring at the weekend. And, you know, youngsters going through the same experience as we did all those years ago. And we must have sounded as foolish as they did today. There's somebody. Went chasing one outside the off stump. Didn't get anything on it as Reese bowls. And, ooh, this one just popped a little bit on Hamid. Might have struck him in the glove, but plays it down on the leg side. And the keeper just suddenly thought he was the, the wittiest person in the world. He's, he's fishing, boys. He's fishing. And then decided after every delivery, everyone that went through to him, he's fishing, boys. He's after a trout. He's fishing, boys. He's after a mackerel. He's, <laughs> this went on for about three overs till he ran out of all the fish he knew. And you think, yes, Brace Girl, when you were 15, you'd have probably been spouting the same absolute bilge at uh, people. Next delivery on its way and it's blocked. He's fishing. He's after a trout. 281 for one. Yeah, I suppose the extra drinks breaks have, uh, <laughs> haven't helped here today, have they? But, no. Well, or the length <laughs> of the drinks breaks, at least. I would imagine they've helped the oh, players. I didn't think of that. No, it's not a normal day. Oh, I long for the days of 25 degrees. <laughs> 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 drop to 35 tomorrow. Yeah. Next ball on its way and Amid drives into the offside and uh, it's no longer Anuj Dell there 
cutting out that Amid drive. It's Wayne Madsen with a decent stop. No Billy Godleman in this game, so uh, I won't be call calling him Kerry Godleyman like I, I usually end up doing. <laughs> I think the last the last time the last time he played against Knotts, I, I binge watched all the Taskmasters that she was on. I think the the nights before this one's clipped to mid on, and there's no run. What a show that is, by the way. Taskmaster. Oh, yeah. love it! Absolutely love it. Yeah. Can't get enough, and I did. I was late to it, so I like you. I've been binge catch watching. Up, catch up, yeah. Absolutely sensational. Yeah, that's pointing. The relationship between Greg Davis and Alex Horn is yes, just, it's sensational. Isn't yeah. it? Greg Davis is a very funny man. He is indeed. Two eighty-one for one. One ball left in this over. Seven legitimate deliveries to go until T, unless a wicket goes down. Not from this ball, it doesn't. Amid defence, two eighty-one for one. And we're nearly there. Still just the six bowlers used. Uh, Anuj Dal has now leapt to the front. He's bowled 13 overs. Sam Connors, 12. Tens apiece for Aitchison, Scrimshaw and Reese And Matty McKeon pulling up the rear with eight overs. I said on that news bulletin, 39 degrees at East Midlands Airport. I haven't quite got to the magical 40 yet. I can remember saying that's 30 overs gone, seven of which were maiden. Now still seven maidens, 63 overs. So, uh, yeah. Can you remember me saying that? 30 overs gone, seven were maidens. Was, uh, it, that was at the time when I was still able to... I can't, re I can't remember everything you said today. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm it's perhaps me, as well. I'll do my best. It's but, perhaps as well. <laughs> yeah, 37 degrees here. What's this sort of madness there? Uh, it's on three on the leg side now as Dahl bowls. It's uh, pushed into the offside. Of course it is by... Ben Duckett to the only man out there who is Matty McKinn. So they've got uh, two mid-wickets and a square leg. They've also got a man out on the mid-wicket boundary and a mid-on. I put a photograph of your screen when <laughs> they were both nearing the hundreds. Uh, and Neil McLaren says, <laughs> for once, I thought you'd gone back to the old days of watching a game on CFAX. <laughs> yes, no, it does look a bit like it is a bit CFAX-like. It's, it's invaluable, but it is CFAX-like. Dahl again around the wicket, bowls to Duckett, who pushes this one up towards mid-off. Have you done that? Have you watched a, watched a game back in the day, either cricket or football on CFAX? I watched a game. It was Bath City in the, in, the national, in the conference, as it was then, and Halifax Town were in danger of being relegated out of the conference. And I watched a game at Bath City on a Thursday night on CFAX. You only pressed hold and then unhold, and it went round again. Mm. Yeah, I did that for 90 minutes. Cricket page was 340, wasn't it? It was football 302, 301, 302. Yeah, 302, 302 like I think, yeah. This next delivery is flicked away down the leg side. There isn't a man, oh, there is a man there. It's uh, Lewis Rees, I beg his pardon. And we get through for another single ducky moves to 137. 282 for 370 for the local sport. <laughs> Ed used to write it, apparently, which is why uh, nobody used to read it. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember once. We were, it's a long time ago. We were looking to go somewhere on holiday, and there were about 95 holiday pages. If you mm -hmm. Next delivery is <laughs> turned into the leg side by uh, Hamid for a single 283 for one. And we missed it, had to wait for it to come oh, all the yes. way around again. Yeah, if we didn't press that hold button, <laughs> press it, press it now, press it now. Oh, no, 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 I missed it. It was great, CFAX. <laughs> CFAX and Teletext, wasn't it? The, uh, the two rivals. What was Oracle? Was that Channel 4? Not sure. That was before Teletext, was it? Thank you, Ed. But there was all, all yeah. the old um, club call phone numbers to ring your football yeah. club. All the, uh, all the phone numbers were on there. Only £900 a minute. Yeah. There's <laughs> Dahl around the wicket. Full ball, driven by Duckett, but not time to Wayne Madsen at one of the mid-wickets. I don't know how, Dave, but we've got through the session. There's one ball left. I know, but the timing's awful, isn't it? Yeah. Because we're going to get a 15-minute break maximum yeah. before we have to do another update. 283 for one. It was 115 for one at lunch. Good thing is my thermometer's disappeared off the... Uh, I think I've sorted it. We've done the birthdays. We've done wrestling. What else have we done this afternoon? But we've nearly got there. Fred Carno. Fred Carno. Impresario. 
might have a little bit of Curly Larry and Mo after tea. Last ball of the session is driven but not timed by Ben Duckett out into the leg side and it is tea here at the county ground in Derby with Nottinghamshire on 283 for one. Ben Duckett leading the way. He's unbeaten on 137 and Hassi Pamid is 120 not out. So far for the second wicket they've added 237 and the number to look out for after T. Don't go anywhere because it's only 265, the record <laughs> partnership for Nottinghamshire against Derby. She's set here in 1991, so you're in with a chance of getting a little bit of history after T. And uh, you'll get that if you rejoin us in about 20 minutes' time.
cashed in. Their partnership currently worth 237 from 301 balls. Duck it 137 not out. He has been put down twice in the slip, Corden. Seba Mead, as far as I can tell anyway, he's uh, unblemished. Is 120 not out. I think Dave Fletcher thinks he might have tickled one behind that went down, but um, very hard to uh, discern from the commentary box. This partnership of 237 is closing in on one of record proportions. They need 28 more to match the feet of Tim Robinson and Paul Pollard on this ground in 1991. An extra little twist there in that Paul Pollard is one of the standing umpires. Just wonder if he might give an LBW or some such when they get within sight of uh, breaking his record. 283 for one. The, uh, the umpires are out there and they're looking <laughs> uh, around as if to say, well, where is everybody? Um, they won't be too thrilled, I don't think, um, that the players haven't immediately followed them out. But here come Derbyshire. You can understand their reticence a little bit. It's sweltering hot as it has been all day and uh, indeed in most parts of the country apart from Taunton, where they've had rain. And uh, a little bit more in store for Derbyshire. 32 overs more. Inconceivable to think that they're going to get any respite in this session with uh, not in such a strong position. 283 for one. Here you come. I was going to say, here come the, uh, the two batsmen. I can just see Asiba Mead coming out of the dressing room and now uh, Ben Duckett coming down the steps. So uh, probably two or three minutes away from play restarting. Dave just updating BBC Radio Derby listeners. I can tell you elsewhere, um, there's an ODI going on at Chesterley Street. South Africa, 307 for four in the 47th over against England century for Rassi van der Dusen. At Cheltenham, I'd imagine they've uh, finished for the day there. They uh, thought they were going to finish playing at uh, 4.30. Maybe they've got to get a specific number of overs in, but uh, Hampshire 203 for two against Gloucestershire in that one. Same at Wantage Road, they're going to finish round about 4.30 or whenever the overs are bowled. Northampton 207 for six against Lancashire. The other games all go through until 96 overs have been bowled. At T, where they've had a bit of rain at Taunton, Somerset 164 for two against Yorkshire. Essex uh, 199 for six at the oval against Surrey. Kent were bowled out at Edgbaston for 165 and Warwickshire a 76 for three in reply and the only other division two game is at Lords where Sussex are 211 for two. So we're about to start 283 for two. Matty McKinnon's going to get the first over of the post tee session. He's bowling to Asiba Mead who's on 120 and the oohs and ahs have started. Let's see how long they last. Uh, Mead blocking this first ball. Might have kept a whisker low. Decent delivery from McKinnon to begin the session. Yes, I don't think the oohs and ahs will last very long, if I'm entirely honest with you. McKinnon in again. This one a little shorter. Cut away by the Bolton Bradman. That's Eber Mead. Moves on to 121. So a career best for him. Is now just uh, one away from being equaled. 284 for one. Joe Clark doing next. The inform <laughs> Lyndon James. Oh, the inform Stephen Mullaney. <laughs> <laughs> and then Tom Moores, who missed the game last week with uh, a little bit of you know what. 284 for one. That's his first delivery after T to duck it. He's just. Defended on the leg side, fielded by Anand Dal, and there's no run. McKeonan, nice flight with that one. Tossed it up there, just uh, gave it every chance to turn a little bit, but it's a hard, true wicket. This pair, obviously very nicely set. Might just take an over or two to have a little look at the bowling again. McKeonan bowls and Duckett works it on the leg side. Dal does the fielding. 
No run. 65th over this, of course. So there are 31 to go after this. As Dave said, from a very early stage in the day's proceedings, we're going to be here till 7. 284 for one. Next delivery is again clipped as far as Anna Dahl. So that's tidy enough from Matty McKiernan. Just one from the over. He's nine overs, none for 38. And Mead is on 121. So uh, that opportunity of going past his career best in the next over. Well, come on, umpires. After tea, uh, after lunch rather, they had a, a bit of a chat and they changed the ball, didn't they? Now the umpires getting together I mean, another chat. Love to know what they were talking about. Just spent 20 minutes with the feet up. Do we know what the over rate is? Have they, uh, have they docked? Oh, yeah, minus three. Look on the uh, uh, on the board. Yeah. Yes. That's not good, really, is it? Minus three. It is on the board. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. But, but sometimes it says minus when it's plus on the board because they can't do a plus sign. Oh, can't they? No. This one's far more accurate. Well, why don't they just put three then? It's a terrific question. Aitchison begins <laughs> a new over from the city. I've no idea. From the city and is left alone outside the off stump by Hassi Pamid. And it goes through <laughs> through to the wicketkeeper. It's a good question, though. I must ask it sometime. <laughs> At uh, Spire Gardens last week, they had them in red and green. Yes. Red yeah. if you're in trouble, green if you're okay. Yeah. Well, on the on the scoreboard they've only got orange letters, orange mm. numbers, so that that would be that would be tricky. But next delivery is defended by Hamid, down into the ground and fielded by Aitchison off his own bowling. I like that because even I could work that out. Well, the numbers for the uh, the overrate on the Durham scoreboard are in the smallest yeah. font size yeah. you've ever yeah. seen in your yeah. life. I couldn't yeah. read it. Yeah. If it's working. <laughs> I couldn't read it. This next one's turned into the leg side by Hassi Pamid, who equals his highest score yeah. in first class cricket as he moves on to 122 from 195 deliveries. It's 285 for one. You wouldn't you wouldn't be at all surprised to see him still batting tomorrow morning and, and moving inexorably towards a double. I've seen uh four, five double centuries this season so far. Adrian Harms Ooh. has seen about eight. <laughs> Staggering, because he yeah. saw three here in the game yeah. against Sussex. Remarkable. So Aitchison is in a bowls to duck it, who just slaps that away down to backward point. On the boundary is uh, Harry Kame. I think I've only seen one. Slater got 225 at, uh, at Durham. I might only have seen four, actually. I've seen two from Shan Masood. Pajara get one here. Yeah, and uh, Tom Hain. Is it Tom Hain? Yeah. Yeah, who plays for Sussex. So they're all in the same game? Three in the same game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, three in the same game. Ridiculous. It wasn't a very good game either. This one is turned into the leg side. It started off a bit like this, really. <laughs> <laughs> and, and ended a bit like this. Oh, beg your pardon. That ball was played into the leg side by Ben Duckett, fielded by Matty McKinnon at mid-wicket. A word from Sam Connors to Aitchison as he comes in to complete his 11th over, and it's down the leg side and taken mm. by Brooke Guest, who throws it in the air. It's taken by Wayne Madsen. It's the end of an over, which can sort of the concession of two runs and not to move on to 286 for one. Yeah, it was crash bang wallop straight after uh, lunch, wasn't it? 28 from the first three overs. We've had two very quiet overs since T, single in each. It's that new ball, wasn't it? Changed ball mm. immediately after lunch. 1 1 5 for one when the ball was changed, so obviously it was because that's what the score was at lunch and they hadn't started. So here's McKiernan to bowl to duck it. Scored. Over 100 himself uh, between lunch and tea and gets his account up and running after the break. Just uh, sweeping McKinnon away fine for four. Mead was on 65 at lunch, 120 at tea. Duckett was on 30 at lunch, 138 at tea. So one to one for two. It's at a one for five this season against Leicestershire. But that's vulnerable now. Boundary will take him to his season's best. McKinnon bowls 
again to duck it. This one just came back on him a little bit. The left-hander pushes it out as far as Aitchison. 290 for one. That's 10 away from a third batting point. Derbyshire, a bit of work to do for their first bowling point of the match. Next one is dropped on the leg side and there's no run. Donald doing the fielding. Apparently there's a lot of grassland around London on fire at the moment. Which isn't good. Umpire at this end is James Middlebrook and Duckett again sweeps. But there is protection out there. Harry Kane does uh, really well. That's a good strong throw into the gloves of Brook Guest. Duck it onto one four three. And me back on strike. Field coming in a little bit, trying to save the one. It's as if they know he's in search of a single for a career best. McKinnon to bowl to a mead. And there it is. Clips it away behind square. And we'll be pleased with that. Obviously. Well, they closed in and then left a huge, yeah. gap, huge gap of square on the on side. Bizarrely. Third hundred of the summer for Seba Mead. Three also for Duckett. McKinnon bowls. Ben Duckett drives down the ground for a single. Well, he just pushes it down the ground for a single. It's all too easy. And just signs in that over that they had just moved out of second gear into third. 293 for one. We've had one wicket here all day. They've had 13 at Edgebaston. Mm -hmm. Didn't seem particularly fair. The other game in the second division has got Sussex on 213 for two against Middlesex in the early stages of the evening session there. Leicestershire Globorgan starts tomorrow. And Durham, presumably because they've got a one-day international today, aren't playing this week. South Africa, 327 for five in the final over of their 50. That's the first ball of a new Aitchison over is pushed into the offside up towards mid-off by Ben Duckett. And uh, Sam Connors is going to swap places now with George Scrimshaw. Scrimshaw was at cover. That's where Connors is now. Scrimshaw has gone to mid-off. Aitchison... In and bowls on the on the leg stump or outside the leg stump, and the ball just run away off the pads of Ben Duckett for four leg buys. There was an ooh. They didn't add, <laughs> add the R to it, but there was an ooh. Has there ever been a pop group, the oohs and the R's? It must have been a song, you would have thought, but I don't recall a group. We did the pub quiz in Durham on the Sunday night. Had we been sober, we might have done better, as this <laughs> next one is pushed up to mid on by <laughs> Ben Duckett, fielded by Lear's Deploy. Where was that at? The hostelry just over the bridge? No, no, we were, we were just, just on the, on the, the, uh, the big chain of uh, hostelries. Yes. On the, yeah, yeah, just on the, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, just over the bridge ish. And it just used to be just over the bridge, but there's now so much building going on. There's a lot, lot of yeah. stuff there, yeah, a lot of stuff. This next one is again on the pads, and again it goes mm. down the leg side for a leg by this time. Just the one. Didn't have the legs, pardon the punt, to get all the way to the boundary. 298 for one. And then on the Monday night, it was uh, rock and roll bingo. It was all go. What? <laughs> Rock and roll bingo. What on earth is that? You know, it's just, they played some songs, told us what oh. they were, and we ticked them off on a bingo card. It was all fairly, uh, fairly routine. We didn't win that either. This next one is defended by Hassi Pamid up towards mid on. And there's no run. 50 years ago today, Sylvia's mother was number one for Dr. Hook. Dr. Hook, yeah. I heard that. Why did I hear that yesterday? No idea. It was probably in the Radio? office. I was, yeah, it was in the <laughs> office all day. That's probably the most likely, isn't it? This one's cut away by Hassi Bami down to backward point. There is a fielder out there. It's Lewis Reese. They come back for a second as he tumbles in stopping the ball from reaching the boundary. And Hassi Bami moves on to 125. And the 300 is up, unless I've gone too early. Yes, it is. The 300's up for Nottinghamshire. 300 for one. The partnership 
is now at 254. 67 overs and five balls. Another batting bonus point to Nottinghamshire. End of the over. Took it 144. I mean, one, two, five. Do you still have a radio show then for the BBC Radio Derby listeners playing your tunes through the winter? No. You did that for a while, didn't you? Well, I've, I've done I've done different programmes, yeah. Yeah, I did a very good rock show, but it was... A very never, good rock show. It was never never recommissioned for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's McKinnon bowling to the left-handed duck it. Again, exercising and executing. And any other word you want beginning with X um, gets it away on the leg side for a single... I meant to say executing then from the start and came yeah, out as well, exercising. Yeah, executing would, would have been better. Yeah. The board has uh, frozen the, uh, the scoreboard away to our oh, right, which is, yeah. uh, which is ironic on the hottest day of the year. As uh, Amid pushes this into the offside, shall we, shan't we? They decide to go for a single. Dull tipped it over the bar and deflected it away from Sam Connors. I still do... Um a number of sports scenes, six till seven, as the uh, fourth member of the two-man sports team. <laughs> Afternoon, Gareth, if you're listening. Next delivery is uh, defended by Ben Duckett, who's on one four five. This is going to um, necessitate a reboot, isn't it? We've seen that before here, switching the old board yeah, off. Switch it off and switch it on again. Yeah. McKinnon. Hold to Ben Duckett. Cuts this away into the offside. That may, says he, just hedging his bets, may not go. <laughs> Doesn't feel it by Hilton Cartwright. And they come back for two. So Duckett's got a snooker maximum on the board. A 147. 304 for one. Partnership worth two five eight. What do we need to be looking for? Two six four, was it? Mm, two six five. Next one is uh, played away by Duckett. A cry of no, respecting the athleticism of Arnold Dal there, really, when there was no need to, because Dal was a long way from it. According to the main board, it's still two ninety three for one. According to uh, to Dave's screen, it's three hundred and four for one. My screen's right. Final ball of the over. McKinnon bowls and slapped down the ground by Duckett dismissively. Gets another single. High percentage of his runs, as I always say, come from the final ball of the over. He's always eager to take that six ball single, 305 for one. And he's off his snooker maximum and he's on to 148. You look at Lewis Reese, he's definitely pinker now than he was when he started the day. <laughs> I didn't really look at him at the start of the day, to be fair. But he was wearing one of those muscle vests as he walked out to do it. He went into the nets in just like a vest top. And uh, I think he's pinker now than he was at the start of the day. I think I am. Well, this is no floppy sonnets out there. This, Hello. Is, this is the Derbyshire problem. It's Ben Aitchison beginning a new over from the city end, and it's whipped through uh, the extra cover region for four runs by Ben, ben Duckett. That's glorious. It was chased by Lear's deploy up to a point. And then he just allowed it to go. Well, he didn't allow it, but it went to the boundary. The uh, 150 up for Ben Duckett. I'm, I'm not a big fan of 150s. You're not. They, they don't count for anything, do they, really? <laughs> well, they don't, there's no... There's a, you know, if you get a double century, brilliant. If you get half century, century, double century, and then triple. And Do we know how many, book, how many fours? Save me looking. Uh, that was his 23rd. I'll make a note of it. Go on, Thank then. you. What the hell? Aitchison bowls and he plays a rather ugly looking shot there, Ben Duckett this time. It goes out to the offside, he looks at the handle of his bat, he wasn't 100% happy with that shot. And nor should he have been. 181 balls? <laughs> it says, yeah, absolutely, I don't know why I'm... As if he cares what I think, but he didn't look happy and it wasn't a particularly pleasant looking shot either. Ben, you should hear what Fletcher's saying about you. I think he'd agree with me there. That's better. He's just slapped it in front of square for four runs. He's been chased down by Harry Kame, who won't get there. And uh, four more to Duckett, who's yeah. hit a couple of boundaries in this over. That was a nice shot, because it was a sort of cut shot, but more of a slap, and it was in front of square. But that was a much, much better shot. He moves to 156, 313 for one. The partnership is worth 267, which means it's a new record. 
A record partnership for the second wicket for Nottinghamshire against Derbyshire. Paul Pollard and Tim Robinson here in 1991. Aitchison bowls and that's clipped into the leg side. There's a chase on here for Hilton Cartwright. He gets there. They come back for two more. 315 for one. Lots of V Derbyshire. That's what I want to write there. So the old record was 265. And one of the men who was part of that partnership, some piring at the far end, Aitchis and Bowles. And uh, this time there is no run, which is a blessed relief. Both, in fact, both of those men are first class umpires now, aren't they? Tim Robinson, we see him on the circuit as well. Peterson features in two of the record stands. Next delivery is pushed out. It's the offside by Ben Duckett, fielded there by Sam Connors. And the over comes to an end. So a mere 26 remain in the day now, 315 for one. Nottinghamshire, Duckett has 158. And Hasib Hamid has 126. And 150 is must count for something because Jane's announcing the numbers. I don't think they do. And that's at least 40 overs since a maiden. We've now had 70, still seven maidens. Second new ball just around the corner. What are you doing, Coach Fletcher? Are you taking it as soon as it becomes due? Yeah, might as well. And who are you giving it to? They've probably already paid for it, haven't they? I'd give it to Scrimshaw, personally. I get a bit of bounce. Here's McKiernan. Connors will get it as well. Duck it 158. Meads on strike on 126. One slip, Wayne Madsen. And uh, Mead blocking as if it was the second over of the morning. I think the main question tonight to any of the, which whoever we speak to will be, what was that like? And uh, that'll do for the clip for tomorrow morning. And I can say uh, thanks very much and uh, go and get yourself an ice bath. There might be an expletive or two that you've got to uh, delete. Lovely shot from a Mead. It was a full toss, to be fair. Bowling's not... You know, this is this is going to sound uh, a real backhanded compliment, but the bowl has not generally been that bad. We, you know, full, no. full tosses, we can count on one hand. But, I mean, that was you know a, no. a loopy, floaty one that might just have been clipped straight to the fielder, but it wasn't. But it's not been that bad throughout the day. They've kept no, at they've it. kept at it. I mean, they've kept at it. Wasn't prevented them from going at uh, no, no. four and a half and over. Unfortunately. But this is Derbyshire against Nottinghamshire, and you sort of get used to it after a while. 319 for one. You're sounding like Chris Coles. <laughs> Here's McKeonan to bowl to Hamid. Oh, a little bit of turn there. Might have uh, just come back. Bring to Hamid. Uncharted territory then for Hasib Hamid on 130. Emergency. Service vehicles going past the ground. Another elegant looking drive by Amid, but only as far as mid off. Boards um, going again. I didn't notice if it had been switched off or it just sorted itself out, but we're, uh, we're back with the correct score again. Next delivery again, driven by Amid on the bounce back to McKiernan. Long for 54 for Matty McKiernan. One ball left in his 12th. Tough first day in the office for Mears Deploy. Mead pushes through the offside. He'll get one, He'll keep strike. 320 for one. Partnership 274. Mead on 131. Duck it on 158. I think it's all going terrifically well. Uh, <laughs> dear oh. Dear oh dear. The doors is coming back. Glutton for punishment. That's his new nickname. Uh, Mark Beck says the fear is while Knotts look like a side full of runs, Derbyshire may look like a side missing Masood. Well, it says again, I hope not, but I'm not sure. I mean, they haven't, they, they've missed him, clearly. You would miss anybody uh, who scored a, a thousand runs in the championship, but I think they've been all right. I have no idea what that song is at all. Oh, I think it's girls. Is it Little Mix or Girls Aloud? Help me out here, Jack Timon. Sing it to me. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Something about a secret potion. Would that be a little mix? You know about these things, don't you? You're, you're, that's it. That's exactly it. It's a little mix, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. They sang it here. Well, they would do. Yes, they played here at the county ground. Beat Derbyshire by an innings in 30. <laughs> I, I do like that joke. It's one of my favourites. That, that, that was last season when <laughs> Dave Houghton was here. I hastened to add his. Lewis Rees beginning a new over. Pushed out to the offside by Hassie for me. There's no rum. I've not heard that. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I might do it with Michael Bublé in future. But... Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> It's no wonder he didn't like me. Hey, Michael Bublé. No, Dave Hunt. <laughs> Just hasn't met you yet. Reese is in again and bowls to Hamid, who pushes this up to mid on, and there is no run. I'd hate to be a next, wouldn't you? Because well, you've sat here and watched. Ordinarily, him. I would, but as soon as it's Joe Clark, <laughs> I don't think we're going to see anything different. To what we've already seen, because he's such a fine cricketer. But uh, what I'm saying is, yeah. you've sat there with Padrash all day. Well, he'd have had it on from the very start. You'd have thought mm. the number four batsman generally mm. would pad up at the very start of the day. So, yeah, absolutely. Reese bowls wide of the off stump, full, driven out into the offside by Hamid out towards Hilton Cartwright for a single. He's up class, Hamid. He's worked hard at his innings. I just think he's such a good cricketer. Mm. Such a good cricketer. And, well, I've said it many times when we've been doing Nottinghamshire games. I'm slightly biased because I didn't watch him grow up, clearly, but he's from my neck of the woods and you used to hear all sorts of stories about him when he was a, just a young man. He went to Bolton School and scored pals of runs there. He was out all weathers with his dad he, on tennis courts. and He's not going to get selected in the wilderness of the second division, though. Nicely put, Ed. I wish I'd thought of that. Just thought I'd chuck that in. And that's a lie, obviously, because of Potts and... Uh... Stokes. Well, yeah. Reese Bowles, that's defended into the on side by Ben Duckett, and there's no run. I was really in, impressed with Potts. I went to the first day at Headingley. Mm. He just runs and runs and runs and runs. Um, yes, I think Durham fear they're not going to see much of him from no, here on in. No. Until his England career comes to an end. Here's Reese. They've got two mid wickets in. Both with their hands on their knees at the moment. Reese bowls to Ben Duckett, who clips it out and towards the towards the mid-wicket boundary where Hilton Cartwright does the fielding. Derbyshire have got plenty of batting. Harry came, plenty to prove. Lewis Reese hasn't had the greatest of seasons, so he's got to come good at some point. Madsen's been in good nick. Deploy got a couple of hundreds last week. Brooke Guest batting at three, got a century last week. Hannah's Dahl's in terrific nick. Hilton Cartwright's not a bad batsman either, as this next delivery is just guided backward and square on the offside by the, the thing about Hamid. The thing about it is, though, you've, you've spent probably the hardest day of your career, yeah. the hottest day ever, in the field chasing leather. And when it comes to the draining and exhaustion mm. that that... You're right. Mm. Yeah, we've got 24 overs to go here, Ryan. Nottinghamshire continuing to bat. They're 322 for one now. We've got past the old record for the second wicket, which was set back in 1991 by Tim Robinson and Paul Pollard. And Paul Pollard is one of the umpires standing in this game today. So he's been dis wiped out of the record books by Ben Duckett and Hasib Hamid. Duckett's on 159. Hamid is on 132. The partnership now worth 276. And Nottinghamshire going well. They're 322 for one. That one was swept by Duckett for a single down to the backward square leg boundary. Can I shock you? Go on. I don't think we've had a ball change, have we? Yes, we had one immediately after lunch. Ah, uh, I was hiding. Yeah, immediately after lunch. Before a ball had been bowled, they showed the ball what? to the umpires. And we spent three minutes changing the ball. Let's all sit on it. <laughs> that's, exactly, that's exactly what Dave <laughs> said. Left it in the pocket. Yeah. It's it it's got out of shape. Uh, that one was pushed into the offside by Hamid. No run. Well, considering how you were on about it at Durham, I'm surprised at that. I'm surprised. But Derbyshire looked after the ball well in the second innings at Durham as well. This one, as he goes back into his crease, Hamid is defended back towards Matty McKinnon, who's in his... Well, his name's so long, his name runs into his numbers, but he's into his 13th over... 
Matty McKinnon have to make his name slightly smaller on the scoreboard. In goes McKinnon again, and this one's driven, but straight to Sam Connors at extra cover. They will take the new ball in seven overs and two balls time. I don't think there's any question about that. And it will be Scrimshaw and Connors who have it in their hands, I think. Unless Dahl has it. That one is defended by Hamid. Back to McKinnon, who gives it straight to Big George. Polishes it on the front of his shirt for no apparent reason. It's 73 overs old. I said this one might not be, of course, because it was swapped in the after 29 overs. He might have moisture there. Yes, he might. He might have moisture in between his abs. I presume he's got abs. He will. He's got more chance than I have. That one is defended and there's no run. It's the end of the over. 323 <laughs> for one. Duckett has 160. Hamid has 130. I think I've got abs. But, you just can't see them. Yeah, but like me, you can use the moisture in the belly button reservoir. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm not sure that's a good idea. It's not. No. <laughs> the, look, the look in the face from next door. <laughs> <laughs> so they can hear us then. Goodness. You're listening, are you? Yeah. Belly, oh, yeah. it's, a, it's a thing, belly button reservoir. Here comes Lewis Reese at the start of a new over from the City, Eddie Bowles. It's driven back up the pitch to mid-on by uh, Ben Duckett. 160 not out. And good value for everyone. Yeah. Well, we've got to talk about something, haven't we? That's the thing. I've always wondered where the belly button fluff comes from and why is it only men that get it? Sorry? Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Reese on his way again and he's driven that off the back foot up to mid off and no run there plenty of cars leaving the car park plenty of action on the uh, Pentagon roundabout and uh, all sorts of roaring of modes of transport coming across the city of Derby you can certainly tell the effects Mike's working properly now Reese again on his way left arm over the wicket he bowls, and that's uh, an outside edge, that is. False shot, really. He's going to get a couple of runs for it, is Duckett. Come back for a second. As uh, the fielding is done by... Uh, Harry Kame. Harry Kame on that far side. See, I can see perfectly the entire field to our left, and you can see perfectly the entire field to our right. Mm. That's how we got to... Divvy up the commentary and wherever they hit the ball. Here's Reese again bowling this time. Just Yours. Defended <laughs> <laughs> to uh, Wayne Madsen, who's uh, shining the ball on the back of his thigh. Very intently. Getting every last moment out of this ball, which has uh, just over six overs to go. Oh, it's hot. I thought I didn't notice, but now you mentioned it. Now you mentioned it. Here again. he comes again, Reese bowling, and again in no trouble whatsoever. It's like batting on your driveway with a tennis ball. It's driven back up the pitch once more. Three hundred and twenty-five for one, Nottinghamshire. I let myself get excited once when Derbyshire played knots at Trent Bridge. Remember that game where they scored loads and then Derbyshire nearly caught it. In the 2020, I think it was. Here's Reese again bowling. A bit more effort into that ball. Flicked away through mid wicket for one. And uh, I think it's, uh, is it substitute fielder with his floppy hat on? Unless it's a fan who's come out of the stand. There's the fielding. Score moves on to 326 for one at the end of the 74th over. Duckett, 163. Hamid, 132. Just get my instructions for tomorrow. It seemed very complicated to me, but there we go. Some kind of, I don't know if anybody knows about this or I'm allowed to say anything, so I don't know whether to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Oh, some, it's thingy. Some kind of joint broadcast between Radio Derby and Five Live tomorrow evening between five and six, so it'll be uh, Sally Pepper and Tony Livesey, <laughs> which is exactly how it should be in the world. Absolutely, I told her this yeah. is an audition. Uh, well, don't say that because the, Tony Livesey specifically asked to speak to me. Which is very, very terrifying. I love Tony Livesey. I it's love it as a broadcaster. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've plenty to talk about. I've got to set up a whole second ISDN in here tomorrow morning. Right. So I can speak to him and not disturb the commentary online. 
It's this next delivery, or the first delivery of a new over from Matty McKinnon is punched into the leg side by Ben Duckett. He moves on to 164, 327 for one. But there's some complications with the bulletins throughout the day. So uh, I've just received my instructions from one of our bosses. Very exciting. It's cost of living hour, apparently, mm. as far as I'm aware. Yeah, no I, and I, I'm the light relief. <laughs> Why do you think I'm here today? <laughs> <laughs> That's harsh. McKeon and Bowles on the leg stump, turned into the leg side by Hassi Pamir. He's going to come back for a second quite comfortably. It's a man with a floppy sun hat, so that must be Mitch Wagstaff, who's on the field again, acting as 12th man. Tall, Mitch. I don't remember him being that you know tall what? last season, but Look he's pretty him. tall. He's holding his right arm there. Do you know what he's done? He's, he's thrown, done, he's thrown yeah. his arm. Yeah. Oh, it's, you do that in the nets in January yeah. when you're bowling and your arm comes... Oh, it hurts. He featured in the Royal London... Uh, competition last season and hopefully he'll feature in it again this there'll be a good opportunity from that one's driven on the bounce straight to Anna's Dahl who rings out his hand that one hurt you know my thing from earlier one hand one bounce when it gets to a certain that level would have been of partnership it, it? that would have been it well if he'd have done it one hand yeah I think that's, that's the future McKeon in again this one is guided straight to uh, Sam Connors this time I just get the impression here that well, A, it's very difficult to take wickets, but it's a little bit like, dare I say, declaration bowling at times. Oof, so well, it's, a big, it's a big thing to say, I but think, I think that's harsh. it's not harsh. But what I'm saying is it's so difficult to take a wicket. What can you do? The match, I don't know if you were, were you in the box when I was telling, talking to Dave about the game here between uh, uh, Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire in which that 265 run no it wasn't that one at all it was the the 372 unbroken sixth wicket stand Derbysh and Nottinghamshire here in 2001 it was a four day game as in comes uh, as reverse sweeps come out now and he swept it hard for four runs out to mid wicket Mitch Wagstaff on this occasion stood absolutely no chance of getting there it's four more to Duckett who moves to 148 and it's 334 for one in that game Kevin Peterson scored a double century I think it was um Oh God, I'm sticking to everything now as well. I hate that. Don't you hate that? Yeah, I do. 218 not out. Kevin Peterson scored for not seeing that game. It's 334 for one at the end of the over. But the, the scoring went Nottinghamshire 526 in 118 overs. Derbyshire 572 in 149. Nottinghamshire 557 for five declared in 128. And everybody shook hands and went home. And it's, it's if Derbyshire bat properly, this has got the feeling of that. But having said that, when you look at the uh, the Nottinghamshire bowling lineup, Luke Fletcher, Dane Patterson, James Pattinson, Patterson White, Stephen Mullaney, if required, it, it, yeah, it's awkward. Restarts a new over from the city end. Forward comes Hamid, and he just dabs that out into the offside. No run, heavily offside field. Harry Kane is windmilling his arms. I don't think he's bowled a ball in any form of senior cricket. What I'm saying, mm. just to get myself out of your, ooh, that's harsh. Yeah, go on. When it comes to a partnership of 288, it's very difficult to not go through the motions as a fielding side and try and get to the close of play, isn't it? Yes. Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Reese again in, and he's just dabbing that one out backward of uh, points. He's still hitting the back quite hard there, Lewis Reese, with, with that delivery. So, you know, I know what you're saying, and there's no suggestion that Darwish's bowlers have given up. But no, uh, no. Subconsciously, you're thinking, well, we're never going to get a wicket. How on earth are we going to and, dislodge one of these two? And, and you are exhausted mentally and physically. I am, you're right. No, no, <laughs> no, no, yeah, you are. Of course you are. You know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Reese on his way again. He bowls outside the off stump and forward comes to me, defending that to Wayne Madsen, who's at a short cover, catching position. There's a mid-off and an extra cover, backward point. Is it? Yeah, backward point. No slips. There's a man down at third man. There's a man at mid wicket and. Yeah, there's a little fine leg. There's a fine someone leg. Someone else missing. Fine leg. Yeah. Way to our left. Here comes Reese. That's the umpire. Bowls. Driven. Not got all of that for Samid. Stopped at cover. No run. Just rings his hand out. And Samid. That's where the vibration went up his bat. Somebody's clapping. Ben Aitchison, <laughs> to our right, he's the designated clapper. He's also got acknowledgement from, I think, Sam Connors at extra cover. 
You've got to keep yourselves going, haven't you? Well, that, that's my point yeah. entirely. You've you just got to try and entertain yourselves. Bowling again, driven again. Madsen short stops the ball and then turns to see if Duckett had sauntered down the pitch out of his ground. No run. But the Derbyshire batsmen have got to go in with the mindset that, well, look, this is what Knotts have done. Two or three of our batsmen come off as well. And could it be easier to bat on tomorrow because it's been baked and it won't be as hot tomorrow? Yeah. Might be easier to bowl, though. <laughs> oh, well, that's the thing, isn't it? Here's Lewis Reese again bowling outside the off stump. Shoulders, arms, does uh, Hamid through to the wicket keeper. No run under the over. 76 overs completed now. 334 for one. And uh, Reese's. Not for 46 off 13 overs. Duck it 168. Um, I made 135. A maiden over. The first one since the 30th. Yeah, a maiden over. Remarkable. They're going to have a drinks break, but unfortunately the 12 men aren't ready for the drinks break, but that's what they're going to do here. So uh, give me an opportunity to uh, read through a couple of scores in the uh, One Day International at Chester Street. South Africa made 333 for five. Having won the toss and decided to bat first. Um, I'll do some first division scores, although they're of no consequence to either of these two sides, of course. Uh, Hampshire, 203 for two against Gloucestershire at Cheltenham, having uh, decided to bat first. Somerset, who uh, decided to bat first, 194 for two against Yorkshire, but it has been raining in Taunton, remarkably. Essex, 229 for eight. They batted first against Surrey after winning the toss. Warwickshire. Uh, well, then 90 for three, trailing Kent by 75. 13 wickets have fallen in the day at Edgebast, and Kent 165 all out. Sussex 247 for two, because Middlesex decided to bat first when they won the toss at Lords. What on earth they were thinking of, I've no idea. Uh, and it's Stumps, uh, well, it must have been Stumps at, uh, in one of the other games as well. Where's the game at Cheltenham? Where is it? There it is. No, it isn't. Where is the game at Cheltenham? It's disappeared. Is it not live in progress? Oh, no, it was Stumps, Hampshire, 203 yeah. for two. Um, and the other one that, that they reached Stumps at is at Wantage Road after 72 overs where Northamptonshire are 218 for seven against Lancashire. They chose to bat first there as well. There's uh, other games going on of, of little consequence. David Cl Griffin was saying that one of the games, they're doing a number of hour and a half sessions. Games at Cheltenham and at Northampton, yeah, they're the ones that they stopped after 72 hours. They're going to make them up half an hour extra on each of the next three days. Well, we wouldn't get away till 8 o'clock if that happened here. Plus, they didn't finish until half past four, by which time it would have been fairly warm anyway. Uh, yeah. A huge game in the uh, T20 World Cup sub-regional Europe qualifier Group A. Serbia played Croatia today. Uh, Croatia won that one by three wickets. I love these. Isle of Man have lost to Italy. Why would the Isle of Man be playing Italy? Finland beat Cyprus and Sweden beat Romania. They say it's not a world game. Mainly because it isn't. Bowling change. Spinner with shades on, which means he means business. Harry came. Uh, you said it. Well, I did, but I don't think he's ever bowled in first-class cricket. Let's have a look. You I don't know what he is. He's a spinner, obviously, but Harry Kane's going to bowl. Well, let's have a look. With those cool-looking shades. Mm. I want to speak to him at the close. That was all right, wasn't it? That was all right. Yeah. Is it my over? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that was all right. <laughs> Full delivery. Got it uh, pretty much on target. You sure it's mine? No, it doesn't matter. Uh, I had Reese, didn't I? Okay. This next delivery is a full toss and it's swept away for four runs. That wasn't quite as okay as the first one, uh, sadly, for Harry. And uh, a boundary is scored by Ben Duckett. He moves to 172, 338 for one. Three overs after this until the new ball. Why isn't Wayne Madsen not bowled? Don't know. Perhaps. Somebody said, can we find somebody who wants to bowl two overs from the race course? And then Harry Kame's gone, well, I've done nothing all season. I'll have a go. He bowls now, and that one is uh, chopped away into the offside. Missed by Wayne Madsen at backward point as he went sliding <laughs> towards the ball. Eventually fielded by Hilton Cartwright. Single taken by Duckett, 173. To him, 339 for one. 
the partnership 293 ouch mm. well, this is where you just need a bit of luck isn't it you need to keep banging home with the basics bang home those basics absolutely you're not wrong it does it's going to go over the wicket to uh, Hasib Hamid In he comes, balls to Hamid, who drives him, tries to hit the cover off it, which isn't possibly the best thing to do, and it's fielded down below us by uh, Leas Deploy. East Midlands Demolition Stand looks like the coolest place in Derby now, look. Yeah. It's so in the shade. I think it always was. Well, that's interesting. Uh, this next one, well, it's not that interesting, but that's a good piece of fielding by Harry came off his own bowling. It was uh, pushed into the onside by Ben Duckett. The highest score for any... Third wicket stand against Derbyshire is 351. This one is currently 294. Well, it's 295 now as Duckett pushes it out into the offside, fielded by Nick Potts. And it's the end of the Harry Kame over. His first, I'm delighted to tell you if I can find it, his first, I think, in first class cricket. Harry Robert Charles uh, came here from Hampshire, of course. Bowling had never bowled in any form of cricket at senior level before that over. You've witnessed a bit of history there, Ed does. Harry Robert Charles. Harry Robert Charles came. He's a cricket club in his own right. Yes. Lewis Rees will continue from the city end. Two short catches on the leg side and a long on. No, mid, long, mid on even. Anyway. Reese bowls, and he punches that into the boundary on the leg side for a single and moves to 175. You know, when I exclaimed, that's interesting, and they never said anything else after that, the interesting thing is that the high score for the... Oh, no, that's the third wicket. This is the second wicket. It's 344. So they have a chance, and that was set in 1900 at Edgebaston. It was the third wicket I saw this season between uh, Tom Haynes and Chiteshwa Pajara for Sussex. That was 351 in a very much drawn game. Hamid on strike. Here comes Lewis Rees, bowling outside the off stump and a thick edge down to third man. Potts is the fielder down there. Go through for a single. Potts is the 12th man for. Oh, no. I won't say that. That means I'm going to have to start looking to see who's not on the field. Where's McKinnon? I think it's McKinnon. No, he's at mid-on. So if he's at mid-on, where's George? I think, it's, I think it's George Scrimshaw. To the top of his mark, and he sets up, off, bowls, taking off the hip round the corner. It's not, he's at third duck man. It. He's at third single. man. 175 to duck it. 344 for one. Oh, not Ed, why did you say that? two and a half overs until the new ball, which will, of course, take nine wickets before the close. Connors is there. Aitchison. Ooh, where's Aitchison? Oh. He's at uh, he's at extra cover. Oh. No, that's no, that's Wayne Madsen. Is he having a bit of a breather? Could be. Reese on his way again, bowling left outside the off stump by Hamid. Another siren round the Pentagon Island. No, heard by Aitchison. He's just passed it rugby style. His dad will be embarrassed by that. Another ambulance on its way. Director of Rugby at Waterloo Rugby Club. Is it? His dad was, I think. I don't think he is anymore, but he was. Yeah. Some real confirmed that to me by the medium of uh, social media. Here is Reese again, bowling to Hamid. Straight to delivery. Punch back up the pitch to Madsen. And, of course, slightly more pertinently, his, uh, his sister, sister, Holly, uh, plays for England. Rugby in Saracens in England. Mm. I assume we should play in the Commonwealth Games. Is it in the Commonwealth Games? I think Rugby Sevens is, so she might be in that squad. Sporting Famiel. Mm. Reese. You can hear the tapping of Hamid's bat as he bowls now. And he just knocks that into the onside to the man. Short mid wicket, there's no run. Perhaps Ben should play rugby and Holly should play cricket. That's cruel, isn't it? That's cruel. But that rugby pass with the cricket ball from Ben Aitchison was poor. That was poor. 
End of the over, 344 for Knots. One wicket down, 176 for Duckett, 137 for Hamid, partnership of 298. And we're going to get the second coming of Kame. Yes, we are. Yes. And then... That'll be him. Yeah. I don't think he's going to get a third over. The, the over rate's still minus three. It doesn't generally get changed till the end of each session. Hmm. That's the modern way. I don't, I don't believe in all this over eight nonsense anyway. But Harry came around the wicket, bowls to Ben Duckett, who just guides this one out to the point boundary. And there's a single taken as it's fielded there by Hilton Cartwright. He's easy to spot Hilton Cartwright no matter where he's on the pitch because he always has a white bandage on his right hand. Very useful. I think everybody should have something that distinguishes them. There's the ploy. He's got the elbow bandages. Ed's got his remarkable hat. Very brave. It's clouding over. It is, yes, it's going to chuck it down. Harry Kame is in, and that one is played off the back foot out into the leg side. Aitchison reaches it. And uh, they take another single. And the applause is for the 300 partnership, which comes off of 387. It's a great batting day for these two, isn't it? It really is. They've looked so in control. The odd chance has been dropped by Derbyshire, but they've looked so in control about the whole thing. And Derbyshire's bowlers have toiled in the sun. Came bowls. That one is guided out into the offside. Perhaps the worst drop now looks like that one when he was on 24, Ben Duckett, doesn't it, really? Mm. Yeah, because he very quickly got himself in yeah. and started manoeuvring the ball through the gaps in the field. 89 for one at that stage. Came's in again, bowls to Duckett, who goes back into his crease, guides it out into the offside, picks up a single, moves to 178, 347. There just doesn't Four. seem to be anything that the bowlers are able to do. You know, we had that early moment with that patch on the wicket or that area where there was a bit of extra nip in it. But since lunch, it's just flattened. Well, that patch has disappeared virtually, yeah. hasn't it? Mm. In bowls, that one is driven down the ground by Hamid towards Lear's deploy. There's so little urgency from anybody at the moment. We're just working our way to the uh, new ball here. And bless him, Harry Kame is one of the sacrificial lambs. The youngster. How old is he? 23, almost 24 now. So not that young. Bowls, that's a full delivery that's uh, punched down the ground by Ben Duckett. We're at the single. And he moves on to 179. So the final over with the old ball will have uh, 17 overs to go, which will take us through until, I don't know, quarter to seven. So uh, I'm afraid, Colin, if you're listening, no chance of getting any uh, post-match reaction. You'll have to talk to me instead. I could try and do what we did down at... Uh, that, that worked quite well down at... Well, up at Chester Street. Yeah, well, when I take the... Uh, do the Lucy live on the phone and use it as a microphone and put the earbuds in. I can, I can use it as a... It works quite well, that, yeah. doesn't it? Technical yeah. conversation. Always like a bit oh, of production on air. Absolutely right. <laughs> there is what looks to be a crow um, resting on the side screen. And there oh, it goes. Yeah. And Oop. now it's disappeared completely. Lewis restarts a new over from the city end. And he bowls to Duckett, who drives back up the pitch. He gets a finger on it. It's uh, diverted into the path of the man at mid-on. No run there. I think that's Lear's deploy, who's got uh, all the sorts of arm guards you need when you're diving around on dry pitches on the square. A rustling of paper. Is it that time already? Get in there. I did my hamstring in the office yesterday. Blimey. Sit at a desk. <laughs> Reese on his way again, and it's smashed. Cut for four. It's a great shot. And it's a shot of a man who has just had a cigar on for most of today, hasn't he, at the yeah. crease? 183 goes to now Ben Duckett. 353 for one. And he moves to within a 99 runs of his high score in first-class cricket. 282 not out his high score. I'm not sure you're going to get that tonight. Then. Not tonight. No. We'll get it at some point, though. No? Oh, there's a gust of nice, fresh air just gone over my shoulder. There is uh, quite a lot of cloud building 
Nothing threatening, but it's just taking the heat off a little bit. Here's Reese. Up to the wicket now, down the leg side. Hits him either on the toe of the bat or on the foot. I think it was the toe of the bat. And it dribbles into the possession of Wayne Madsen. No run. What are they playing? Come on, I'll guess it. Uh, I still haven't found you yet. What's that one? That's, uh, is it Harry Styles? On the weekend, I can't remember. Sing it. I just haven't found you. I just haven't found you. <laughs> <laughs> Reese on his way again, and he bowls, and that's flicked around the corner down to fine leg, where the man doing the fielding is Ben Aitchison, and they go through for a single. What a reckless throw, and he gets the eyes. He does, doesn't he? Give a real star, eyes, doesn't he? Uh, Give a real star. Forget that you're shattered and bowled 13 overs for 67. I want it over the top of the stumps. They go through for another single, 354 for one. Hamid, 39. Plus 100. Ben Duck at 184. It's Hamid on strike. Right hander facing the left arm over. Lewis Reese bowls and just defends that boycott style up the pitch. No run. It's about the only thing that has been boycott style. Oh, well. Imagine watching Jeff boycott all day. I've done it in the past, but. Not for me. There's a fight going on up there. This where? Up there. Oh. It's a crow and what looks to be like a another bird. Here comes Reese bowling outside the off stump forward. Comes Hamid. And that is a dot ball. And that is that it for is. that ball. And not before time, in all honesty. Overs. New ball will be taken if anyone's remembered to bring it. Oh well you'd hope they'd have it in the pocket, wouldn't you? Have they? Yeah, I think so. 354 for one, 184 for Duckett, 139 for Hamid. Partnerships 308, and Derbyshire need a wicket. Certainly do. Have they, got, have they got the new ball out there? Well, Harry Kane's going to carry on bowling. I don't think they've taken it. Temperatures there. are dropping rapidly here in Derby. It's down to 36. Yeah, from 39. <laughs> so they haven't taken the new ball. There's no signal. No, well, Harry Kane wouldn't be taking it. With no. the greatest of respect to Harry Kane, he wouldn't be taking it. Maybe they fancy it tomorrow morning. Perhaps the club have not bought one. This one's first delivery of a new over is uh, pushed. I've, I've seen a chap with an ECB shirt on. He's sure to have brought one, surely. I don't know. I don't want to get delivered to the club or not. I don't know how these things work. 354 for one. First delivery was a dot ball. Second one is just paddled around the corner by Ben Duckett. That might go all the way for four, you know. Wayne Madsen is chasing it, his hat falls off, and the ball crosses the boundary. 358 for one, the partnership to 312. His hat's fallen off in the middle of the B on that advert. It's oh, quite yeah. Impressive. That is impressive. That is impressive. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Brest girl's on his way back. Don't worry. You notice. That one is, uh, well, it looked like a sweep, but it was very much in front of square from Ben Duckett. It picks up a single, moves to 189, 359 for one. The game against Sussex. Sussex didn't take the new ball on day one. And Lauren Tuffery, who's with me, uh, with us tomorrow and Thursday, I turned to her, bless her, and said, would you take the new ball? She said, well, I've never played red ball cricket, which is a good point. I'm going to have an update fairly shortly. I don't know if you want to vacate, Ed, in a moment. Mm. If that's uh, within, within, the, within the remit, there's came bowls, and it's. I don't know what kind of spin he's bowling, if I'm honest. Um, if indeed it is spin. There's no run. 359 for one. Next delivery is defended by Hamid. Back towards Hurry Kemp. No run. <laughs> James on his way in again. His third over in senior cricket. As defended by Hamid. It's the end of the over. 81 overs gone now. Still no sign of the new ball. I think they've forgotten it. Hmm. I wonder if he came and went with his third over there. Oh, Three no, overs. See, no, he can't do that. He can't do that. They did that on the T20 <laughs> uh, last quarter final. Harry came and went, said Mark Butcher, as though it was an original thought. <laughs> 3.59 for one. 
you said you'd have taken it. The size of these numbers here, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Mm. Huge numbers. 189 off 215 balls for Ben Duckett. Matty McKinnon's coming back. 139 from 238 balls for Hassi Mead in the partnership. 313 off 403 balls. I assume you've tried all the normal routes for getting a wicket. Saying all the sensible things about Duckett nailed on for a double hundred and all that I sort of stuff. I just said he was 99 shy of his, <laughs> his highest score in first class cricket when he, when he reached that particular moment. But, nah. Gosh, he's played well. They it's both gonna, have. It's going to take more than me saying a few... Uh, a few things to get and either of these two batsmen out. I'm going to leave you with it for a moment okay. to go and do an update. It's Matty McKiernan. He's got most of his overs from our end of the ground. He's on at the city end now. Bowls to Duckett, who goes down on one near conventional sweep. Out to Aitchison, who spilled him hours and hours and hours ago when he was on 24. That slip. Two chances offered by Duckett on 24. Sam Connors was the unlucky bowler, and on 72, Lewis Rees found the edge. It was a short one. It went quickly, but Wayne Madsen would have expected, I'm sure, to have grabbed it. 360 for one. Knott's looking to apply the finishing touches to what's been a very good first day as Amid punches this into the offside, fielded by Dal. Still 14 overs after this one, so... Just go along at three and over. It should be over 400 comfortably this evening. This one turns away from the 25 year old opening bat. It's through to Brooke Guest. McKinnon is 15th over. None for 65, his figures now. Tosses it up and to me drives, cries of catch, just to the right of. Diving extra cover, a couple of runs taken. Need on to 141, 362 for one. Anuj Dal threw himself a long way there, couldn't get on the end of it. Need on to 141, duck it onto 190. Both have individual milestones, but whilst they're still striving to get them, Boost in the team effort. Next ball pushed back to Matty McKiernan. Here's McKiernan. Alls turns well away from Amid. Goes through to the wicket keeper. Umpire Paul Pollard says that's the over. We have 14 overs left. High's on the skipper, but now he's going to give Harry Kame another over. This will be his fourth. Seven bowlers used by the home county. The only wicket went down on midday when Anuj Dow found the edge of Ben Slater's bat and Brooke Guest took the catch. So duck it on 190. Just how will he control things from here? Again, it's Kame. Balls and uh, decent delivery, good length, a little bit of gentle turn. Duckett gives him every respect, gets in line and pushes it back. Kane bowling in sunglasses. Comes in off just a couple of steps. Bowls, cute little shot from Duckett. I think he made as if he was going to reverse and then... Very fine, conventional dink round the corner down to fine leg for four. And duck it onto one nine four. Everything's been on the ground today. No sixes at all. Very often in a partnership of this magnitude, you'll uh, have the ropes cleared several times. But everything along the ground today. Where's that song on? See it again now, the cloudy and overcast for the next. <laughs> Great bowling conditions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Derby should just try to cut out that clever little clip round the corner. Brought it, took it a boundary, came bowls and push it onto the leg side where Hanaj Dal does the fielding. He must have saved 30, 40, 50 runs in there today, but 
He's also a very good fielder in the deep. It's uh, one of those things wherever you put him, an excellent fielder. Took it backs away, drives into the offside, deploy fields. A run for every day of a leap year. 366 of them. And this partnership now worth 320. Next ball is a full toss and took it as just paddled it away on the leg side, gets a single. And erringly picked out the fielder out there. Mm. Not a deal of pace on it really, was the from no. Duckett, didn't hit it hard. Three sixty seven for one. Number of hardy souls that have been here since the start, still in the ground. Uh, Hamida's hit this. Quite nicely down the ground, but Aitchison will cut it off just for a single. I'm not allowed to leave. <laughs> <laughs> the partnership worth 3.22. In the second division, uh, the big partnerships this season, uh, that one last week between Ackerman and Mulder for Leicestershire against Sussex was 477 Oof. undefeated. Don't forget your complimentary water. Then the next highest was here, 351 Haynes and Pujara for the yeah, third wicket. They both got doubles. And then for Glamorgan against Sussex at Cardiff, uh, 328 um, Byram and Ingram. So this is the fourth highest in Division 2 this season. 344 is the next target, which will be the highest second wicket stand. Against Derbyshire by anybody, anywhere. Ever? 3 4 4. You can't say ever. But yes, <laughs> you know that. You know that. We'll get slaughtered. Well, that's why I say it. We'll get slaughtered if we say it. We'll be all over social media. You can use the word ever. I think so. First ball of a new McKinnon over. It's just dab back with a square by Hassi Pamida. Moves on to 143. 369 for one year. 344. And apologies for not knowing either of these two gentlemen. Devi and Kinnear for Warwickshire at Edgebaston in 1900. Never, never heard of either of them, if I'm entirely honest with you. Somebody out there would probably be related to them, but and I apologise for that as well. Mm. In advance. Here's McKinnon over the wicket. Bolo's reverse sweep coming out, and uh, it's a pretty good reverse sweep because it's very, very much in front of square. I was looking back at a square for that, but it was in front of square. And uh, Sam Connor stood no chance. He got into that position to play that almost before Matty McKinnon set off on his run in, and he's up to 199, Dave. Yes, indeed. Just uh, having a look. That's his 30th boundary for Ben Duckett. What's, what's that? That's 120 of his runs. And he'll be running, running in this weather, dear. 272 minutes. Idea what that is. That's four and a half hours ish, isn't it? Yeah. Um, 199. There's a single at square leg. In fact, there's a single on the offside as well. And he'll take that single at square. Oh, he, he doesn't. Because Asiba Mead says no, not to him. And they, uh, I think the roar from Asiba Mead made everybody jump, including me. <laughs> Nearly spilled my cup of tea. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was a shriek. It was. Marvellous. 3.73 for one. Thought he just thought he'd just pat it on the leg side and take a single. McKeon and Bowles. Duck it on 199. There's his double hundred. His fourth double hundred of his career. His second for Nottinghamshire. And what a knock this has been from Ben Duckett. 20 centuries. As we say, he's been at the crease for four and a half hours. And he's faced 224 balls. Magnificent effort from Ben Duckett. Uh, 34s, I beg your pardon. 34s. Uh, four and a half hours, 224 balls. Astonishing. Astonishing. Terrific work from Ben Duckett. 3 2 8. It's getting there. Mm. Two balls of the McKinnon over to go. It's his 16th. He's gone for 73. As this one is. Oh, almost gets through. Almost gets through Hassi Pamid's defences there. He still hasn't conceded as many runs as he did in four overs at Taunton. <laughs> for which he will ever be remembered. He 
turns at the top of his mark, tosses himself a catch and continues to blow into his hand, presumably on cold days it's to warm it up and on warm days it's to try and get rid of some of the sweat as he delivers this one and Hamid just guides it to backward point where Harry Kane does the feeling and holds on to the ball because unless they take the new ball, he's going to be bowling the next over, I fancy. He's not 100% certain here. He's just a, yeah, no, he's got the nod from Lear's deploy there, I think. And uh, he removes his cap, keeps his sunglasses on. Very cool bowling in his sunglasses, I always think. Although when uh, the run rate's almost four and a half, he, he, nothing looks massively cool, does it? Uh, I wouldn't have had you in my corner. With, uh, we had Kirsty Gordon very recently, England uh, spinner at Trent Bridge for a recent game. She bowls. With the glasses on. Yeah, I was, uh, not a big fan I, of that. I was coming up with all the reasons why he shouldn't. There's Kane bowling, and well, he's showing no sign of uh, tucking his bat under his arm and taking it home for the night. He's uh, on his way again. 201 not out now, easing this into the offside. Are there, any, are there any good logistical reasons for not wearing your glasses? Well, there's, there's absolutely no reason for it at all, is there? Does he wear glasses normally? No. What on earth has he got his glasses on for? Very bright out there. Don't know as it is, is it? Not really, no. The umpire hasn't got his glasses on. The batsman hasn't got his glasses on. The keeper hasn't got his glasses on. Harry Bowles. <laughs> this is uh, pushed back to him by a Siva Mead. <laughs> you're making a strong case. I, 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 I honestly st don't. You're making a strong case. <laughs> you're making a strong case. I honestly don't mind folks one way or another. No, I don't think it looks cool, but... <laughs> 375 for one. This one's hit into the offside, and I don't know Dal does the fielding. Sometimes they go so quickly into the hands of Dal, you just have to do a double take, just make sure it wasn't a bump ball. Sometimes if he threw them skywards and celebrated, he'd be lured into believing. And then he pushes it back to Harry. Came. Fifth over. Seventh bowler used by Leas Deploy. Hasn't used himself or Wayne Madsen. Came again, bowls. Mead happy just to, just to block. He's been left behind somewhat by uh, Ben Duckett. He gave him an hour's start. Duckett came to the crease at midday. I think Mead had got about 30 by then. Next delivery is blocked again. End of the over. 375 for one. Partnership 3-2-9. Seba Mead 143, Ben Duckett 201. I'm going to try again to lean or right across you and get in your way. Oh, no, I'm going to try no. once again because I haven't properly managed to get a good photograph of your magnificent screen all day. Um, st still probably not done it. But I was just checking to see if I'm, yeah, I am. I'm in the six o'clock bulletin as well, so sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not, but it's always worth checking. Mm. Well, on this occasion, I am. And then I'm on just after six o'clock as well in sports scene, so I might do that separate. McKenna begins a new over, bowling to Ben Duckett, who pushes it up towards the off spin. 11 overs to go, including this one, so because we've got spin at both ends, we might get finished by half six. Take the second new ball. And well, <laughs> once, once that happens, we've had it. This next one is turned into the leg side by Duckett up towards uh, Anuj Dahl. I'm sure David Griffin will have statistics about uh, Derbyshire only picking up one wicket in a day. There must have been days when they didn't pick up any wickets, I'm sure. Next one is swept and swept hard out over the, <laughs> over the square leg umpire. Uh, ben Aitchison does the fielding. And Ducky picks up another single, moves to 202, 376 for one. Comfortably going to reach 400 in time to get the fifth batting yeah. bonus point. Yeah. Then when they declare and Derbyshire have no points at all, that's when it gets very interesting. I don't think Sussex had any bonus points before they batted out for a draw in the game earlier this season from memory. Keenan Poles outside the off stump, left alone by Hamid. To go through to wicketkeeper Guest. I'm not comparing 
the, their experience today with, with Derbyshire's or the fielders or the bowlers, but there must be a little bit of fatigue setting in now for Hamid and Duckett, surely. Oh, yeah, I don't know, no question about it. Next delivery is uh, pushed out to the offside by Hamid and there's no room. I mean, you'd rather be out there 202 not out than having bowled 13, 14 or 15 overs and run around since 11 o'clock this morning, wouldn't you? But I know the Derbyshire players will obviously be uh, feeling the, their efforts and beginning to wilt a little bit, but so too the two batters. Yeah, with all that gear on. Next delivery is uh, driven Ooh. aerially out over the mid-off. And how far has that gone? I've lost oh, it. It's six. gone for six, the first one of the day. Asip Hamid hits a six to move to 149. It's 382 for one now. The partnership goes up to 336. Debbie Griffiths just tweeted that this is the 13th double century by a Nottinghamshire player against Derbyshire. The sixth here at Derby. And the highest was back in 1901. When William Gunn made 273. And whilst we're doing everything to jinx them, I've just been asked what the highest Nottinghamshire second wicket partnership, and it is uh, 398 by the same William Gunn and Arthur Shrewsbury against Sussex at Trent Bridge back in, can read this right on the screen, 1890. So 398, so that's still 62 away. The new ball's been taken just to scupper our plans yeah. of finishing at 6.30, so uh, <laughs> it just proves that we do have some influence. And Leas Deploy and Sam Connors are smiling at each other. And just as the new ball's taken, the sun comes out again. <laughs> I wasn't properly listening at the toss, because I'm not supposed to, but I think they said floodlights can't be used. Would that be right? No, they can be. They can be. Yeah, right? yeah. I don't think they'll be required to No, today. I don't. I don't. No. Yeah, no, they can use them any time, okay. any day, yeah. any game. Yeah. Any time, any place, anywhere. Yeah. There's Sam Connors. A little hop, skip and a jump, and away he goes past. Umpire Middlebrook, short, and hit away by Duckett. Well, he's got hold of that, and it's gone for four, and the only uh, element of surprise really came from me. I thought I'd have gone straight up in the air, honestly did. I lost it. Uh, new hard ball, different colour, different sound. I thought he'd top edge that straight up in the air, but should have uh, known better. I lost it. I lost it a while ago, actually. Took it on to <laughs> 206. He had a, I'll check in a minute, I think it was 225 against Cambridge University for, for knots back in the days when first class matches. Matches against the universities were first class, and he's gone after that one and missed it um, right uh, at the start of his relationship with Knotts. Um, I think it was 225. A little look. It was a little bit lax that shot, wasn't it, yeah. really? It's a little bit yeah. casual, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, a sign of a bit of tiredness. As much tiredness of thought as physical tiredness, because they're all supremely fit, these players, these days, aren't they? They spend years in the gym in pre season. That's why they all get injured. How's Sam Connors trying to get him out here? Let's have a little look. And he comes, bowls again, and uh, pitches this one up. Would have no doubt struck the pads or struck the stumps. Took it solidly behind it. Just the two slips. I think if you're taking the second new ball, it's got to be used as an attacking weapon, a, a means to, to get wickets, to just try and claw something back from a difficult situation. I'm not entirely sure there's that much pressure on Duckett at the moment. This corner's in again. Bowls. Duckett happy to defend. There were, to be fair, a couple of decent deliveries. Didn't start off particularly well. The first ball, a, a half tracker that Duckett pulled away. Fanciful, I guess, to expect him to put in three or four slips or three slips in a gully and hope one is edged there. Don't give him any width outside off stump because there's no boundary rider. Connors to duck it. Drives it away on the offside but behind square should be cut off by third man who comes round. And a single to duck it. Takes him to 207, the partnership to 341. So the fifth double century here at Derby this season, which is the most in any season, going back to 18. 
70. But grifters tell us that uh, the record was four in 2016. I can't remember any of them. That was my first season. Not a single one. I imagine. Hmm. There's Connors. Here he comes. Bowls to Hamid. Helps this out on the leg side. End of the over. First of the second new ball. Five runs from it. A boundary and a single. And we'll have a drinks break at 387 for one. With Ben Duckett 207 not out. Seba Mead 149 not out. And the partnership 341. A. Uh, Colossal score, really, in the in the heat and in the context of, of what we've seen today. Um, I'm sure you've been through the scores a few times, Dave. They finished early at uh, Cheltenham, Hampshire, 203 for two, and at Wantage Road, North Hans, 218 for seven against Lancashire. At Taunton, where they had some rain earlier, Somerset, 210 for three against Yorkshire. Essex have just been bowled out at the Oval by Division One leader Surrey for 271. Kent were dismissed for 165 at Edgbaston, Warwickshire 110 for three, and in Division Two at Lords, Sussex who were put in 285 for two against Middlesex, and uh, a couple of centuries there, one for Chitesh uh, Pajara and one for Tom Also. They both unbeaten at the crease, and uh, they put on very close to 200. Kevin Braithwaite asks an interesting question: Does Cartwright? Bowl. I think he does, but not much. Uh, I think we've missed that point, haven't we? Now we've got to the 80th over. Yeah, there. no, they absolutely. Start again. No, no, no. Well, it was it's the 190th over. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm fairly sure that he has bowled. His first class bowling, he's got, uh, he's got 52 wickets at uh, 33. How many tests did he play as you brought him? Two. two yeah. Just two, yeah. He scored... Uh, 55 runs with a high score of 37, average of 27 and a half. There's one or two that just dip their toes. I mean, yeah. Famously, Stuart Law played just one game. David Hossey didn't play any, of course. It should have. It's, it shows the depth of batting at certain yeah. at times, doesn't it? I mean, he, he's described as a batting all-rounder, and uh, and as such, he wouldn't really exit. There may be a stipulation. There often is. You can you can go and play county cricket, but you can't. Bowl. I don't know if they put that kind of thing on, but I would be surprised. You have to get permission to play them in each individual match quite often, don't you? If they're still part of the Australian setup. I'm not sure why he's got a tail. Um, <laughs> he's got. Oh, he has. Yes. A black towel. We can see him. Is it? Uh, he's got to wipe his hands, presumably. Yeah. But is it first slip? He's a big unit. Hilton Cartwright. Got his back to us, and he's got a. It looks like a towel hanging out of his. Trousers. He biffed 70 off 60 balls up at Durham in the second innings, which was uh, very entertaining. Perhaps he's got some ice cubes in it or something. <laughs> oh, don't sit down. He's crouching now. Ben Aitchison with the new ball. The Ooh. first delivery is driven. It was over pitched and driven by Ben Duckett for four. He moves to 211, 391 for one. We've seen 400 runs in a day scored by Derbyshire earlier this season. Well, we're going to see 400 plus from Nottinghamshire here, um, no matter what happens. Uh, Rob Collins asked me a question that I, I can answer, and this is uh, 22 years ago. Uh, did you see Welton and Bicknell at Edgbaston, Dave? That was uh, 2000. Um, they put on 405 for the first wicket, and I didn't because I'll tell you in a second. Edgbaston bowls pushed out into the offside, fielded by. Uh, Matty McKinn, I think, and there's no room. Because whilst Knotts were at Edgbaston against Warwickshire, England were playing Zimbabwe at Trent Bridge. And in those days, I was covering the internationals as well. Uh, so uh, I was at Trent Bridge, but uh, um, yeah, I was at Trent Bridge, but, uh, but followed it from afar. Edges some poles driven up towards mid off this time, but it's filled by Lewis Rees. And there's no run. They have now gone past the uh, the record second wicket stand against Derbyshire, 200 and, uh, 344. I'll be back shortly. Yeah. Devi and Kinnear. I, I know no more about them than that. 
But it's worth mentioning the six o'clock bulletin, which I'll be doing fairly shortly, as this next delivery is allowed to go through to the wicketkeeper, Brooke Guest, and there's no run. Indebted as ever to David Griffin for just reminding me about that one because uh, it was something that I had looked up. Believe it or not, I know you don't believe me. 391 for one. Aitchison in his 14th over, he's gone for 71. Bowls now, that's way, way down the leg side, it's five wides. That's a fairly unusual delivery. Five wides. Horrible delivery, 396 for one. Aitchison, have to bowl that ball again. Two deliveries left of the over. This one is a swing and a miss from Ben Duckett, who looks to the sky immediately. Not happy with that shot. Quick delivery. Appears to be cooling down. Now, whether or not the aircon's kicked in, I've no idea. But it, it's overcast, and you wouldn't be surprised if we had a storm or two. Still warm. Don't get me wrong. And Aitchison is on his way in again and bowls. That one is carved out towards Anos Dahl in the uh, backward point region on the boundary. 397 for 1. End of the over. 397 for 1. Aitchison 14 overs, 1 made 0 for 77. The over rate is back level again, though, so I think it was, they just wanted to get the over rate back level before they took the new ball. That would appear to have been the MO. With eight overs remaining, that's about half an hour's play, or just a little over, possibly, in these conditions. Ryan Dilks will be with me uh, after, this, after this particular item. There we go. Connors begins a new over. No better, Ryan. Uh, Nottinghamshire are 398 for one now. It's uh, it's all going wrong, really. Ben Duckett has got 216. Hassi Pamid has got 149. Uh, in fact, that one's gone all the way to the boundary for four, so it's 401 for one. The partnership's up to 355, which is a record for anybody against Derbyshire for the second wicket. It beats the previous record, which was set by Warwick Chappell, DV and Kinnear back in 1900. Remarkable. Knotts won the toss this morning, elected to bat their 401 for one. Nice work. The ball was turned into the leg side by Ben Duckett. And there is a no run. I've been and I've come back. You did well. Yes, I've done mine, but I think I'm on. Looking at the running order okay. for sports scene, so I'll leave you momentarily. At, uh, immediately. Got a gallop on again, haven't they, over the last couple of overs. Yeah. There's five wides and dunk it cashing in. Next ball is just pushed up to Big George at mid-off. Yeah, those five words were horrible, weren't they? That, that's very much a tired bowler's mm. uh, partnership. Three, five, five. Uh, Nigel says, "Is there any life in the pitch?" Batters are looking so comfortable. Feel for the fielders in that heat. Cooler here on the Silver Coast, Portugal. Just twenty-six degrees. Oh, a dream of twenty-six. Glorious. Being on the coast, a bit yeah. of a sea breeze. Beautiful. Next delivery. Driven nicely by Duckett. Scrimshaw has to go a long way down <laughs> to his right. I think the ball clattered into his knee, but he's OK. And keeps them to one, 402 for one. A gentle little something cool before your evening meal. Maybe a show, Nigel. Never before <laughs> tried to open... A column oh, no. of water. No, it's everywhere, Dave. And 
we've just had a bit of a, a bit of a whoopsie. It's gone everywhere. It's like a carton of milk, cardboard carton, and um, pulled the top off and squeezed it, and away it went. As uh, <laughs> Connor's bowled to Hamid, and he's uh, got his 150th run now. Just angling this off the shoulder of the bat down to third man. And, uh, well, the milestone is the records, the landmarks coming thick and fast. Pair shake hands. Asiba Mead, 150 from 257 balls. The partnership, 357. Uh, three, 357, the partnership. It's remarkable. Might not be done yet. There's Connors. No, indeed. It's cool, anyway. Um, balls to uh, duck it. Me having my arm in a puddle of water. End of the over. If you don't mind, Dave, I'll just disappear yep, for OK. A we'll concentrate on the, uh, on the cricket rather than the pool of water and just deposit it all over the desk. 403 for one Nottinghamshire. We've got seven overs left in the day. Three, which is 150 from 257 balls. And contains 24 and 1 6. There's his uh, figures for a Seba Mead. Only six of the day. Going to be Aitchison. Be bowling. To Hamid. Can he bat through the day? Shall we? Shan't we here? But they do take the single. Play with very soft hands by Hamid into the covers. Asiba Mead just dropped it in. I know his Dal came in quickly, but they got there. Fair play to umpire Middlebrook at this end. He is still swapping over from square leg to square leg. I think umpire Pollard um, stopped doing that a wee while ago. James Middlebrook. I think earlier I said he just played for Yorkshire and North Ants. I think on reflection he played uh, in a spell with Essex as well, didn't he? Next ball to duck it. Slapped. Absolutely slapped through the offside for four out towards the old pavilion, the members' pavilion. Fabulous shot from Duckett. Really gave that one the treatment. 408 for one. He goes to 2-2-1. Two, two, I think Duckett got 2-2 two, two foul. I'll try and pull it up during the course of uh, this over. I think he got 2-2-5 two, two, at uh, Fenners. About three years ago. Start of the season. There's Aitchison again. Well, that's another lovely shot into the offside. Doesn't get a run this time. In fact, he's already gone past it. Got 216 at Fenner. So this is his highest score for Nottinghamshire. That's got a uh, first-class best of 282. So that's a, oh, a while off. He's pulled this one away, but nicely stopped at mid-on. That's really good work. Just check who that is. Might be the skipper because he's gone down and might have fallen on his wrist he's, uh, he's got up he's holding his left wrist Leas deploy and in every sense that's not good news the uh, ball has been returned to the bowler I think he's okay it's a good stop it was a brave stop from Leas deploy as Duckett slapped it hard still holding his left wrist deploy 409 for one. All the twos for Duckett. Hamid is on strike on 151. Ducks underneath this, but doesn't have to, really. It was so, so short. Steve says, bet our bowlers are glad they gave Stephen Mullaney a double-headed coin for the toss. 409 for one. Aitchison to Hamid. Oh, gentle little push and saunter down to the other end. 410 for one. So we've 
We've had 90 overs now. Six overs obviously remain in the day. Don't anticipate Nottinghamshire doing anything other than trying to bat on deep into day two. But it's always one of those grey areas, isn't it, when uh, the side gets to, to 400 and uh, of course they, they could declare at any time would prevent Derbyshire from getting any bonus points whatsoever, any bowling points, but of course they won't, they'll go on and on, but uh, Derbyshire do need wickets, there's only 20 more overs in which, oh, as Amid punches this one down the ground for four, I've, uh, I've half a mind that he played a shot similar to that right at the start of the day to get his innings up and running, lovely straight drive down to the city end for four, this one, as you probably heard, thudded into the boards down below us. Nottinghamshire supporters will have heard me say that uh, it would be one of the, the rule changes I would uh, implement. Um, not just because it's Nottinghamshire in this instance, but uh, any side. Still keep the 110 overs for bonus points, but what's to stop a side race, racing and reaching 450 and getting an extra point? Certainly it would, uh, would be within Nottinghamshire's um, grasp in this particular game. 414 for one after 90. There's Connors. Bowls and meters whip this one wristily away on the leg side. We'll only get a single. 415 for one. Partnership now up to 369. Duck it back on strike on double Nelson. Connors to bowl to duck it nice and full and then duck it quickly off double Nelson just helping it out onto the leg side for another single sultry evening now cloudy but high wispy cloud Partnership 370. Next ball on its way. Uh, Amid pushes it out. There's Anuj Dal yet again. 416 for one. I'm sure he won't have minded, but... Um, Thought for Joe Clark as well. Been ready to come in since midday. Just wondered now, within the final six overs of the day, if a wicket does go down, would he come in and would a night watchman be ready as uh, me drives elegantly through the offside? That's a lovely looking shot. Will be cut off by Harry Kane out there in front of the pavilion. They come back for two, 418 for one, and Mead on to. 159 now, the partnership 372. I think if I were James Pattinson or Luke Fletcher, you'd imagine it'd be one of those two, probably the Australian, in line to be night watchman for this game. You'd, you'd, you'd certainly love the opportunity if a wicket did, would. Uh, did go down, 418 for one at the end of the over as Hamid defends his final ball from Sam Connors. 15 overs, none for 76 to him. Aitchison's already through 15 overs, none for 84 at the other end. Might be a change, it's going to be George Scrimshaw. Just watching him loosen him up in, during the course of the last over. And he was trying to do some high kicks. And 
after one of them, he just seemed to clutch his thigh. On the back of the, the back of the top of his legs, certainly the thigh area. So uh, we'll see how he goes. Going to come on with four maximum of three overs from the city end there are five overs left in the day 418 for one duck it on 223 thanks paul oh was uh, quicker delivery from scrimshaw new ball of course extra little bit of bounce and struck duck it somewhere may have been in the stomach region, or he may even have got a glove. Yeah, he's taken his uh, glove off now, shaking his hand. Just ringing it, trying to get a little bit of feeling back in it. Four hundred and eighteen for one. Good start from Scrimshaw to his latest spell. He's in again and Duckett pushes it back to him. And there's no run. St. England Lion, of course. George Scrimshaw. He had Ben Duckett as his teammate last week in those two matches at Taunton and at Worcester against the South Africans. Next ball. Helped away by Duckett on the leg side. A single taken, 224 to duck it, 419 for one. And what's been a physically and mentally tiring, I would imagine, tough day for Derbyshire. So Mead back on strike, 159 to him. Scrimshaw to bowl to Amid. Just got a little big on him, cramped him for room, but he still manages to guide it down to third man to Hilton Cartwright. Take a single. 420 for one. And Amid up to 160 from 266 balls. Sorry, Dave, that was a very much a large roundup of the day's play, so uh, I'm back with you. Absolutely fine. There is some really, really good news, though, uh, from a Burton Albion perspective and Joe Powell has uh, signed a new contract with the club, oh, which good. is excellent news. He's a really, really good player, Joe Powell. 420 for one. Scrimshaw bowls and took it. Helps this out into the offside. And there's no run. So, of course, the, uh, the big local derby will be on this season. The BBC Radio Derby Derby. Oh, there's the Radio Derby Derby, indeed. Yeah. Burton have got a pretty good record against uh, the Rams at the Pirelli, which is where the first of them is in November, I think. Seems a long way off, doesn't it? it November. Does. Final ball of this over. Duckett just pulls it away dismissively. I've seen that a few times today, away for four. The ball has gone underneath the covers, which understandably have been redundant all day. Parked underneath the scoreboard, away to our right as we look from the media center duck it onto 228 just wonder what sort of score he's got in his sights 424 for one look out brian lara ben duck it's coming well i hope he does well it might need something like that just to, to get people having a look at him again <laughs> yeah. i hope he does because that'll kill the game completely what if they're back for two days yeah, i think he'd have to bat for more than two days wouldn't he Thought so. No, I think they're back for. I think I think they'll they'll pull out mid afternoon tomorrow. Yeah. Would, be, would be my yeah, yeah. would be my guess. Yeah. yeah. And then it's up to Derbyshire to bat for a day and a half to make sure the bowlers are uh, are tired enough so that they don't enforce the follow on. If Derbyshire don't reach the follow on target, and it's Dahl's coming on to bowl his fifteenth over of the day. He took the only wicket you may remember back in uh, nineteen seventy two. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems. Uh, Three people I feel sorry for in this game. 
as Anos Dahl is on his way in and bowls to uh, Hamid, who pushes this one out to the offside. One is uh, Ben Slater, only made 12, and must be wondering exactly what he did <laughs> wrong this morning to be caught by Brooke Guest off the bowling of Anos Dahl. Ooh, that's not good. We'll have to talk amongst ourselves because nobody, uh, <laughs> nobody wants to hear this number. It's already linked yeah. up again. Welcome back online. There was a horrible noise there and everything went crash. We're back with you. Uh, he didn't miss a delivery. Here's Anoj Dahl on his way in and bowls. That one is clipped into the leg side by Hasi Pamid. He moves on to 161, 425. For one, the other two other players who I feel sorry for. One is Lias Deploy. He was only the uh, taste of captaincy of Derbyshire. He was down at Taunton in the quarterfinal of the T20. Uh, when he lost the toss today, his heart must have sunk. Uh, and the third man is poor old Joe Clark. He's probably had his pads on all day. Yeah. And... Uh, in these conditions, nobody wants that. He's not going to get a bat today. You wouldn't have thought they'd, put, they'd, send, uh, they'd send Big Luke out, wouldn't they now? Well, James, James Pattinson has, seems to have taken over as oh, the designated he? night watchman. Right. The only time it has been required this season, though, has been when he's been sitting the game out and Fletch has done it. Of course, he famously went and got um, down at a, a half century down there in, yeah. in each innings, uh, once batting at 11, once batting at 1. Fair play. Dull bowls. Oh, now then, that's an aggressive shot by Ben Duckett. A couple of bounces and over the boundary at long on for four. He just swung through that. That was very reminiscent of what we've just been watching at St Andrews. Glorious shot. Pitches and runs onto the green. Probably one of those, <laughs> one of those double greens, I imagine. <laughs> runs off the other side into a, well. a hollow and a dip. My word. But that, was a, that was a very aggressive shot from Ben mm. Duckett. For this time of the day... There's no, like you said it earlier, and I thought, well, he's still got eight, nine overs to go, but he's only got three and a half overs to go, and he's still playing aggressive shots like that. Fair play to him. 232 to duck it, 429 oh. for one, and he defends this ball. Thank you, Nigel. Back. Apologies if you've uh, oh. already mentioned this, Dave, but Ben Duckett's just reached 1,000 championship runs. I hadn't, Nigel. I hadn't. I hadn't. I hadn't. When he got to 204, so um, thank you, Nigel. Mm hmm did say it when he, when he came in, didn't he? Just yeah, got well, to, it was a long time ago. just got to 800. Um, long time never ago. Never did I envisage that uh, well, I should have done, perhaps. Yeah, great work, Nigel. It's Dal bowling. Ooh, and a play and a miss. Through mm. to the keeper. I'm not sure where we are, Dave. No, I'm, I'm completely lost. I was just looking at Shan Masood, who's got... His high score was 239, so he's not far away from that. So it'll be one of the highest scores I've seen this season, I think. If not the highest... He's got 1,074 for the season. It's, uh, it's after Laura here. <laughs> that would be extraordinary, wouldn't it? It certainly would. Yeah, it might get another call up for the Lions. <laughs> Wait. <Yeah. laughs> Dal bowls to him and that one. is turned into the leg side. He almost fell over there. Uh, and he picks up another single. His uh, ability to count to six. Undiminished by the uh, fact that it's the 93rd over. And uh, he will pinch the strike, moves to 233. Hamid has 161 and knots are up to 430 for one. You know, we're fortunate we can look at the, you know, the live bowling figures here. Isn't it? You know, every, everybody's gone for a few, but nobody's been absolutely McKinnon, have they? No, 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 as we like to call it. No, apart from McKinnon. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, McKinnon and Aitchison have both conceded 80 plus. Connors has gone for 76. And then it's uh, three fifties in Dahl, Scrimshaw and Reese, and Harry Kane went for 24 off the five overs he bowled. But so here's Big George. Going to go round the wicket. Ben Duckett needs 17 for 250 this evening. Which is this into the offside to Anoj Dahl. It's always Anoj Dahl. It, it doesn't is. matter where it's pushed. Yeah, no, where it always it's seems hit. to be Anoj Dahl, doesn't it? It's always it? Anoj Dahl. What was he at T? Ben Duckett at T. He was on 137. He's on for 100 in afternoon and evening sessions here. I've got 138, but you might be right at 137 because I did this as an afterthought. Yep. Remarkable. Scrimshaw to bowl to the aforementioned. And he's top edged this cries of catch. He's helped it down to Hilton Cartwright. Bounces once in front of Cartwright. Crikey, that's as animated as Derby should have been allowed to get in this session, I think. That's a slightly false shot, just helping it around the corner. And a T 
two, three, four. Partnership of 385. It's only been one 400 plus partnership in Division Two this year. That was that big one last week between the two South Africans, Ackerman and Mulder for Leicestershire. Mulder and Scully. 431 for one. Amid faces Scrimshaw down the leg side. Is that off the pad? Yeah. Was a leg by. How many extras have we had? Not many, I would have thought. I don't know. We have so, uh, had. It could be on that board somewhere. 20, 25. Yeah, 25 yeah, 25 now, yeah. yeah. Not a Six no balls, five, one wide, but it was five wides. Uh, yeah. Seven yeah. leg buys. No buys? Uh, no. It was, it was that one that I thought was a buy that he gave a run. But anyhow, 432 for one. That was a chance. Scrimshaw to duck it and he's uh, got hold of this one but can't ride again with a decent bit of fielding and that might just be uh, <laughs> very very sore looking at Cartwright he got up there slid across the ground here and you'd imagine it's very harsh and very almost damaging it's a good job they're, uh, they're wearing flannels that might well have taken some skin off his leg Yes, as it is, he's, uh, he's holding his knee and somebody's asked him if he's OK. Very coarse conditions for diving. Another single by Hamid. They're just turning the board over in this over. 4-3-4 four, four for one. Hamid on to 1-6-2. Partnership 3-8-8. Eight, eight. Mm. <laughs> it's a lot. That's a lot of runs. It is now second highest partnership in Division 2. It's only, uh, only 10 away from the highest partnership for Nottinghamshire for the second wicket. Yeah. There are 13 balls left in the day. Scrimshaw to duck it and pushes it back to the bowler. So we've got two overs left. 4-3-4 four, four for one. You can very much understand if they're playing for stumps. A bit of a signal. For either of them, whether to get out now, but of course that's what Derbyshire are looking for. Get a wicket, perhaps get a night watchman in, and either get him tonight or get him tomorrow morning. As you say, you feel a bit for Joe Clark because almost inevitably you know what happens after a partnership of this magnitude. Yes. You just know what happens, and mm. you might want to send somebody else in first whenever the wicket goes down. Penultimate over of the day, then Anish Dahl from the race course and bowling to Hasib Hamid. And it's defended out into the offside by the Nottinghamshire opener. And there's no run. The bowlers appear to have been, well, they have been bowling at Hasib Hamid all day. They've been bowling at Ben Duckett for most of it. The only man out, Ben Slater, for 12. 46 for one. Yeah, Hamid's actually faced 10 balls more than Duckett. It was, I think, about 30 not out when Duckett came to the crease at midday, wasn't it? The next delivery is turned into the leg side by Hamid. He'll pick up a single as Ben H's and goes around from mid on to do the fielding. 435 for one. You must dream of being in this sort of situation because they can, you know, they can just pretty much play it at, at will, take a single, get down the other end, another one. You know, in, in Hamid's case, this is a career best, and you know, I'm not saying he's not had to work for the last 20 or 30 runs, but he's not had to work as hard as if it was testing conditions with a new ball. Dahl bowls, and that really guided down a third man by a ducket, and uh, something else has happened. It's yeah. three, 390, the partnership. Uh, ducket has moved on to 237. It's 400. And that's a record Nottinghamshire partnership, I believe. I think that's for what? The second wicket against anybody. No, that's 398. Is it? Shrewsbury and Gunn against Sussex in 1890. Yeah. Goodness knows, but there was a big cheer from the, uh, the. They're all out on the balcony. I have no idea why. Partnership is up to 390, though. 436 for one. Dahl bowls and Hamid pushes it out into the onside. They pick up another sink. 437. Yeah, 398. For one. It's not. Well, Hamid, Hamid, we don't know, folks. Hamid's already got his high score, and Duckett's are some way off his still. 
Perhaps anyway, some, perhaps some, somebody in the dressing rooms won a bet. Yeah, yeah. Somebody won, uh, uh, over or under four hundred and thirty-six <laughs> runs in a day. Yeah, that's some bet. <laughs> There's no suggestion that anybody in the Nottinghamshire changing room has been betting. No. <laughs> this, mm. You know what people are like. Dal Bowles, and that one is driven out into the offside by Duckett. For another single, he moves on to 237 with seven deliveries to go today. 438 for one. Partnership up to 392. Don't often, I know it's not a record, won't be anywhere near a record, but you don't often, often get scores of this magnitude on the first day of a match no, either. No. I know we've had 400 plays, 400 in one day in uh, one day cricket, but. First day of a county championship match. It's very rare that 400 is uh, is achieved. I'm trying to remember which game Derbyshire. Derbyshire did score 400 in a day against somebody this season, but I couldn't tell you it was against Dal Bowles to Hamid. And he just turns it into the yeah. leg side and picks up another single. He moves to 165 and pinches the strike. Duckett's got 237. The partnership is 393. And Nottinghamshire are 439 for one really been made to work too hard against this second new ball I mean, you know, it's, it's difficult to suggest when somebody's got 200 and plenty and somebody's got 150 and plenty to pop a short leg in there under the lid and I don't know try something different round the wicket bit of leg theory bit of this bit of that it's, it's, it's difficult isn't it I'm not entirely sure there's a deal else that Derbyshire could have done today but certainly some of these runs um Ben has just said the applause was for a thousand runs for Ben Duckett. I don't think it was. He was on 796 going into this game, so when he got to 204. Next ball is uh, Scrimshaw starting the final over. A thousand runs against Derbyshire. <laughs> <laughs> He'll have got more than that. I'm sure. 3 9 for 1. Last over of the day. Could have been so different if. To come down a tail instead of a head. Then again, my auntie. Well, could have been so different if Stephen Mullaney said, ah, oh, we'll have a bowl. Bad, <laughs> yes, yeah. We'd have been still talking about that now. <laughs> Mean on 165 blocks this one. I don't expect anything different to that from a Seba Mead in this over. Yet Derbyshire aren't attacking him. Probably they're just about come to the end of the day and come to the end of their, their tether they've, they've had enough but it does just look as if it's just been a little bit easy for Hamid in particular just to, just to be able to turn over the strike in the last half an hour and take whatever singles he wanted not have too much pressure Scrimshaw bowls to him and again he's just happy to defend you can prod forward Dave can't there's no short leg there in case yeah. it's bat and pad and it pops up and it's what can you do with 393 as a partnership? But certainly they're going to have to find uh, overnight. They're going to have to come up with some sort of game plan for first thing in the morning. Otherwise, it, you know, it could carry on for another two or three hours tomorrow in the same vein. They're going to chuck Lears to play out of the changing room and close the play. That'll, that'll cheer him up. 439 for one. How did your day go, Skip? <laughs> Next ball on its way, and Amid again, happy to defend. Where are we? Is that four gone, two left? So uh, normally we run through the scorecard at this time of day, Dave, for uh, people who've uh, not been able to join us, been at work, school, well, college, we'll do, or wherever. We'll do alternate wickets if you want. You start. <laughs> ben Slater, court guest, bowled Dal 12. It was in the 15th over on the stroke of midday. That was 46 for one. Your turn. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Two balls left. 4-3-9 for one. Scrimshaw in his 13th over from the city end. Passed on by Pollard. Bowls. Hamid. I think by now he knows where his off stump is. Happy to leave that one alone. Goes through to Brooke Guest. And we're very nearly at the end of the day. 25-7. to seven. Not as bad as we've feared. Just think of those poor sides tomorrow that are making up all those extra overs. Mm -hmm. Games at Wantage Road, Northampton, and at uh, Cheltenham College, I'm referring to, because they elected to, to finish the day at 4.30 and make up the extra overs on days two and three. Might be a warm one tomorrow. 
Here's Scrimshaw, last ball of the day. Hamid defends. And Notts have got to stumps. One wicket down. 4-3-9 for one after 96 overs. With Ben Duckett, with his highest score for Nottinghamshire, 237 not out. He's passed 1,000 first-class runs for the season in the process. And Asiba Mead is 165 not out and that's a career best score for him and uh, last thing for me is well done Derbyshire because almost to a man there were a couple that were so far away they couldn't run across but everybody else has gone up and shook the hands of Ben Duckett and Asiba Mead and that's one of the nice things about cricket isn't it yeah. they'll, uh, they'll play it hard uh, on the field but uh, as soon as it's time to, to go off they'll, uh, they'll have a chat they'll uh, pay their respects and they'll uh, go away and sure with the coaching staff I don't think they'll say too much tonight will they I'm sure Leo's deploy will have a, yeah, uh, a word or two to no, say to you but they'll uh, have a huddle in the morning and just try to come get up changed with and go on some sort of a plan yeah. 439 for one um, I've enjoyed it I always enjoy it in your company and, and coming here no it's I, been I, good I guess it's been good I guess it's been good <laughs> we'll do it again we'll tomorrow. see what tomorrow ha what tomorrow brings thank you Dave Dave Brace Curl from Radio Nottingham uh, we will be back as Dave says at around about uh, 5 to 11 tomorrow morning with uh, commentary on day two of this match. Knots closing on 439 for one. Good night.